Well, I'm sad to share that the start of my Monster Hunter 4 U journey has been ruined. And it is not because I learned that my Fatalis Pledge means doing a lot of egg quests. Oh, why? Why? Welcome back, Classy Crew, to the very first journal in my Monster Hunter 4 U journey. This is like my sixth, maybe seventh, maybe fifth. I really, really wanted this game to be so good and it started off with so many technical problems that I, it, it impacted my first impression of the game, which is really unfortunate, but I hope it's all smooth sailing after this. Let's talk about that before I share my first impressions of the game itself. Literally, I had everything set up, ready to stream last, last week, and it was on my 3DS, I had the capture card and everything, and about 15 minutes before the stream was set to start, my capture software that's connected to the 3DS <clears throat> it just kicked me out. So anyways, I was shocked that I need a product key because I don't have that anymore. I got this thing six years ago. So I quickly looked up what to do and other streamers shared they had the same problem where they got randomly kicked out of their software. And the only way to get the product key is you have to send your device ID to the manufacturer that does the capture cards. And then you have to pray and wait that, it, that they respond. And these uh, comments were saying it can take anywhere from 15 minutes to 24 hours for them to respond. So I was like, what do I do? The stream starts in 15 15 minutes, you know, I built up this hype of we're going to stream for you. We're going to start the journey and then just turn on the camera and being like, nope, we're going to go play three or something. I couldn't do that. So I quickly gathered, uh, found Citra, never used this thing in my life. And it, within 15 minutes, got it running for you. But man, was it problematic. What I learned is Citra requires a ton of custom codes and cheats and configurations to run for you properly. Otherwise, you're stuck with a bunch. What is this? Oh my goodness, what a horrendous experience. The next day I woke up and an email came in. I was like, here's your product key. So for the future, I can either uh, do the 3DS run or I can refine the emulator. I, it sounds like the emulator doesn't remove all the bugs. So I'm really just tempted to just restart everything on the 3DS. I didn't do too much progress. And I would do that before the stream, hopefully. Those were my problems, but despite that, I got to experience some good things about Monster Hunter for you. First of all, character creations. Oh, this is when we started thinking about, oh, how does this tie to the other games and creating some lore? So I decided to go with an older character this time. I don't know why, but this is, I feel like a veteran now. So I feel my character needs to represent it. Even though for you takes place after three you, I think, and takes place before world, which I don't know. So I also got uh, Senior Classy or Sir Classy. Sir Classy is now my palico for this one. And I just want to bring attention to the fact that the straw man face is an option in character creation. That's so left field. When I was watching that back, I was like, oh, this would actually make a really interesting anime using some of the characters in the character creation screen. So I got, I got my look going. My initial impressions of just the game from a visual standpoint is everything is so much brighter. 3U was a little bit more glum. It was a lot more blue. Here it's very orange bright. And I don't know if it's because we're in the desert, but yeah, everything's bright. The controls feel a lot smoother. And I don't know if this is a emulation thing or not, but just moving around, there's a faster pickup and stop compared to 3U. 3U has an even like kind of slower when you tilt the joystick, there's a little bit of a weight as you feel like the weight shifting for that character to move. Uh, now in terms of the game starting, you know, the, it, the game opens up, you're on a ship, you're hunting. I don't even know if you're hunting or if you're on your way to town. I think you're on your way to a town which I forgot the name and I didn't write it down. And you have a this guy with the with the red hat. I guess I should have written his name down too. I I am so not used to like writing notes about the story of Monster Hunter for you, uh, about Monster Hunter in general. So anyways, we're on our way to this town and there's a dude I meet with a really cool red hat. But what stood out to me is the monster and I wrote down that name. That is Adaren, which why did they create a whole different whale creature instead of using Jen Moran again? I don't know. But anyways, so we have a new whale and it basically recreates the fight of 3U of Jen, uh, only on like super tutorial mode. And that was so cool. But again, I had so many technical issues that it, it kind of like took away from the epicness of like starting the journey, which I'm like, oh, that's unfortunate because this is an awesome way to open the game. I really like that. Oh yeah, the whole point where his like hat flies off just creates some nice like charm and then you have to go get the hat back for him. And then it turns out there's like a scale or something in the hat, which I assume is going to play a part to the story later. It was shown in a very kind of foreshadowing way of this thing's going to be important. So we'll see what happens there. So now we've joined the capital C. I've, I've learned that we're part of a group called the capital C where he needs a hunter, a cook, 
something else and himself. And uh, I don't know what we're going to do together, but we're going to explore the world. This sounds almost like the setup for JoJo's Bizarre Adventure Part 3 when they go off on an adventure in a group of multiple men. One thing I absolutely love, and I don't know if this is the standard of the game, but the fact that every single one of your quests is assigned by a villager. And so far, this is what I'm seeing. So I don't know if it's going to change later. But it seems like the trend is if you want a quest, you actually have to talk to a villager who asks you to do this versus talking to a quest lady who's like, by the way, here are all the requests. I can't stress enough how awesome that is. It ingrains you into the community, into the village, and it really makes you feel like you're helping people outside of taking requests from a counter, which makes sense too. Like if you think about a world where there's a hunter, People would probably file their request in a central location so that the hunter is not being bothered. But in a video game setting, I just feel being able to talk and connect with the people, get the quest, finish the quest, and then you go to them and you're like, I did it. And they're like, Wee! and I think they do this in Rise to some extent for like some of the side stuff, but the bulk of your quests are given to you by the quest lady. I don't know if that's going to change in for you, but I just want to say so far, I love talking to people to get the quest. That's such a small thing, but a big difference. I also love the fact, I think it's the smithy, he's called the man. And uh, when I was about to talk to him, everyone in chat was going off like, the man, the man. I was like, what are you guys talking about? And then I'm like, oh, his name is the man. Outside of that, I made an oopsie at the beginning where it's like, do you want the tutorial help or no? And I really want to say no, but I accidentally, I guess, said yes. So now I'm getting all this like kind of obnoxious tutorial stuff. But I have to say, if it was my first game and I was learning, it is, I feel it's given to you in the right amount. And I think the game does a really good job at easing you in of like, okay, we're going to go get some mushrooms. Here's how you gather. Here's how you craft. It does walk you through all of the mechanics I think a Monster Hunter game needs to. And it's unfortunate because I'm in tutorials. So I have to like go through all this text that I don't need to know. I really don't need to know it. So it's slowing me down because I'm like, I just want to go hunt something. Give me a monster. And uh, finally, I did get a monster. First one is the great. Wait, was it the first one? So I said I would go with Charge Blade. I went with Charge Blade and I did get to practice with the great Jaggy. I think it's great Jaggy. I have to say, as someone who has slightly experienced Charge Blade in the other game, it came to me so fast in this game. It was just like, first you slash the beast with your sword, the monster with your sword. You charge up your files, you put the files in the shield, you charge up your shield, you charge up, uh, you get some more files, and then you pull out your ax and you just freaking Saeed that thing to death. It is pure endorphin. And I feel as I'm describing it, that's exactly how charge play works. But it is, there's something simpler about it in For You that makes it so easy to understand. I definitely know that uh, in the newer games, you can charge your sword as well, which is not something you can do in For You. So I don't know if it's that element that's confusing me because in, I remember in the newer games, you have to charge your shield, you have to charge your sword, you have to charge your ax. Like there's so much charging to do. But in this one, it's just get your shield red, get your files. Bam! <laughs> Big Saeed. And just for, um, experimentation sake when i was fighting the great jaggy in the arena or the, the like tutorial quest i figured let's try the switch axe just to see what it feels like night and day i'm like oh my goodness the switch axe feels slow it took me longer to kill the the monster despite it having the same health whereas the charge blade just melts melts the monster and it's it feels so fluid and good like am i am i changing am i moving on from my first love Am I becoming a charge blade main? I don't know, but the I can say I'm enjoying it. So this is looking really promising for what the next, and I've already got my charge blade with some green sharpness. So I'm already over the challenge I had in Rise. Um, and then I got to fight a new monster, the Celtus. I was so excited to fight my first bug. And I, it really accentuates how much this game uh, introduced, I think, verticality, because now we're climbing walls. Uh, there's a part where he's resting on the wall. I'm like, oh, how do I, how do I get you? I can't like, can I attack on the wall? I don't know. So I went to the top of the cliff. I jumped down and I just went whoosh and I just hit him down. And just his mechanic was cool. Like there's a part where he actually dashed towards me and I dodged and he got his horn stuck in the wall. I was like, oh, you can do that. And then he was stuck in the walls. I'm like, bam, 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 bam. And I didn't get to Saeed him, but whatever. I had a name for Saeed, but I think I'm just going to use what everyone else uses and call it Saeed. I think it was, yeah, I had come up with a name, but Saeed just flows better and people know what I mean. So I'm not going to get too creative here. We're just going to call it the same. So everything is going good. I'm looking forward to having a fresh, clean restart without all these technical problems. Because I do have now two op- I properly- I am properly ready to stream this thing. And uh, I just have to say, the fact that I- 
I could have never guessed in a million years Fatalis, one of the Fatalis versions, I don't know which one, is tied to a series of egg quests, is the biggest bullshit ever. I thought I was making a pledge for your proper difficulty. It's never been tied to, nothing has ever been tied to egg quests before. It's always been the trolley quest that you have to get over. But now I have to do like all of them or a big series of them just to unlock Fatalis to complete my pledge. It's always like this. I always try to do a pledge to like challenge me a bit and I always somehow fumble into something ridiculous. Like, otherwise I will see you on the next journal with hopefully a more stable version of For You, probably on the 3DS. Maybe on Citra for whatever reason I, I find a way how to smoothen all that out And I will see you either on stream or on the next journal Until then, keep it classy Last time on my Monster Hunter 4 U journey It was ruined by the fact that my 3DS wasn't working But I fixed everything up We put on some Gojo music And we got our first Monster Hunter on 3DS experience Oh my god, am I gonna cart? Welcome back classy crew to another 4 U journal As I properly start Monster Hunter for you on the 3DS. Although I have to say, with all the conversation around Citra, emulation, uh, the 3DS not being as accessible anymore, whatever that means. I think it was good to have experienced the whole Citra thing, even though I kind of stumbled into it, that I can now compare the two, because this was actually something I was thinking about a lot leading up to for you. Do I plan Citra? Do I plan 3DS? I can now very confidently say I am wholeheartedly in on playing on the 3DS because I love playing it on the original hardware and not being worried about anything. The fact that I was opening up menus, there was no audio distortions, I could use like the Street Pass features even though I'm not going to meet anybody with a Street Pass thing in the next ever. My only real complaint is the hardware is so tiny, I've always played Monster Hunter with a controller and so the 3DS gets heavy especially with two cables on the back. I've got my capture card in there and my power cord. Holding it, it there's a constant pull on it so that gets tiring on the hands. I always like it's just small and the nub my goodness, I'm playing on a new 3DS XL, which isn't so new. But that nub for the camera, I mean it's okay, it's better than nothing but it's it's rough like especially as you're getting into tough fights and things are, are warming up like your thumb is flicking the nub like the left side of the 3ds has a circle pad why couldn't they put one on the right side or why couldn't they have made it so that the nub was optional and could be replaced with the circle pad the only thing i did buy is i found a accessory that lets you clip on grips onto the 3ds so that it has a little bit more of that like uh whatever you call it, the, the texture of a controller. So it's gonna feel a little bit more like a controller. But anyways, restarting on the 3DS lent uh, to some a bit, uh, a bit of a few repetitive tasks, but there were some opportunities as well. Like I never quite realized how much similarities there are between Monster Hunter 4 U's intro and Jojo's Bizarre Adventure, specifically part three, where uh, it's Joseph, Joe Star, who's uh, an older man, and they actually go like across Egypt and stuff. It just fits so well. So uh, even the, the guild dude that you pair up with, I'm sorry, I forget his name, but uh, Red, like he's all dressed in red with the red hat, like that guy looks like Jojo too. So to make the intro a little bit more interesting, I was like, what, what would happen if we just put some Jojo music to this? Kinda does. And it kicked in just as like the the whale beast was like you were fighting that thing and then like the other hunters were coming up. Some parts lined up with the music perfectly like an anime. I'm just like I was getting goosebumps. It worked so it was a fun time and everybody was getting like jiggly thicks in the chat. It was a good time. So we had an amazing opening, just some good vibes overall. I changed my hunter. I changed him from being this old veteran where I'm like, I'm I'm not I'm not feeling this yet. So I'm back to being a young hunter. I went with the dopey face because why not? Let's, let's have fun. Yeah. Got all the DLC. This was another nice peace of mind. The fact that I didn't have to go get some other file to get the DLC. I just downloaded it. We got Poogie all his costumes. I got to try a bunch of Poogie costume. My favorite this time so far may be, and I, I think this is how you pronounce it, Mejor Hamigo. I'm assuming it's Spanish. Uh, another thing that we needed to change up, the chat wanted to see the map. So usually you see the map on the bottom screen and uh, I just put it on the top of the screen, which removes so much real estate. That thing takes up half the screen, but uh, you kind of get used to it. Like at, at first, like, oh, that's ugly, but it gives the audience a little bit more context for what's going on. And honestly, it doesn't bother me that much. I also finally got to see the cooking scene, which is apparently something that's just bugged out completely on the Citra version of the game. 
Uh, I did make more progress on the game, even though I did repeat because I had less technical issues, and because I knew what I was doing, I was able to speed through a few more things. One downside of restarting is I wasn't able to upgrade my charge blade for the Celtus uh, fight. And so, I don't know how I got Monster Essence last time, but I somehow I got Monster Essence very easily. This time I have not gotten any Monster Essence, which is what I need to upgrade my my charge blade, and so I'm on a reduced charge blade, which is hurting me with a reduced camera ability because I'm stuck with the nub. Man! Oh my god. So, Celtus ended up being a lot harder this time, which is really concerning to me because he was a fun, easy fight when I played him with the Xbox controller, but to play him with the 3DS controller is a whole different difficulty, and I'm like, this is the first monster. How much harder is this gonna get when I'm fighting freaking Elder Dragons? It's gonna be ridiculous. I'm gonna, hopefully by that time, I'm like a pro, like, nub wheeler or whatever, but man, I guess I'm pronouncing this whole SAED thing wrong. Uh, some of you commented in chat, some of you commented on the last YouTube video that uh, I'm saying it wrong. No surprises there, I say everything wrong apparently. But some of you are saying it's SAED, which I, I, I'm I, gonna say that's not a very efficient way. Like the whole point of an acronym is to make it shorter. But if you're going S-A-E-D, that is four syllable word. I've reduced it to two, Said. And some of you say it's said. But like, I'm gonna slam you with a said? It's, no, Said. So from there, I discovered I could actually click around on things on the map when I'm in the village. I discovered a new city called Dundorma. I think it's the capital city. Really cool vibe here, very mysterious. There's a guard who's like, you can't go through here. I'm like, oh, you wait, you Lance user. I can get right through you. Uh, explored a little bit what was going around here. And there was a very cool music hall where you could listen to a performance. And the song reminded me very much of the Cetus theme from Monster Hunter 3 U. And I think it's the same voice actress or the same songstress that sings these songs. These little moments in Monster Hunter or any video game really, add so much charm and life to the world that you are living in. I, I love these little things. It's It doesn't really do anything to the gameplay or make like the game harder, easier, whatever, but it adds atmosphere. And I feel, I feel there needs to be more of these things. Like as we, as we gamers uh, ask for things in our games, I think we should ask for more of these little simple things that just bring more charm. Like I remember dipping your palico in the hot tub in Monster Hunter World. That was like, I still remember that. It was one of the most adorable things I can remember. Monster Hunter wise, when you start off with like just the cutscene of being in your house and you're waking up and there's two ladies, strange ladies walking into your room. Like it just adds world building. I, I feel there needs to be more consistent world building in Monster Hunter. And it just has to be, these, oh, so tasty. Like I've just cooked some meat, it's delicious. It's very tasty. These are the things we need. Those are not the things you cut out or you dilute. Anyways, I'm getting ahead of myself. So next up outside of um, Dundorma, I can also go on expeditions. I don't quite understand the point of an expedition. I don't know why they exist compared to just typical quests. Um, I'm not quite sure what they're supposed to do, but through these expeditions, I met some old nemesis nemesis what's the plural of nemesis my monster hunter one freaking challenges showed up again velocidrome and yankutku two monsters that somehow i've completely avoided in the rest of all that doesn't exist in all the other games except monster hunter one which i played who gave me such a bad time show up back to back in expeditions two different expeditions but still back to back so Velocidrome, I was right, I'm like, oh, I'm gonna, like, I'm coming after you. And I think I killed him in like 10 minutes. He was nothing, just nothing, just, uh, uh, no, Saeed him. No, 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 no. And then there was Yan Kutku, which uh, I was a, I was super cautious because I don't think in Monster Hunter 1 they had conchus. Now they have conchus and Yan Kutku likes the conchu. And when he eats the conchu, I think he's able to spit fire. He spits the conchu out. Anyways, he's more dangerous because he's got conchu. And conchu C. He's more dangerous. I, I'm gonna be making lots of kanju puns. He wasn't as difficult either. And I, one of the biggest differences, just thinking thematically, I'm gonna compare Monster Hunter 1 Yankutku to Monster Hunter 4U Yankutku. The world 
in Monster Hunter 4 U is bright. You first encounter him on this beautiful, like, green, clear landscape, beautiful sun. It's bright. It's a happy day to slay a Jan Kutku. When I encountered this thing in Monster Hunter 1, you're in a jungle. It is dark. You can't see it. There's a like there's just stuff blocking your view there's monsters attacking you there's things ramming you this is way more introductory start of game friendly monster under one just doesn't care it just punches you steals your money and you better run back if you want to you better run and get your money back if you want your lunch Two new monsters down in Monster Hunter for you. Velocidrome, Yankuku, both of them gone. Can't really build any armor from those parts or any new weapons, so I'm gonna have to grind some of these out soon uh, to get anything decent. And I've also unlocked now guild quests, which I don't quite understand what they are yet. It sounds like an anomaly quest from Monster Hunter Sunbreak, or people, as people say, the anomaly quests are probably inspired by this. From what I understand, you can do guild quests, you can level them up, and they rank up like... I'm not quite sure what's going on there, but um, I think I can do another single player run before I probably have to open it up to multiplayer to just do some grind uh, and get some better armor and some better weapons. So that's where I'm at. I'm all caught up. I'm on the 3DS. I'm going to stick to the 3DS. I am still really loving the game, but man, the controls, I really would. If I had an Xbox controller, this would be one of my favorite games by far. And I know you guys, a lot of you guys play Monster Hunter on handhelds first. I just can't, I can't do it. But uh, let me know, what do you prefer? Do you prefer handheld Monster Hunter? Do you prefer console Monster Hunter? What was your experience like on 3DS? How did your hands feel after so many hunts? How did you get the hard hunts on a 3DS? I wanna know. So let me know, and otherwise I will see you on the next journal. And until next time, keep it classy. Well, I found out Monster Hunter 4 U is not all just poogies and roses. There are evil things in this game. No way! Welcome back, Classy Crew, to another Monster Hunter 4 U journal. I believe we are at journal three now, although the first two were kind of the same. I'm finally on the caravan that is journeying. We've left the original town. We've arrived in a new town called Hearth. I've discovered an entire new race of creatures. Can we? Uh, called the Trovarians, which, where have they been this whole time? Why aren't they in Rise? Why aren't they in World? Why aren't they in 3U? Is this the only game they appear in? I'm shocked that I've been playing in this universe for two years now, and I've never once met a Trovarian until this past week. So I'm happy to see that this world is a little bit more diverse. It's not just humans and Wyvarians, but now we've got Trovarians. I think that's how you pronounce it. So instead, let's start where the stream started. I actually started with some multiplayer. First time trying multiplayer, it was a little bit difficult to figure out at first just because it was so different. But once I got it working, it was nice and easy. Uh, we got some, um, our first multiplayer crew. I don't quite remember the names, but they're probably on screen. And the first thing I learned is the mounting in multiplayer really is not efficient. As soon as someone mounts, you accidentally knock them off and it just ruins the whole mounting procedure. So that adds a whole other level of stress to mounting and especially, I mean, to multiplayer. And everybody was telling me, Jay, you're not listening to the etiquette. It's supposed to be, you don't touch people when they're mounted. And I was like, Wait, does it actually do damage when you mount it? <laughs> and it's so hard, like as a charge blade, I'm swinging my ax around. Oh, you mounted while I was mid swing? you're gonna get knocked off. It's just what's happening. So it's unfortunate. That is the one thing that's a bit of a downside, but otherwise multiplayer was really smooth, was way smoother than 3U's multiplayer ever been. I think I can compare 4U's multiplayer to 3U to be fair. I'm not gonna compare it to the new ones, but literally go online. People found me before I even did anything. They're like, yeah, your room is called Hey Jay. It's based on your player name. I'm like, awesome. Super easy to do. I love it. And the new monster of the week was a Kechawacha, which this thing, now this, this is a funny monkey. You want to talk about funny monkey? Get rid of that angry one. This is a funny monkey. He's got an elephant trunk for a nose. I love his mechanic of and the level that they designed. I'm pretty sure they designed him for this specific level where there's two stages and he hangs from the vines and you have to like go and slap his fingers or and he can either attack from the top or the bottom. Super fun fight. He's really cute when he puts his like ears on his on his eyes i guess i don't know his skin flaps and it was just a fun fight and like when you're up above the vines and you're running this happened in multiplayer and he pops his head out he's got such a doofus looking face you just want to 
I don't want to hit it, but I want to slap it because it's like, you're such a dopey face. And then when he's dead, it's sad because his face is still dopey, but he's dead. And you're like, oh no, I've just taken the life. I, I've never felt so conscious about taking the life, even if it's an artificial, like, you know, creature in a fantasy video game. I don't care. I felt more connected to this Quechawacha because there was so much soul in the face to see it there with its eyes closed. I'm like, oh no, what have I done? It's kind of sad looking when he's dead. Look at that face. We just murdered. We just committed murder to something with such a human looking face. So once the Quechawacha was done, the caravan decided we were good to move on to the volcano. We have to go to the volcano so we can build an airship so we can keep finding out uh, more information on the stone that I'm going to call him Jojo. The caravan, caravan, caravan. Yeah, I'm calling him Jojo. And so here we are. We've arrived at Hearth at the base of the volcano, a.k.a. Depressed Town, because all the Treverians here were freaking depressed. Nobody wanted to talk to me except the dwarves daughter, I think the dwarf master's daughter. And she had a very familiar outfit. And everyone said it's I'd have to look at it again. I haven't looked at it since, but I was like, oh, why do these armor like the Trovarian's outfit look so familiar? And everyone's like, you don't recognize it from the Sunbreak lady, maybe? And so, yeah, the the blacksmith in Sunbreak, I think, wears the same armor as either the daughter or all the Trovarians. I don't quite know exactly. I'd have to pull up the images, but I'm pretty sure it's the same outfit. I am looking at her outfit. What about it? So we arrive there. The Trevarians are mad because uh, there's a monster, aka a Tetsukabra, in the in the mines, and they can't mine anymore. And when a dwarf can't mine, they get depressed. And also, apparently, the lava has stopped flowing, which is a whole other problem to deal with later. So I was excited because I I know the Tetsukabra from Rise in the guild uh, hub, and I've I, I don't know what it is with frogs, but I love frogs. I love the Tetsukabra design. I was like, oh yes, I want to go fight this boy. Let's go. I was so excited. He jumped. He has the sumo oh. thing. I love his design, like his tusk. Everything about this, his design I love, his fight I love, his armor I love so much. He's got like a freaking samurai armor uh, helmet looking thing. The, the shoulder pads, I don't care so much about. It kind of looks like a... A football player shoulder pad but man that helmet is awesome in fact after in my second stream where i just did multiplayer i uh we grinded out that helmet and the chest piece and i had to re i'll tell you later what i got but i had to replace the armor i had because it was ugly so anyways we've got some sexy armor now i've gotten to finally fight a tetsukabra which made me so freaking happy and i got to discover a new locale called the sunken hollow i really really love the design of this and it it shocks me that they didn't do a level like this or even just brought this one back for rise sunbreak uh the sunken hollow you start at the top of the level and every time you pretty much transition scenes you're jumping further and further into this thing i think it's a volcano I, i'm not sure but the level is so vertical it, it's like why didn't you put this in a game where verticality is king rise and sunbreak you're wire bugging everywhere so I don't I don't know what they were thinking, but I'm really liking how much verticality they they've added to this game. It's clear that they were really trying to give you a lot more uh, opportunities to mount on monsters. There's so many ledges everywhere. I love this is what I, I love the little hop and you go on the mount. I love that so much more than wire bugging or hitting a monster and then it's all dazed and you got like white things saying yeah mount me it's just the satisfaction there's something to be said about i think i can mount him hop hit you mount versus you're fighting and spamming and all of a sudden oh i can get on him and bang him into a wall that's just not as satisfying please i really hope in the next monster hunter we get back to mounting and stabbing i love mounting and stabbing repeatedly on a monster call me a psychopath but man i love it so then uh, we, we, I killed this uh, Tetsukabra, discovered the Sunken Hollow, fantastic place. And then the ace team has arrived. Now, I'm not quite sure why the ace team has showed up, but I got to meet all four. Uh, there's, the, there's the ace cadet, which is Aiden. There is the ace uh, gunner, which is best waifu. There is ace, a new one who was not in the film. This other ace who used to be part of the caravan, who was like Jojo's BFF. He's there. And then there is the ace hole. <laughs> the ace jerk who's, who's who looks like an anime uh, side character, like the Vegeta of the group. He's, I don't I don't know what, what's wrong with him. Even all the other characters are like, yeah, he's, he's grumpy. He's going to yell at you. So I think they're there to investigate why the lava stopped flowing, which I suspect there's a pretty big monster 
probably hiding out in the volcano that we're gonna have to kill that's causing like this sounds very familiar to the Laga Cruz problem we had in 3u uh causing the earthquakes or the cetus i think i think that's what's happening here with the lava flow so anyways uh we also have to build the ship and to build the ship we needed to hunt a gypsy rose gypsy ross i still don't know how to pronounce it as you know and uh i went to fight this thing and this is the worst thing i've ever seen in my life it is a terrible monster what the heck was capcom thinking they put so much garbage into this monster's mechanic first of all it flashes you haven't had that in a, happen to me in a while it has poison which is always a good time it has a wiggly tail it's got a tail that can stretch and whip so it's really misleading how far that tail can go because it can reach a lot further than you might expect and then it's probably got the most unique bs move i've ever seen and i still don't quite understand what it's doing i think it fakes dying or it fakes going to sleep i thought it was fake sleeping but when i watched the clip again it fake died on me and i thought it slept so i put a uh, a barrel bomb next to its head and i was going to wake it up and when i did i lost almost all my life i almost carted and the whole chat was laughing he's like oh he doesn't know he doesn't know and they're laughing and they're probably still laughing to this day i don't know what happened i i i thought classy put him to sleep and they're like does classy have sleep on his weapon I'm like no of course he doesn't but i don't know something's happening i don't understand i've never seen a monster fake fake out dying why why is that unique in for you why is that present nowhere else anyways i almost had a second cart from that I almost died. Before that, I got a, uh, a cart from this thing Wombo Combo me. Look at my health in the clip. Raul, you better be showing the clip here because my health was at like 50%. I had just finished healing and he just came at me and he just poisoned and then he slapped me, slapped me and then I tried to get out and then he came and slapped me again and carted me. Freaking low rank village garbage gypsy rose destroyed me. And I had some decent armor. So I don't know what, what to say other than bullshit monster hate this thing and to make it worse of course i can carve out of all the monsters i can carve i can create this monster's armor set which is the worst armor set i've ever seen the helmet's ugly look at this chest piece look how big and round i am it's it doesn't match with anything i hate it which is why i needed to make another stream to get the tetsukabra armor i'm like friends come on like classic crew let's go i need you to take me out of this unclassy armor piece. Let's get the Tetsukabra. And we did, and I look good now, and everything is okay. So next up, I've got some capturing to do. They're introducing the capture mechanic in the game, so I'm gonna do that. And I have to hunt a, a Gendrome. Gendrome is the next new monster on the list. There's no other monsters uh, that have been added. I finished all of one star quests. They're all done, all the two star quests. They're all done, all the check marks. So now I'm working my way through three star. And uh, we're going to go see what's clogging up the volcano. So join me on stream next time as I see what's going on in that volcano with the Ace crew. And maybe we'll build an, air an airship. I don't know how far I am from that. Otherwise, until the next journal or the next stream, keep it classy. So there I was. The volcano had finally been unplugged. Lava was flowing. I had my new sexy whale ship. And off to see how I go. And then... Welcome back, Lassie Crew, as I continue to journey through Monster Hunter for you and document the whole story through these journals. I've now made it to Chico Sands, kind of a cheeky name if you ask me, and it only keeps on getting better. This game keeps on delivering. It doesn't slow down. The pacing is so good. We have our flagship now introduced, the Gormagala, which came out of nowhere. I was actually thinking, I'm like, wait a minute, what is the point of this story again? We're building a ship because we're trying to get somewhere because we have the shard. And the game kind of just reminded me of like, no, no, no. Oh, no. You don't want me to fight this now, do you? If there wasn't so much forewarning by the crew before I left saying, are you sure you're ready? Do you have everything? Did you empty your pouch? Do you have all the items you want? I was like, oh, something big is going to happen, isn't it? No! In fact, I had almost forgotten he was the flagship of this game that I think the story revolves around. So I was just completely caught unaware because I was having so fun with all these new monsters and new locales and new races and all these other things. Um, so it was a very fun and like encouraging uh, stream of just new stuff. So starting off with the Gendrome, I wasn't really expecting much from a drone. These things tend to be kind of, yeah, and I was like, really? I fought three different types of you at this time, at this point. What are you going to do different? And it's like, oh, come on. I think when it comes to fighting the drones, the one that 
Poisons is definitely not as bad. The one that puts the baggie, I think, is the one that puts you to sleep. And this one that paralyzes you are kind of two that are just, you know, really stops the flow of the fight. So not a fan of these. And then I think the little Gendromes, the little minions, they can also paralyze you. Those weren't so much of a problem because I cleared the the crowd pretty quick. One thing I really love about the charge blade is when you put it in axe mode and you just go whoosh, whoosh around, all the little things die. It's beautiful. It's one thing that I struggle with a little bit with the switch axe that the, the charge blade is just way superior. It can crowd control really efficiently. I love it. Bam, first capture. I got a little bit further on my egg journey because I've learned that there is a Fatalis that unlocks at the end of the egg if you're just joining me on the journey. Reminder, I have a pledge to defeat every form of Fatalis in this game, which means I do have to pursue this whole egg mafia business. Now, a Trovarian is in on the mafia and he uh, had me send, uh, had me go get some herbivore eggs. And I have to say, I was a little bit worried about this because the whole chat went on a moat only. They were going all like, shh, don't tell him, don't tell him. I was like, oh, come on, what's gonna happen? And I was on edge the whole time and it was one of the most uneventful quests ever. The stress was only there simply because chat made it up and there was no, there was nothing to fear. I, I killed the herbivores, I took their eggs and I climbed some mountains. Uh, our next new monster was the Nursilla fight. And I was really looking forward to this, not because I like spiders, but because bugs are things I have just not fought a lot of in Monster Hunter. In fact, there are no bugs in the other games that I've played. So I've only really fought uh, Celtus and Nursilla, which count as bugs. Now there is the spider in Rise Sunbreak, but it's not quite the same. It's definitely the more buggy of the monsters, but this one feels way more spider-ish. And it has, so I'm realizing Monster Hunter for you has a double floor kind of layout that I haven't seen in other Monster Hunter games. And it's very unique to this layout. And I think it's part of the design of verticality. And this is the equivalent of Monster Hunter 3 use water. Basically the water fights were unique to Monster Hunter 3, 3U. I think the dual level stage is what's unique to the Monster Hunter 4 for you fights. And that's when uh, the monster can either go like above you or below you or swing from vines and stuff. I've now seen this with the Quechawacha that could uh, make use of that pretty good. Nursilla and later on Kongala. They all fight you at two levels and there's different strategies depending on how you fight it. I really love this layout. I prefer way more than under underwater fighting. And if there's one thing I'm realizing I would definitely want in a future Monster Hunter is if they can bring back that dual stage layout and if that means bringing back some of these monsters in future installments, I'm all for it. I, I enjoy it because I'm like, oh, it's up there. What, what's it going to do up there? And it's a different set of moves than if you're above it. And it just really makes for an interesting fight. So Nursilla was a cool fight overall. The thing I hated the most were its freaking mandibles, which just come out of nowhere. As its own like default state yeah it's a gross spider but it's nothing too bad but then when the mandibles come out and it's twice as long as its own body and it's just trying to chomp you those things are nightmare fuel i don't like those and i got chomped a few times because i got uh, webbed so nursilla fell uh there was nothing really i i found out that nursilla actually eats the gypsy roast, which I absolutely despise, as I said in the last video. So I can't really hate on Nursilla in any capacity, even if there was something I disliked, because she eats that thing, perfect. In fact, I don't even want to hunt Nursilla. Let the Nursilla populate so that there are no more gypsy roasts. That's how it's gonna go. All right, so after that, I got, uh, she was the one clogging up the volcano with her web, so the volcano um, released. We had lava everywhere. The Trovarians uh, knocked out of their depression and then they built a ship. And out of all the things they could have built, they built a whale. A whale of a ship. Well, look at that. Not the most, I don't know, exciting looking ship. I never understood the obsession with making whales for ships. Uh, they did it in Final Fantasy IV as well. It was actually a spaceship and they made it as a whale. Like whales belong underwater. If it was a whale sub, it'd be one thing, but a whale ship not a big fan. I do like the fact that you see the big Dragonator, but it also, it's so obvious that it's in its mouth. It's like telling the monster, I have a Dragonator, fly in front of me if you want to die. It's it's not effective. So we sail out with the whale ship uh, called the Arluk, I think it's called. I know I could just say Arluk, but I feel that the R needs to be a little bit more glottal for this one, Arluk. 
we sail off and then out of nowhere in the stormy sea a freaking Gormagala comes out and attacks us oh. really interesting throwback to the fight in 3u where you fight the uh, gen Moran. very different because now instead of a sea like uh, or a sand whale you're fighting at sea and you're fighting uh I don't even know, an elder dragon? Like this thing's flying around. So it was intimidating. It uses a lot of the moves I recognize from Sunbreak. I did get the whole frenzy. Uh, thankfully it was just a repel quest because I was not ready to fight this thing. <laughs> I think, I don't think I was doing so well. Luckily I knew how to use all the artillery and stuff on the ship. And I think I, yeah, I got the Dragonator off and using some Ballista and some few well-timed position like attacks on it, it fell. Flew away. Oh, no, it didn't fly away. Flew away, came back, and then the ace squad came in and rammed their boat and made sure the Gormagala went away. So that's who the ace crew is after. They still haven't really uh, learned to respect me yet, so I have to earn their respect. But anyways, we washed up on Chico Sands, which is our next area. And uh, here there are a lot of palicos. There's a little palico island, and it looks like I've now opened up the palico system. Uh, after saving one of the palicos from a conga from a conga is it a congala or a congalala i don't know the pink monkey who is a joke i don't out of all the monkeys this is the most the least threatening he's just a funny monkey even funnier than the Ketchawacha. they just keep making him funnier and for you and then i guess there's the ultimate funny monkey waiting for me later on in the game but this one, I mean, he's got a heart on his butt. He farts. He's known for farting. That's his big thing. He's he's a gassy boy. And they made him, like, cute and pink. So there's nothing... And even when I'm fighting him, the worst thing he does is he jumps up in the air. You see the shadow. You you move aside. He glomps on the floor. And then you just bang him. And then you have stay away when he gets crampy. It's it's not that difficult of a fight. At least not yet. So uh, the Kongalala was slain. I think it's la two laws. Lala. La. And the palico uh, was open, or was open. The palico was saved, and now I can hire more palicos or something. I'm still not very well versed in the whole palico system, but I now have two palicos. So Classy has a friend who is joining us on our adventures, and um, things are going to die faster, I assume. I also did a fishing quest, and I know I've laughed a bit in the past about the chat saying, oh, fishing quests are bad, and I've been kind of lucky. This time, my luck has run out. I needed four small goldfish, and it took me, I think, a good half hour to get them. They just weren't spawning. They weren't biting the line. It took a long time to get those small goldfish. So now I understand the fishing pain when you're not getting the fish you want. Uh, and then I did another catch a watcha fight, which unlocks some new monsters. So I've got a Basarios, which has been unlocked, uh, that is waiting for me in the next stream. And super hype, because the next urgent quest, I think it's an urgent quest, is a Zamtrios. Maybe it's not an urgent quest. Zamtrios, which is a monster I've been wanting to fight since I've met it in Monster Hunter Stories 2. So super excited for an ice frog. I think it's a frog. Basarios, that one I'm not so excited for, especially with a charge blade. I'm not going to have my um, whatever mind's eye that lets me just ignore its rock side. So, so that's where we are. We're at Chico Sands. We're still hunting uh, some new monsters. And uh, soon, I guess we're going to be looking for the Gormagala as we continue through village rank. And I think I'm at three star or four star now. So working our way through that lower end of the story. And it's all been such a fun time. So join me next time on my next journal or my next stream at twitch.tv slash hjofficial. And until then, keep it classy. So a few times now I've asked all of you, which is the best ice monster? And everybody always seems to say Zamtrios. Well, I finally met the boy. And Valkana is still the best. Welcome back, Classy Crew, to another For You journal as I journey through all of Monster Hunter For You on a quest to defeat every Fatalis. And that quest is still... Because I'm still in low rank, playing around with finding new monsters, discovering new mini games, playing with the Meowster Hunters, which, how is that not a franchise staple? The Meowster Hunters should be in every installment of this game. This is such a cool, like, this is peak pun humor on, like, in the Palico world, in freaking Capcom's, like, just give me more Meowster Hunters. Heck, make a spin off game. It works, even if it's a mobile game. I don't care. Give me a match three mobile game called Meowster Hunters and I will play it. So anyways, you guys came here to talk about, see my impressions about Zamtrios, and I'm finally happy I got to fight him. He is such a cool monster. He's, so I had seen him in stories too. So I, I, I knew that he puffed up. I knew that he had like this 
ice shield, but it's one thing to see it in an RPG when it's just a different state, and it's another thing to experience it as a hunter in a 3D world. And then, so I'm banging on him and trying to break the ice and just getting to, to know him, and then out of nowhere. Whoa! Whoa! He's so big! Oh my goodness, is it comedic, but it is so unique, and again, how has this not existed in any other Monster Hunter games I've played yet? I absolutely love the idea of a monster that just turns into this big roly-poly thing. I was so intimidated by it, I was running away from it, trying to observe like what it's doing. And then I had an aha moment, I'm like, wait a minute, he's big, which means he's probably uh, susceptible to like more cut damage now that he doesn't have the whole ice shield. So I run back and I'm like... Oh, for what the frick? Uh, and of course, yeah, I was right. He's a lot weaker when he's in his puff form, but he's rolling around so he can hit you a lot easier. And then he's bouncing and trying to crush you. It's just, it's such a like fun fight in terms of the range of emotion you feel. Cause even the range of the character this monster displays at first, he's like, I'm a freaking shark and I've got my shield. I'm like, nope, just discard that whole persona to be a blimp. It's such a like a Batman duality here of, you know, Bruce Wayne, Batman. So Zamtrio's Ice Shield and Zamtrio's Bouncy Boy. Super fun fight. Um, I'm also, keeping in mind that everything I'm encountering that's new right now is all low rank. So I expect these monsters are holding back a lot of attacks that I won't really get to uh, appreciate and see until higher rank. But really, I'm expecting the real fight to really be in higher rank. They, these are like the tutorials of, oh, here's a new monster. Get a sense of what's happening here. Bam! And I'm really looking forward to fighting a Zamtros in high rank just to see what it's like because he, he, I like him. But as an ice monster, yes, he's unique. He's more unique than Volcana. But I don't know. I think there will be something I will never be able to 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 replace Volcano with. And I I don't think it has anything to do with the fight itself. I think it's just its place in my journey. And for many of you, Zamtrios was probably early on in your journey, and that's why it's so impactful to you. You know, Volcano was one of my early ice monsters with a really unique experience. So we all develop these like nostalgia goggles for our monster our favorite monsters and our experiences because these games are all about the player leveling up. So the thing that you experience when you are a hunter level 10 in the real world is very different than when you experience that at say level seven. Let me know what you think about that. Uh, other than that, I, uh, oh, another thing, I didn't realize the Zamites were so tiny. They come in like super mini form, which is adorable. There's like a normal Zamite and then really teeny tiny Zamite. Uh, besides that, I also had the Basario sign locked, so I got to fight him. He's a lot more difficult than his, the version in Rise that I fought. First of all, he's harder, like literally harder. Everything bounces off him. I can't find a way to to hit him and i know the charge blade last time i said oh the charge blade doesn't have mine's i like switch x you guys corrected me and said if you have a file you can do something i know it's there i'm just not good enough with the charge blade yet to do it reliably so and this was a problem when i was learning switch x and world i didn't know how to play in sword mode and a lot of you laughed that why is jay always playing in freaking axe mode it's all i knew and so with the charge blade i feel like i'm going through that similar progression of learning the weapon and I absolutely love it. I love that it's taking me a while to learn that because it makes me appreciate the growth more, makes me appreciate the weapon more. The last thing I, I don't know, there's something cheap about picking it up and understanding it in 30 minutes for my own personal taste. I also saw Basarios fly. I don't think Lies. I've ever seen him fly in Rise, but here he flew, like he just flies off the ground. I was like, this thing can fly? Like I could see the, you know, he has wings, but I've never seen him take flight before. So that caught me off guard. I also really like, I don't know if it's in Rise, but in this one he has like a blue like veiny thing on his back and it looks really good. So like it just makes him look cooler instead of just being a dull gray like rock. And the fact that they make you fight him in the middle of a field of other rocks threw me off because I know in stories, Monster Hunter stories too, that's how you fight Basarios. There's a bunch of rocks and one of them is Basarios. So I was hitting all the rocks and, and the chat was just like, what is done already? I can't say that was a fun fight, it was tedious because I just freaking kept bouncing, but I feel at the end I was starting to learn how to use the charge blade to more reliably actually hit him, but I'm not fully there yet. And then the next one that I unlocked, the next monster, is a Najarala, which I was really debating putting as the um, on the thumbnail of this video. It was hard to pick between Najarala and Zamtrios, because I didn't even know Najarala was a thing. I didn't even know s monsters came in snake form in this franchise. This was a monster I didn't even know was in this game. Somehow, it wasn't in Stories 2, so this is the first monster I get to experience that was not spoiled in any way. Like, I just did not know anything about this monster going in. Uh, super cool concept of a fight. And it's so scary when Najarali goes around you, because 
basically I, I learned really quickly because it shows you in the cutscene you don't want to be in the middle when it surrounds you because then it squeezes and I think I got hit once like that and it takes so much of your health so you always got to get out but there's a high risk high reward I noticed that it's really weak all over and when it's coiled inside you can basically like move your weapon around in every direction and do like just a bunch of damage so it's like how long do you stay in the center doing damage versus focusing on getting out so you don't get squeezed. Uh, I really like that high risk, high reward thing. Uh, it's also got like these explosive shards, made me think of like almost like a rattlesnake that could shoot. And then I saw, I got to fight some old friends in this new game, which is the Rathian. So I'm like, all right, let's 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 adjust, like Rathian is my default. Like, let's see how good I am against my default favorite monster. She didn't really stand out in any way here. And it was my first time fighting a Rathian with a charge blade, which was pretty interesting to do. Uh, and then the Kezu, was here and it just reiterates because people said oh you haven't met old world kezu this is my first time meeting old world kezu and people were telling me giginox is better than old world kezu you are blinded jay i have to say i've experienced old world kezu now so much better than giginox what are you guys smoking over there like it is so much better i agree kezu yells a lot and that's annoying because you're always like argh, argh. but giginox paralyzes you too unless you put like the decos on i i think what people don't like it's I'm going to just guess here, is the fact that Kezu has no music, I think there is something unsettling about being alone with your own thoughts as you are methodically killing this poor boy. And I think that makes people uncomfortable and that's why they like Giginox. That's what I, that's my story. That's why I'm sticking to it. You guys just don't like silence because Giginox sucks. Uh, I've also, yeah, so the Meow Stretchers I've unlocked, uh, that came after Zamtrios. And I unlocked this like little mini game where you have to pick colors and the Meow Stretchers fight. A monster and I was not understanding because it's so unintuitive like red trumps blue like why couldn't they use the Pokemon logic of blue trumps red and red trumps green instead it's like blue trumps red red trumps yellow yellow so um I lost the first one and then the second one when I actually knew what I was doing a little bit better I actually won it kind of reminds me of the rise um Meow scenarios but I really prefer this the Meow scenarios feels cheap I don't like just, oh, I go to, I have to go check in on this menu every like couple fights, collect my goods, send it away. Like that's, that just doesn't pull the player in. Whereas here it's, you know, I get to build a little bit more of a bond of a Meow scenario. There's a mini game there. There's something to pull me in. Maybe my tune will change when I'm actually grinding. But at this stage, I'm like, yeah, this is charming. I like this. Thank you. Uh, I also learned about the fact that <clears throat> the, whatever they're called, Meow Strangers or whatever, your Palicos, depending on which one you put in your like lists, Classy or your main palico learns different moves or different skills. That to me is a whole different system that is just wild. I'm like, what? <laughs> that's how you teach like your palico how to learn things. Um, so that's a really interesting system that I know almost nothing about. People are just telling me, keep your healer in the second slot so classy can heal you. I'm like, all right, I like that. Let's do it. Uh, other little things. So I've also got an extra cart for my farm, not an extra cart for carting. So my farm has expanded. I really am enjoying doing like these little quality of life updates. And I've learned about the expeditions having treasure rooms. I didn't know about it. And people are like, why aren't you doing expedition treasure room? What are you talking about? They're like, yeah, yeah, you do the, tr you go on expedition. It will say if there's a little bonus for a treasure room. And if there is, you have a chance of getting a unique armor set or a unique armor piece or a unique weapon. And some people were like, oh, it's not worth it in low rank. But others were like, this is the only place you can get it. And like, I like, I like that there is this kind of unique set that's available only to those who grind the luck. It's like a luck set. So I like that, but it's also a huge time sink. So I don't know if I'm ever going to actually unlock whatever armor and weapon is available in that whole expedition grind. But as a mechanic, I have to say I like it. I love the amount of mechanics for you is throwing at me. It's doing it in a way that I can really appreciate. I feel Rise has a lot of mechanics that I either don't care to use or, well, I mean, I definitely don't care to use because you guys know I don't use all the mechanics available to me uh, uh, in Rise. I also feel it's introduced a little bit, um, not as layered, so it's a lot of stuff all at once. And it just lacks charm, honestly. Like the, the one thing that I think can really be labeled to Monster Hunter is charm. And <clears throat> as in its quest to find greater main, mainstream appeal, I feel they might be sacrificing some charm, which is unfortunate, or locking it behind DLC, which is even more unfortunate, because um, that is taking basically the soul out of the franchise and monetizing it. Now, we're not there yet. That's a very extreme metaphor, but I can see a path where that is happening. Like We're skinning 
we're skinning this, the franchise a little bit and putting it in DLC slightly, which shouldn't be happening. In uh, terms of story, so I have saved Classy. I have saved the aces from Gore Magala. I fought Gore Magala in a much more comfortable environment. He was way better to fight there. And in terms of my next hunts, I think I have been given clearance to actually go out and hunt Gore Magala. Now they respect me. Now that I saved their butts. And there's also a Lagombi on the menu. I mean, we gotta, we gotta. Uh, so I'll see you on my next update, which should be next, well, actually it will be in the next journal or in the next stream if you're joining me live as I continue my journey. Uh, over on twitch.tv slash official. Hopefully I'll see you there. Otherwise, until next time, keep it classy. Onward to Qatar. But first, I have a grave. No! <laughs> Welcome back, Classic Crew, to another journal on our journey through for you as we continue with the caravan to figure out what is this thing under JoJo's hat. And we've made it to a new village, but so we're getting closer to unraveling this mystery. Our whale can now fly. I have an airship, uh, but there are also some new monsters to talk about, including the wall of this way. It's not really a wall. It was more of a grave problem. It was a graviose of an issue. I feel there are better puns to make. I am getting rolled by a rock. Could Sam getting rock and rolled? <laughs> anyway, Gravios was the big monster of the week. Actually, I shouldn't even say that. Gormagala was the big one, but I feel I fought. I've repelled them twice already. Uh, finally, fighting him was not quite as climactic as I had hoped, but we're going to see more of him because, you know, from some break. But let's get started with the most important monster of all from this past week. Lagombi, one of my favorite monsters. I don't know what it is with this bunny, but I really like him. Every time I think of Lagombi, I always think of that scene from Nightmare Before Christmas where the dude sees the, um, it's like the, the dead guy sees the Easter bunny and just goes like, bunny. And I'm glad to see him for you. He's just as good in all, as in all the other games. He, he's like, he's quick, but he's like predictable. Uh, he makes you move around. I just had a really good time with him. Lagombi's a good, good, boy to hunt. And afterwards, uh, I'd ask everyone, do you want the Gormagala or do we continue this silly quest of getting all the eggs because there's apparently a Fatalis at the end of it? And of course the chat picked eggs. That's what they want. They're an excellent chat. So we've got the Wyvern egg quest. The first one that I knew would, I'd be chased by a monster. And of course I make it to the nest and what is sitting there is a Rathian. And I was like, well, I'm a pro hunter. I know what I'm doing. Let's figure out. Well, 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 I got served a cart in low rank on an egg quest. I can't quite remember what exactly happened, but I now have my second cart of low rank and of this journey, and it's thanks to Rathian. So thank you, my queen, for humbling me once again. Uh, and then on the way back, so on the way back, I had a really nice run, and I was going to use that path again, but of course, the game puts a big boulder saying, no, 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 figure out another path. AKA go through all of the, um, oh shoot, what are they called? The, the little conchus, go through the conchus. I was like, screw this. So I tried to kill all the conchus. I go get the egg, I come back, they all respawn, completely useless. Uh, anyways, we, I got into some really close encounters between the conchus, the ants, and the, the, the other cats that rob you. It was the meelinxes. It was a rough, I was sweating. And I'm like, I'm only three egg quests into this quest line. I don't know how many more egg quests there are, but I can imagine there's at least double more and they're probably gonna get more and more intense. Now, after that, I finally got to fight the Gormagala properly and hunt it and slay it. And I have to say the biggest complication, the biggest challenge with Gormagala is I feel it has the very same speed that it has in Sunbreak. So Sunbreak is the first game I encountered Gormagala. And this one, it moves the same speed, but the problem is you, the hunter, does, do not move at the same speed as you do in Sunbreak. So it's really one-sided in Gormagala's favor, and it was so hard to maneuver around it. I thought I'd have, I, I, w I had it in its like blind side, or yeah, blind side, and I would start attacking it. It'd just be like, nope, it'd be right in front of you. It would start blasting things all around it. I don't remember it blasting so much in Sunbreak. I remember like there were blasts, but in this game, there's like a triple blast. Uh, which I, there, there's a combination of armor. Anyways, those things kept hitting me. It was so hard to dodge that. And then I realized, wait a minute, I have a shield. So I was trying to like, actually, instead of dodging, like I do with the switch axe, was to actually shield up against some of it. It, uh, it was effective to mixed results. So anyways, uh, I dealt with it. It got close. Chat got angry because I was leaving 
they were all betting for me to cart on Hormigala, and I didn't realize this until later. But I was leaving the arenas to like go and heal or to sharpen, and people were hating on it. I'm like, don't hate the play. So anyways, now people are asking that they want to add handicaps to my hunts where, uh, and I'm thinking about it, where the chat could potentially uh, decide where like I'm not allowed to leave a zone or I'm limited to a certain amount of items, things like that to make uh, some of these hunts a little bit more challenging. I haven't quite decided how to put that into play or how I would want to put it into play. I certainly wouldn't want my first encounters to be under any of those like kind of false difficulty matters, but I think for other monsters that I'm familiar with, it could be a fun challenge. So as pun as punishment, uh, everyone's like, go fight the double, the double gypsyros, and I'm like, oh fine, I, it's it's on my quest list. I gotta go uh, knock it out anyway. So off I went to fight it, and on this level, I mean the gypsyros actually. Now that I know the gimmicks, it's not as threatening as the first time I fought it. So I knew what to look out for. That said. Wait, no, 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 no! Uh, I learned, and I don't know if you guys know this, but there is a balloon in some of these, on this level anyways, and people are like, wave at the balloon, wave at the balloon, why do you guys want me to wave at the balloon? Come on. So I'm there, waving like kind of an idiot on the side of the beach, and the balloon starts flashing back at me. I was like, oh, that's kind of cool. That's a nice touch. The game like acknowledges that if you interact with the balloon, it does something. I didn't realize people were all like, look at your map, look at your map. So if you wave at the balloon, the monster will show up on the map. Basically, the balloon is telling you where the monster is, which I thought that was really cool. Really nice, like little detailed, nice charm. I love finding these little uh, gimmicks in these games. It's just a really uh, nice addition that doesn't need to be there, but the developers thought to put it in there. Uh, so after that, I got to encounter another new monster, which was an IO Prey, which I honestly completely forgot this thing existed. I think I fought it in Monster Hunter Stories 2. And when I fought it here, I was like, why does this exist? It's a raptor that shoots poison. Don't we already have one of these? Or is it the Ragi that replaced the Io Prey? Either way, I'm like, a red raptor honestly looks cool. I think an Io Prey looks better than a Ragi. So I think we took a step back if we're replacing Io Prey with Ragi. But uh, it's a raptor. How many raptors do we really need in this game? I think we already have too many. And then finally, the new monster for the night was Gravios. I had been looking a long, I've been looking forward to this fight for quite a while. I had seen, I, had, I ever since I met Basarios and people told me Gravios was like his, his papa or his adult form, I have been really looking forward to fighting this thing. And I, I don't know why, like I didn't like Basarios in this one, but uh, there's just something about a bigger like rock daddy that I just wanna like, hunt. Um, so I actually kind of went toe-to-toe -to -toe with the Gravios um, on an optional quest. I, I ended up not uh, hunt, hunting him. I waited for the next quest. And man, this guy is big. Like, he's, he's hard. First of all, he's hard. I can't, like, he's hard to hit. And he's also hard. Like, okay, he's, this is weird to explain. He's hard on contact, but he's also hard to reach because he's so tall. So I'm trying to use like my tall ax, but I'm trying to charge. I'm like trying to like charge my sword on his on his leg. And he's just hard to reach because he's so high. I've never seen like a monster this high. And uh, I love that he's got like this special bean cannon out of his mouth thing, which is pretty cool. Otherwise he, the, the hardest thing was reaching him. And then I, when I was reaching him, it was the fact that he kept making me bounce. But otherwise he was a fun, fight i really do like kind of the, just i love that this monster exists i love that it exists in the ecosystem that it does there I, and his face i don't know why but i love his face he's got one of those face that i just really love and the fact that a big laser beam comes out of it is even cooler even though it doesn't really make sense uh and then finally uh after slaying uh the gravios i got all the parts i needed to build my flying whale and we set off to Cathar, one of the most peaceful, serene villages I have seen yet in this franchise, dare I say. And the music is beautiful, the scene is beautiful. I don't know if there's a, I hope that there's a level related to Cathar. I haven't done anything after this, but I love the scenery and I want to hunt in these lands of Cathar. So I'm really looking forward to seeing what my first hunt's gonna be. Actually, the next one I think is a Kongalala, but it says advance. I don't know what that means, I, I kind of made fun of Kongalala the last time, so I don't know if an advanced Kongalala is going to make things more interesting. I kind of hope so. So we'll see what that's all about. And then uh, I discovered another thing in the mini games. So uh, the fishing one, there was a Plesioth that showed up of all things. I was like, what is he that's... doing here? And I thought it was going to be like, oh no, what do I do? And so I just cast my net on it. I caught it. 
and it just gives you a bunch of Plesioth parts. I'm like, I can get Plesioth armor and weapons without ever having to fight a Plesioth? Monster Hunter 4 u is now the best game ever. So that's where I am. We've reached Cathar. We seem to be getting close to figuring out what this thing under Jojo's hat is. They're saying it's part of like a shrine or something. So uh, looking forward to seeing what that's all about. So join me on twitch.tv slash heyjofficial if you want to see the next stream. Or if you want to see the past ones, you can always find them on the YouTube channel Heyj Streams. Otherwise, I will see you on the next journal. And until next time, keep it classy. So Rathian is pretty elegant. Queen of the skies, has a good move set. But now I've met the Celtus queen. And I gotta say, oh, I may have a new queen. Welcome back, Classy Crew, to another journal in my Monster Hunter 4 You journey. And after multiple years, I finally have a nice, I don't even know if these are called like moleskin notebooks, but no hardcover. It's a proper notebook that I can bring on my hunts with me. So this past couple weeks, I have finished low rank in terms of its story. I have slain the Shagaru Mag Magala. And I have met some new friends, including the Celtus Queen and some other monsters. So I've gone to see some old friends like Xenogre, Rathlos, Tigrex, and oh my goodness, was not expecting to see a Yan Garuga, but I've encountered that. And it's so surprising to me to see them in low rank. A lot of these, I don't know, I just associate with their master rank version. But anyways, last time we had arrived at Qatar or Cathar, not sure how if, if that H is silent or not. And so I hadn't really uh, experienced the map that comes with it. I have to say, this is one of my favorite maps. It is so serene. It is beautiful. There are floating rocks everywhere. And I find myself doing something I didn't do in the other Monster Hunter games. When I'm roaming the maps, I'm looking around and I'm just wondering, what happened to this world? Like, what are all these old buildings? Who used to live here? It, the game really presents a story without necessarily telling a story, leaving the player to figure it out himself. And I'm not going to say that it's unique to For You. I'm pretty sure the other Monster Hunter games also do this. In fact, I noticed uh, I was playing Rise or Sunbreak recently. And for example, the, the snow level, I never realized that in the middle of the lake, there is a skull of a Zora... Um, now I can just... So it's something that is always there in the Monster Hunter franchise, but I think I'm starting as a player, I'm starting to recognize it more and appreciate it more. And it's it's just really good. Like it, it's such a rich world. And I, th I think that could be dialed up a little bit more without, and just making it better, without making things worse. So all that to say, I really love this map. I really love uh, how there is a story put into the map. And I would love to know more about it through the game. I think there's a lot of materials and a lot of like community speculation and, and like developer confirmation and info in art books and stuff. But I wish a lot more of it lived in the games and that a player could go and discover or access that lore if they wanted to. Uh, so anyways, after that, the first hunt was the Xenogre, who is really becoming one of my favorite monsters in this franchise. His music is good. I'm recognizing that his moveset is quite recognizable. Where I'm struggling, though, is the fact that I'm still not used to matching my new found charge blade move with the monster. I'm getting into a pretty comfortable charge blade combo now that I don't know how optimal it is. So usually what I do as I approach a monster, I will hit both the buttons to like have kind of my like leap in and slash slash. Then I can like charge until the sword like flashes. Then I release it to do like another slash slash. That usually gives me enough charge to fill up my shield with five charges. And then as I'm charging, I can hit A to bring out my axe and do a swing. I realize I don't always want to do that. Sometimes it's better to not release the axe so that I can actually do my um, shield punch and then charge the shield so that it is doing more damage, I guess, and then repeat that combo to get another five files. And then I can pull out the ax and start doing some big damage. And I'm really trying to get good at landing AEDs instead of Saeeds, because Saeeds just unloads everything and that's no good. So that is my current combo that I'm trying to refine and get better with. And I'm, to some degree, I am being successful with that. Now there's people saying that I should be using a guard point maneuver, which I don't know what it is. I know I should watch Gaijin Hunter's videos and learn how to do things better. The way I approach these games is I like to get a feel for the weapon, develop my own kind of sense of how to use it. And I'm getting very close to that. Like I have my very comfortable combo. And once I have that in place, then I like to look at Eric's or Gaijin Hunter's videos and refine my gameplay of like, oh, I could do this with it. Oh, I could do this better. So, 
but I made my way through it, and that unlocked the next best special monster, the Celtus Queen. I gotta say, I love, I think, everything about this monster. I met her in Monster Hunter Stories 2. Does not do it justice. I did not understand how massive and how tanky this monster is. When she moves, she, you can, like, it's a tank. It's just like boom, boom, boom. And they did such a good job at highlighting how massive and heavy she is. Just from the like sound effect of the footstep, the fact that there's like dust everywhere as she's walking. Wait, that thing can lift the queen up? The Celtus that flies around with her is kind of annoying. Uh, I have to say, when you're trying to hunt this thing, you got like this stupid little like, what do you call those things? Um, simp? And it's just like zipping by you and charging. It's like, um, just leave me alone. I'm trying to hunt your big queen here. What in the steaming horniness is this? And then when it fuses, oh my goodness, it just gets so much cooler. It just, it should just stay fused the whole time because I, oh, it's, it's a cool fight. It's a cool monster to take down. I think I, I like, and I think I've expressed this a few times. I like big monsters and I cannot lie. The Celtus Queen just offers all of that. Plus it's a bug, which is kind of something I haven't seen much of in my journey so far. It's a lot of, you know, wyverns or smaller creatures. So seeing a big tanky bug that's not disgusting to look at like a spider, A plus. Love this fight, just fantastic. I can't wait to see what she's gonna be like in high rank and master rank, or sorry, G rank. After that though, it went downhill because I had to fight my first Rathalos. It definitely did not help that my charge blade is a fire uh, weapon, but my goodness, Rathalos in this game is always flying. It is borderline annoying, not borderline, it is absolutely annoying how often this thing is in the air. And I can see why I might want to bring more flash bombs with me, but I'm not even good at flashing. I usually bring, have two flash bombs. I usually get one off and the other one I toss into the nether and he's got this cool attack. So I was in the nest when I was fighting him because I just grabbed the egg if he flies away. And the level would like shift and he could like shoot fire and it would tilt and then I had to like hold on to the... I was not expecting that kind of mechanic in this game and man, I loved it. I was like, okay, this is, this is pretty cool. There should be more levels with that kind of mechanic, not just necessarily tilting, but like having a monster be able to terraform. Like imagine a Diablos digging under the sand or something, under the crust, and it's just like creating all of these maybe like kind of parts of the, the earth that stick up so that you can like run off and jump and stuff like that. I feel that that could be a mechanic that gets explored more in future Monster Hunter games in terms of terraforming. I think games are more, like they can do that more. Like that's a pretty hard game mechanic to design for, I understand. But as technology gets better, that is something I think we could expect from future Monster Hunter games, which would be cool. So I killed the Rathalos eventually through much, oh my goodness, it, it was just a slog. And then I got the Tigrex. I was really worried about the Tigrex. Remember, my very first impression of a Tigrex is its master rank equivalent in Iceborne. And that thing hurt so much. It was fast, it was aggressive, and I hated it. Uh, here in low rank, it's a lot more team. I've also played it now. I fought in Sunbreak. So I understand all of those moves, you know, push the rock, do the spinny, do the choo-choo. And I can pretty much deal with everything except the spinny. I can't really tell when he's about to do the spinny and he always hits me with the spinny. All of this took us to the finale, which is the Shagru Magala. And I have to say this fight was epic. And I love when they do epic. And the fact that it was a low rank uh, boss fight was just, like, you get into this arena with this majestic creature. And it's so wild to me that I'm fighting a Shagru Magala in low rank of all things. Like, remember, I associate this with Endgame Sunbreak. So to see it here, it just, oh, and the music and the fact that it's just you versus this beast in a huge open arena. Yeah, there's a rock there in the middle. And I was like, oh, this is my safe place until he decides to destroy it. And then it's just you and this massive beast. And it feels amazing. I love the fight. I love the setup. I love the story. I love the design. I, like. Yeah, I get why people are saying, oh, you should not experience Shagru Magala for the first time in Sunbreak. It is definitely a disservice. It's great for the fans to fight him in Sunbreak, but as a first impression, you really want to fight this thing in for you. Because wow, what a finale. And then when that ends, you get the beautiful cinematic of like all the village, the journey that you've been on. And like I'm like, I'm so emotional in the sense that I'm just, oh, I don't want this to end. I, I was really enjoying this. And not only do I not want it to end, I want it to be, I, I want to be part of this world even more. I want to create even more relationship with the caravan. I want to like, I want this world fleshed out. I feel like we just got a taste and a tease of what this world could be. And honestly, if they did a full in-depth, like 
more fleshed out, like even an MMO of the For You universe and the caravan, all that, I would be so down to play in that. Cause I feel it's, they only scratch the surface of what they can do with these characters and the villages that we've visited. They could do a full on RPG even. I don't know how much of this is explored in stories too, but if there was a stories three, just give me all like give me these characters back. Let me let me engage with the For You universe more. So, anyways, after that, uh, pretty much high rank is now available to me, so I can go to Dundorma, which I did because I was curious. I shouldn't have, but I did. And uh, I love the setup for the high rank part of the story. So Dendorma is a city that is constantly besieged by monsters and it's all about rebuilding it. So the last attack has left the city almost defenseless and we now have to rebuild the city. I'm all about rebuilding. I love that stuff. I'm going to put that on pause though because I want to finish everything in low rank before I progress. It's just this game has hooked itself into me and I want to do it properly. So I've gone back. I'm going to grind out the last low rank quest I have left to do solo. I think there's a few monsters left in there. One was a young gorilla which oh my goodness the only thing I will say is so it's basically a Yan Kutku and a Rathian moveset combined I'm pretty sure I've said that before but I kind of forgot except when this thing gets pissed in this version it goes hyper fast like the speed is ridiculous and unnatural and that is the one thing that caught me off guard is how fast it is when it's aggressive uh, so it's pretty it's pretty tough once it goes into that mode otherwise fun fight cool character to, to cool monster design uh, so I think I still have two or three monsters left to unlock. I'm slowly making my way through. I think I've only got five star and six star quests to do, and there's a handful, maybe several left. Once I am done that, I'm going to go do the hub low rank, and I'm going to do that multiplayer so I can really experience everything. And since our gear is already at low rank, we're going to knock that out so that we have everything done at low rank and then I can go into high rank. The other things that I uh, discovered since my last journal are Poogie quests. I love this idea that you can go on expeditions and find different Poogie costumes. Oh, so brilliant. I love these like little side light little things that just kind of reward you with Poogie costumes. So I love going out into the wild and rescuing my little Poogies. I got one with the Emperor's clothes and I may have gone another one. I forget what the other Poogie was, but love that. My charge blade, I have, uh, I've been using primarily an elemental charge blade, a fire one. And people have been starting to talk to me about an impact charge blade. Not quite sure what it does differently, but I built one now. So I've switched over to that. And I think it means I can do, well, it does more raw damage for one. Uh, and the second is I think you can like KO monsters or something. That's something I want to try to figure out more. I've also recognized, so you'll see on my stream, I have a little award counter. I was like, how come my award counter is not moving? I haven't seen any awards. So I went and checked my guild card only to learn the game doesn't announce when you get new awards. If it does, I missed it. But basically you have this whole screen that has a progression in category of all the awards you can get for like hunting, exploration. I, I love, like, I love this as a, as a wannabe completionist. I love it. And so I got, I was able to see that I've gotten like 20 awards without even realizing it. And it seems like, oh, like you see a progression with a percentage, just love that stuff. So um, the awards are there. And uh, unfortunately, we're going to end on a sour note because the last quest I did was a double Kezu quest. And it's the worst. Sure, I say Kezu is, is better than Giginox, but the two of them are trash. Like both of them are just garbage fights. And this one was so bad because it just kept hanging onto the ceiling. When it would drop, it would just scream. A cool thing that came out of that fight is I didn't know this. You can act when he's on the ceiling. You can climb the wall at one place and you can jump from stalactite to stalactite. I think stalactite or stalagmite, the one that hangs from the ceiling. And then you can like jump and hit him from his slumber on the ceiling. That was the only cool thing that came from that fight. Otherwise, Kazu sucks, Giginox sucks, all of these leeches and whatever and dick like things. So looking forward to better fights without with less Kazus gonna clean up this low rank hopefully you guys can join me in the high in the low rank uh hub grind because i want to do all that with multiplayer as it was intended to and once that's knocked out we're off to rebuild dundorma so hopefully you can join me on that over at twitch.tv slash aj official or on the next journal and until next time keep it classy oh he got crushed i'm sure he liked it though what in the steaming horniness is this Hey Jay here, reporting from Qatar because I'm still grinding quests. I'm grinding so many monsters. I'm at the point where I'm doing side quests of finding boyfriends for lonely women in these villages. Welcome back, Classy Crew, to another journal in the For You Adventures as we still get... Uh, as I try to fight every Fatalis in this game, and I have yet to find one. In fact, I have yet to even leave low rank despite finishing the story of low rank. 
almost a month ago, but here I am, still slaying monsters, fighting for love, and learning that I can cook 10 steaks at a time. I don't know if I talked about this in the last journal, but this game, I don't know if it's in three or the other games, but this game is the game that has taught me I can cook 10 freaking steaks at a time. I think it might even be 20 because I think the, the cook helps you, but why did they take this out of the franchise? It is so good. But anyways, let's talk about the real hot steamy thing we're all here to talk about. Guild Marm's hot steamy boyfriend. You might be saying, okay, this boy is out of content, but I swear this is probably one of the highlights of the stream. This writing has got to be some of the best writing I have ever seen in Monster Hunter. And so I'm going to talk about a quest that is given to you in low rank after you grind a bit and then Guild Marm starts opening up to you about her lost long love. So let me share with you this writing. Let me share with you what she has to say. And I'm just going to pretend I have a book here. Maybe editor can put a book in front of me because I am working with visual effects now. Have I ever told you about my first love? She hasn't. Once I visited Tanzia, a port famed for trade and commerce. Maybe you've heard of it. Of course we have. We've played three you. While scurrying the mountain for the legendary Herkudrome, I met this guy. He was tall and brave, his stride gallant. We exchanged one fiery glance before I knew I had been smitten. Did I tell him? Are you crazy? I would have died of shame. Oh my gosh, no. I could never do it myself. But you could. If you see him, tell him how much I love him and that he has a nice tail. The last part is optional. I had no idea what this was going to lead to. But the hot, steamy boyfriend she refers to is none other than frickin' Bracadios! I didn't even know he was in this game. I didn't know he was tied to this quest. Thank you so much for not spoiling this because what a reveal it was. And then I go to fight him thinking, well, I fought plenty of Bracadios in my days. Oh, he hits hard. And now I don't remember exactly 3U to 4U, but I don't remember the slime puddles being such a problem in 3U. I recall that they were there. But in this game, I just kept hitting every 4U, like, every 4U puddle. And then I'd get, like, this, like, little sparkle, which I think that is new. I, I, that is Blast Blight. I don't think that existed in 3U. I think it was just Slime, which did something. But, yeah, here there's Blast Blight, which pretty much gives you, like, this, this short fuse, and then you blow up if you don't roll out of it. Which I do remember that being a thing in World. But I don't think it was in 3U, so they made it worse as in deadlier so yeah bracadios was an interesting fight i love how they like built this quest in and i gotta say like i really wish i really wish the monster Hunter franchise would bring back this kind of level of charm and i don't know if that charm is lost when you add voiceover for example uh during the chat or during the stream people were saying that guild marm would not be as charming if she had voiceover and to some extent i could i could agree it would require a very specific tone voice voice acting skill to convey the charm of what I just read out to you without sounding just cringe or annoying and I think that's kind of what happened with world's handler uh, she was voiced and a lot of people found her annoying whereas I think if she wasn't voiced maybe people would have preferred or would have enjoyed handler would have thought she was less cringe I don't know it's a hypothesis all I'm saying is as we are striving for more immersive worlds better graphics we are losing a charm of monster hunter and we have to remember that that is ultimately part of the heart of this game. You can strip out all that charm and leave monster hunt, like leave monster hunting. And yes, that is the core gameplay loop. But man, it's like, uh, you're, you're missing such an important part if we, if we keep doing this. We can't lose the charm of this game. And I really hope the next Monster Hunter remembers this because every Monster Hunter game since that I've played, which would be World and Rise, they do have a level of charm, but it feels subdued and it does get harder to include charm in HD graphics. Look no further than Final Fantasy franchise. The old NES, SNES games, and to some extent the PlayStation games, were filled with charm, but we lost that charm when, you know, things got HD. And if you look at the more HD um, generation of Final Fantasy, everything became very angsty and serious and just lost a lot of its charm. Anyways, Bracadillo's the slain, bring my counter up one more, and I've unlocked another monster as I grind through low rank. Now, if you haven't played for you, the reason that there is so much grind in low rank is pretty much once you have completed the story, there is there are these quests called advance quests, which is pretty much fighting two monsters at a time that get infected by I know I've been playing too much Sunbreak, so I'm just gonna say afflicted, even though because I forget the terminology in, in the for you. Basically, they go under the 
the affliction, whatever, and then they go like super rage, and those are called advanced quests. And there seems to be a series of advanced quests tied to every village, so you pretty much have to do those to get all the little check marks, which is what I'm trying to do. It's not part of my pledge, I, it's just I like this game and I want to complete low rank before I go back, go and continue high rank. Uh, so I've been grinding through that, I swear I'm getting close. I should be able to do it in the next stream, but Every time I start the stream, like you can look at my Twitch titles. It's like, okay, cleaning up low rank. Okay, we're really finishing up low rank for real. Okay, really, really, I'm really gonna finish low rank and I'm still not done. And I think I'm a, I think I'm a stream away, but I could be five streams away. I don't know, because they just keep adding things to it. Anyways, as I've been grinding through it, I've been unlocking new monsters like the Brachidios quest. I've also unlocked a Daren Moran, which is a nice, this is a, actually a really nice callback to the start of my adventure in For You because the first monster we see in this game is a Daren, which I don't know why we needed to go out of our way to make a new monster, a new whale, when Jen Moran worked just well. And now that I fought a Daren, to learn it's the same fight as a Jen, except he has blowholes, what is the point of making an entire new monster, an entire new name? Is it just to show diversity? Is it so that we can see that there's more than one whale in these deserts? Now, if we're going to do that, it's a huge lost opportunity if there isn't ever a point where you fight the two whales at the same time. Imagine you're on your ship, to your right there's a gem ren, to your left there's a... And both of them are now whaling on you. Yeah, it's, I like that pun. So that would be... that would be fascinating. And then after your ship, like breaks you have two whales coming at you that would be so freaking intimidating now that's a siege fight i would love to fight uh yeah so i took on darren moran it was um a little i was quite nervous because i did not think it would be the same fight i was like oh my god i'm on my own what do i do in monster hunter 3 u you fought it in multiplayer it was intended as a multiplayer fight here it's presented as a single player fight so I was a lot more worried, but then when people are like, how are you struggling so much when it's the same fight? I was also obsessed with this blowhole and wanting to... What in the steaming horniness is this? I, anyways, I found his squishy spot, so now I know for the next time, and I do have to do another one. And apparently that quest is what unlocks the final new monster in low rank. I don't know which monster that is because I've... You guys have really been good this time, this journey for not spoiling anything. I am going into this game so blind, I, I really don't know what's coming up. I do know that the egg quest leads to a Fatalis. I do know that there are multiple variants of Fatalis, but I don't know much about this game. And I kind of like that. I like not knowing what's coming up. So that's where we are. I don't think I have too much more. Oh, there were, speaking of egg quests, I did do another egg quest with two wyverns, two uh, afflicted wyverns, the Rathian and the Rathlos. And this one was brutal because there were three eggs to get. And of course, every time you bring an egg, someone drops a rock blocking your path, making your run back longer. And uh, there is there is something to be said about egg quests. They have a certain charm. They're not as bs -y as the first Monster Hunter, which was just trolly and hard. Now they're hard, but interesting. Like, they're, they're still charming. Like, I, I kind of like the whole panic. Even if you kill the monsters, you're hauling your egg, and then you're going to get mugged, or there's going to be a mosquito that's after you. or the, Like, the most insignificant monsters become the most horrifying threats through egg quests and i love that pivot of perspective it's it's just i i wish we we had that in the newer games and i i it's there but it, it's not as you know you're not as scared of those insignificant monsters as you used to in the old gen so uh that's all i'm gonna say about that that's where i am in my journey really hope that we can finish low rank because we have a town to rebuild i forget the name of the town but that is the high rank chapter of this entire journey is we have to go build the defenses of this town which have been crumbled which have been destroyed by who knows what and uh yeah take on more monsters because there's still like 49 monsters in this game that i have yet to see which is wild to me how packed full of monsters this game is. Anyways, I'm having a good time. I'm loving this. I'll see you on the next stream or the next journal. And until next time, keep it classy. In my early days of becoming a hunter, I was plagued with this monstrosity, with two horns that they called a Diablos. But legends say that there was even a fiercer monster out there, bigger, more aggressive, and tankier, with only one horn called a Monoblos. It did not live up to its reputation, unfortunately. Welcome back, Classic Crew, to another journal in the For You journey as I try to slay every Fatalis in Monster Hunter For You. We are now on Journal 9. I am 
finally done with low rank for the most part. I have all the check marks. There's a blue one there, which makes me wonder, how do I unlock those? What other little treasures and treats can we find in low rank? But I have finished the final monster I had access to that I could unlock in low rank, which was a Kirin of all things. Haven't seen that little pony in a while. And I've begun my journey into the high rank adventures of For You, which uh, is a whole different setting. So, you know, the low rank setting, it's all about let's journey across the world, searching far and wide for all of these, not Pokemon, monsters to hunt and villages to find. And now we're in Dunderma where it's all about let's hole up because it's going to get intense around here. Also, I just remembered a note that I need to make. Let me just put that there. I don't know if editors going to include this. Well, I've uncovered, of course, Dunderma. I've discovered the town. I've uncovered the desert map of Monster Hunter, which I've, I, I just associated sand with Monster Hunter for you. In general, I associate sand with Monster Hunter. I mean, it's there's a desert level in pretty much every game I think I've played. Monster Hunter Stories 2 leans heavily. There's whole like desert area. It's in the movie, which I have not yet seen yet. And so for and for you just has so many like sand elements. You arrive into the game on a big sand ship and stuff. I'm kind of surprised I didn't encounter a sand level before this one. But so far I like it. I like that there's dunes. I love hopping off the dunes onto monsters. I've also met my friend the crab, which I made a video about when I uh, met him in Sunbreak. I love this boy. Boy, he was a lot harder in this game, a lot harder. And then I came across an Emerald Kongalala, which we're gonna talk about, but that was not in the Dune. There was a Cephadrome, which that thing is just garbage, garbage. And finally the Monoblos, which I had heard so much about. So let's start off where we left off. Low rank, I was grinding through, getting my check marks, finally unlocked Kieran. And I remember master rank Kieran back in my early hunting days. So Kieran scares me. Not just because of the armor he gives you in those assless chaps, but the horse scares me. He's fast, he has thunder, so I'm like, okay, I'm on a 3DS, this is gonna be so hard. I go in and I was so surprised to find how easy it was to dodge this thing and, and smack him. And then, you know, people reminded me, well, it is low rank. You know, there's two extra difficulties to this pony. I was like, oh, that's fair. Um, so I went in maybe overprepared mentally to fight this thing. And I was, you know, surprised that it wasn't as fast as I thought it would be. It was a lot more manageable. Most of its attacks I could dodge fairly comfortably. So Kieran was a fun fight. And I'm happy to have my pony back because I, it's tapping into my nostalgia, which is probably weird for a lot of you because Monster Hunter World probably was tapping into your old world nostalgia when they were introducing old monsters. But now I'm finding monsters that I, you know, the ones that I've only seen in Monster Hunter World, that's how I'm going into my nostalgia, which is all backwards, but it's fine. It feels the same, I'm sure. Uh, I also, I was on a trip not too long ago, and so I was actually grinding on the plane some new weaponry. And the closest one I could get was the Permanence, which was also the most expensive charge blade I could get. It's uh, the charge blade that is built from the Daren Moran uh, armor set. So I was grinding that on the plane, and I have to say, it was really fun and compact. I really love the 3DS for compact gameplay. And I, uh, I got all the parts. In fact, I got a, a second gem. I don't know if they just drop easier on uh, Daren or if I just got really lucky, but I got another one of its gems or mantles, whatever it is. Built this super cool charge blade. My sharpness is now in the blue. What a difference it makes. And man, it really helped me with these high rank monsters because my fights were about 10 to 15 minutes for the most part, which was a lot more reasonable. I find when you start getting over the 20 minute mark, that's when the fights start feeling like, a stamina drain. So um, yeah, I'm happy with the weapon I have. I have others to craft, but I would need some help to craft them. They require like Rathian, Rathalos tails, or like the, the fin on the back of a, of the Zamtrios, all things that I struggle in breaking. So I could use more help in grinding those out, but we're in a high rank. So, you know, maybe, although I could upgrade those weapons, but anyways. So Denderma calls and uh, yeah, so we grinded out some stuff, the Hermitor crab, surprisingly difficult. I carded to the crab. I had a lot of fun with the crab in Sunbreak and I was expecting a similar fun here, but boy, this thing was hard. Now I was also fighting it, I think with a water, uh, water blade, which probably wasn't a good idea. I, I was just shocked because in Sunbreak, it's a master rank crab. Here it's a higher rank crab. It should be easier but I was just getting maneuvered by this crab and I don't know what it was, but I really struggled. I was like, oh my goodness, is this what high rank's going to be like all the way through? Cause I still have G rank after this. This is gonna be so ridiculous. Like maybe I really have to like work on my armor and stuff. And I was just starting to get all these negative thoughts. But then I was like, ah, I just wanna keep going. So uh, the next thing up was an Emerald Kongalala. And I was like, well, the pink one was pretty- Damn it! <laughs> 
Um, so then the next thing that unlocked was a cephadrome. Oh, fun fact. So I did need the Emerald Kongalala to fuel my balloon man in the air so that I could actually survey the desert. And that's when the game actually tells you if you wave at the balloon, it'll tell you where the monster is. So I'm like, okay, the game does teach you this. It's not just random folklore that the community knows. So the Cephadrome. I've heard so much about the Cephadrome. I have PTSD of not the Cephadrome, but the, the baby Cephadromes, whatever those are called. From Monster Hunter 1, the liver quest, I tried doing that in my second Monster Hunter 1 stream. It was garbage, I didn't have cool drinks, I didn't have the, the Sonic or the Screamer pods, whatever. It was horrendous. And I've only heard bad things about the Cephadrome, the community seems to hate it. So what I've gathered from this fight, uh, and I'm so glad I had the blue sharpness, otherwise I would have been bouncing like crazy. It's basically a Rathalos of the sand. So instead of being kind of this uh, not too exciting monster that's always in the air, it's a not too exciting monster that's always in the sand. And I was shocked to know to learn that this thing actually has ranged attacks. I did not think that there would be ranged attacks. So I was keeping my distance and all of a sudden this boy spits at me. I was like, oh great, of course. So it, it has like the a bit of Plesioth and a bit of Rathalos. And if you just put that together, you get a Cephadrome. And it's not, it's not nice to look at. It's not nice to fight. I'm sure it doesn't smell nice. Could you imagine this thing? It, it's fishy. But it has been slain. I actually did not cart to this, surprisingly. It was not as bad as the community set it up to be, but it was not as fun in any kind of way. So I can only imagine it gets worse the further back you go in the generations. I'm not looking forward to fighting this thing in Monster Hunter 1. Then I went on a little crab hunt just to knock off another quest, which surprisingly took forever because I didn't know that the baby crabs hide in the sand. And the only way to get them out is you have to see where like the sand is like there, there's puffing coming out. And if you walk over it, then the crab comes out, then you can kill it, then you can finish the quest. So uh, hide and seek with the crab. I like that Monster Hunter has these little things that creates these little stories, but what a time suck that was, jeez. Uh, finally, the Monoblos. I've been looking forward to this for so long because the Monoblos I met in Monster Hunter Stories 2. For those who've been following this channel for a while in my journey, Diablos is a legend in my own story. And so Monoblos, which to me is like this elder older like brother to diablos that's just how i picture him i was really curious to see what this boy was like really surprised to see how slow he was i was started the hunt so like i feeling so powerful and just kind of going around this guy and i was like what 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 is this i'm in high rank you know i just got destroyed by a crab but i'm running circles around a monoblows quite literally he was predictable i could hit him and then and then he hit me and I understood why this thing was scary. With one hit, I think he took out half my life. And I was like, oh, okay, he's a tank. He's slower, but he hits so hard. And to be fair, my armor isn't upgraded. So it's, you know, it's not a proper reflection, but the other monsters in high rank so far have not hit as hard as a Monoblows. So I can only imagine as we get to the end game that the Monoblows becomes quite terrifying to fight because if he's this tanky at high rank, it's only gonna get worse. So otherwise, I like his moveset because it is predictable. I'm not a big fan of it. He has, seems to have a lot of HP because it took a while to get this guy down, but I like big tanky monsters and I kind of lie. So this one, is he better than Diablos? I have to hunt him a lot more times to really make that uh, decision. I welcome our Monoblos Lord into the Diablos you know, family and I look forward to seeing what happens to him in G rank. So. Um, kind of neutral where I'm at right now. He's he, he At first he was coming across as kind of easy, but then he showed where his real strength is. You just screw up too many times and you are done. Like he does not forgive. Uh, so that was fun. And then with that quest, we unlocked the Master of Defense, who uh, is the next part of the story, I think. So the Master of Defense has arrived to Dunderma. He's there to b help build the whole defense. We also saw a Kushala, which is kind of being set up as potentially the next elder monster that I have to, elder dragon that I have to uh, look out for. Like this, this Kushal is weird. Creates a storm, shows up, basically says like, I'm here, what you gonna do about it? You're gonna build some defense, good luck. And then he just leaves. And I was like, all right, okay. I'm, I mean, I like when the game sets things up, but like when does Steve show up? Cause Steve was introduced in this game. I'm as, I imagine he's maybe a G rank flagship. Uh, so, Curious to see where the story's gonna go here. And then I've got some songs that I've also unlocked, which is kind of a new mechanic. I did a quest for a cat or a palic, whatever it's called, uh, a feline. 
and that sparked his memory and he remembered a song. So I unlocked a new song for the stage. I love that idea. I didn't like the song per se, but if I can unlock more music in this game, I'm about that. I like the mechanic. I like all these like little mechanics that are very nice, complimentary items to a really nice meal. What this feels like is like if I don't know if you've ever been to like a Korean restaurant, but when you go to a Korean restaurant, it doesn't matter what food you order as your like main dish, they're going to put like just nine different dishes in front of you just to snack on and try stuff. And then you've got like your main dish, whatever it is. And so this is what Monster Hunter is to me. I've got my main dish, which is my hunts, but then I've got all these like little side dishes that I can just like eat from. You know, I can do the, Meow the Meowster Hunters a little bit, or I can go fishing a little bit, or I can do some, some gather quests, or I can go on expeditions. I can find some poogies. Now I can unlock some, this just, or I can upgrade my kinti. I can do all these like little things. It's not that different. I mean, every Monster Hunter I feel does that but this one here it hits different somehow and I can't quite put my finger on it but I'm liking it so that's where I'm at early high rank still making my way through I think I really need to start grinding out uh, a high rank armor set I'm looking towards the um, the blue drums oh, I forget the name escapes me right now what they're called either I do that or either I do uh, the current armor I have in a high rank that would focus more on defense than attack so I'm not sure what I'll do yet, but I, I do need to upgrade my armor soon. My weapon feels comfortable, but my armor, it's I'm rolling the dice on that. So hopefully I see you on the next stream or on the next journal. And until next time, keep it classy. I apologize for the delay in this latest For You journal, but I've been busy getting trampled on, shocked, poisoned, smacked around, and all forms of humiliation in this high rank shuffle that is just destroying me. <laughs> Welcome back, Classy Crew, to a For You journal as I make my way through Monster Hunter For You, trying to find every single Fatalis and slaying them. So far, I've slayed zero. I haven't even seen a Fatalis. And I'm now making my way through high rank both Village and Hub. And I have to say, I'm progressing through both quite evenly. I've hit high rank five. And in terms of a story, I have just recently brought in the research assistant back to town who opened up the Wyserium, I think it's called. I don't know, it's like a pharmacy for Wyverians or something. Just add Wyverian and pharmacy and put it together. And now this place, I can get some, some um, what's that, dust of life and another thing that is good for multiplayer. Uh, both of which I am not using because I am not good enough yet. So I have encountered a bunch of new variants in high rank and they range from, okay, this is fun, like the blue Yan Kutku, to, oh my God, what is wrong with you? Why are you so annoying? Don't you dare, ah! These variants have made this game so much less pleasant to fight through. So red Kezu is like Kezu, but worse. I didn't think you could make a Kezu worse, but apparently you can, you just gotta make them red. The thing that's getting me in high rank, well, first of all, is my low rank armor. So I'm taking a ton of damage. But second are the combos. These monsters combo you to death. Like you're like, okay, oh, whoops, I screwed up. And then they're like, bam, bam, bam. And then you're dead. Like, which is probably why I need the high rank armor too. So the blue, the blue uh, let's go from the start. The blue Yan Kutku didn't leave much of an impression for me. The first one did because it was my revenge on the Kut, on the Yan, what's it called? The Yan Kutku, which I had fought in Monster Hunter 1, which was a menace. That thing was hard to fight. So when I saw it in 4U, I was like, all right, it's time for revenge. And it was a lot easier to fight in 4U. So the blue variant, I honestly can't even tell you what the big difference is. I think he shoots maybe a little bit more fire. Maybe he's a little bit faster. But otherwise, he's he's kind of the same. So he didn't stand out to me in any way. Red Kezu, on the other hand, he is just more annoying with his combos. He's roaring a lot. He's kind of, I recall he's doing a lot more like AoEs. Is on the ceiling a lot. Honestly, it all blends together. It's like Kezu, but it makes me see red in more ways than one. Not only is he red, but he makes me angry. And Pink Rathian also double carded. That thing was disgusting the fight. I... I struggled and I was wearing the the armor that I've been wearing this whole time, which gives me like health bonuses, defense bonuses. But man, this pink Rathian didn't care. She just kept stomping me, which, oh my God, I got stomped like three, four times. And then just like, oh, get poisoned. I'm flying away. Now I'm charging towards you. Trample, 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 trample. Oh, you're poisoned again. It was one of the most annoying fights ever. So I was so happy when that finally died. And I did something so dumb in that fight. I, um, yeah, I weakened it so I went to sleep. I was like, oh, I'm gonna wake it up with a bomb. So usually I'm always carrying the bombs I 
brought, bring with me. This time, the only thing I had on me was a bomb that I brought from the chest, which was like barrel bomb S or something. Something I never carry with me. I assumed it was a smaller bomb, but I had no idea it would be so tiny. And so I put the bomb next to the head and I'm like, oh, it's so tiny. I thought it'd be a bigger bomb. Off it went like boop and it woke her up. And I was like, oh man, this is like, I hope I don't cart. I was close to a third cart on that one. But luckily I persevered, made it through, killed her with a boop to the chin and we took her, her skin and her parts. Uh, then the purple gypsy rose, honestly, not as bad as the other two, the red Kezu and the uh, pink Rathian. It was just more, okay, okay, I don't like where this is going. And for the most part, oh, it could flash you instantly, which did not expect that. So usually the base one, he, you kind of get the ch -ch 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 -ch, and then it flashes you. This one doesn't care. It's like, oh, you've been flashed and you didn't even know it. So uh, that, that's a bit annoying, but otherwise um, still just a garbage monster. And it still gives you a garbage armor set. Like it doesn't even look good. From there, like I said, did a lot of hub rank. Uh, so there was a lot of multiplayer shenanigans, a few of them that I want to share with you. So um, I've lifted the restrictions off of armor and weapon because I just want to grind through a lot of these quests, get my check marks. So I don't, and we only fight monsters I have already fought. So I don't care if we can get through these quests quick. It's all part of the fun and games of doing things together. So there was one quest in hub that was capture a Rathian, oh, sorry, a Rathalos, and it was a low rank one. And of course, a lot people, some people had G rank weapons. It took three hunts before we finally captured the Rathalos because my team kept destroying the Rathalos. And oh my goodness, by the third time, it was getting kind of frustrating. I'm like, guys, quit hitting it so fast. Or like someone bring, uh, someone eventually brought an armor skill that lets you see when it's ready for capture. But yeah, everyone was just going to town on it too fast and uh, trying to be like a little, oh, one more hit, one more hit. It's like, back off, stop hitting it. Let's see if it's walking, if it's limping. Oh my goodness. It was, it hurt how many times we killed it. And then there was another shenanigan with one of our moderator, uh, Ads Venture, uh, shout out to Ads, who decided to challenge me for some reason. I think I lost the bet or something. He claimed that he could kill a Devil Joe faster before I brought four suit stones back to base. So there's a level where you have to like haul some suit stones. So I went straight for the mega dash juice. I'm like, all right, you're on, let's do this. And he went off with, I forget what weapon, I think it was an insect leg. And so he was playing with Devil Joe while I was just going back and forth hauling stones. I did not finish my quest because, well, he died. So he lost that quest. Oh, he made it harder on himself by doing it naked. I don't know why he made it so hard for himself, but um, somebody got a little bit too confident in their ability to handle a pickle and uh, slipped and fainted three times. So there was also a follow-up to that with someone else uh, in the community called Gujira who uh, wanted to do the same thing. He wanted to do the quest together. Uh, there wasn't as much of a challenge. It was just go do it. So I went and get the suit stone. He wasn't trying to, to kill the, the devil joe so i'm like just going minding my own business with the stone i'm like i really hope a devil joe doesn't show up and a right after saying that it just comes out of the ground roars make me makes me drop my stone i was like wow fantastic comedic timing there devil joe good job good job and then um, i finished the quest while uh Gojira was having fun smashing the pickle after this uh through the hub quest what's great about uh grinding with friends is i was actually able to play around with my armor sets get some better armor because man i was suffering in the early high rank like i just need more defense and better armor and some proper skills so the first thing was the nursilla charge blade it was pretty powerful it has like the most sharpness available to me it's got some pretty decent raw damage it's an impact file which lets me I, i've learned it lets me stun monsters and exhaust them and it causes poison so like it checks off a lot of boxes for being a pretty cool charge blade so i got that and now that's kind of my go-to charge blade i got the research assistant back from a story perspective like i said i think it was the pink rathian quest that unlocked this oh man was it horrendous and then i was like all right what what to do so in 3u i was like what did i do in 3u to like get high rank armor so i think it was the jaggy armor or the volvi dot armor i went because it had attack plus and stun plus which are all it's a nice combo of offensive defensive skills so i was going for the jaggy armor got most of it except one i unlocked a special like high rank gormagala in low rank village and it was through fighting that that I was like, oh, it'd be so cool to get like a Gormagala armor set because it's, you know, it's one of the flagships of this game. It's a cool looking armor. 
I don't even know what it does, but I just decided I want to be looking different. I want Gormagala armor. And so the community actually gave me a tip and said, well, you know, you need a gem to get the chest piece of high rank Gormagala. They said, but if you do a blend of low rank, high rank armor, you actually end up with more skills and it's a better combo and it's easier to grind out. So you get the head, arm, and foot of uh, high rank armor of Gormagala, and you get the chest and waist in low rank, which lets you get a, um, an armor set with some pretty good skills. You get challenger plus two, which boosts your attack when the monster is in rage. And then you also get bio researcher, which lets you, I, to, how I understand it is if you're like smelly or gassy, you can still chug your potions and use your items and it makes you resistant to blights or something or immune to them. And then it also gives me sharpness plus one. So boom, more damage there. Uh, the downside is it also activates fire resistance minus 20. So I currently have minus 43 status to fire resist. So I will definitely not fight any of the wraths with this armor set. I will probably switch out to my jaggy armor. I also need to do a stream or some time to just grind out armor spheres because I really got to buff some defense into these things because I am still sweating. Like these things are hard. So that's where I'm at. I needed to gear up to properly handle high rank. The next wave of monsters, I haven't seen anything new necessarily. I can tell by the monster parts, there's a Brute Tigrex coming up at one point. Um, I think there's a Stygian Zenogre uh, out there that's coming up soon. But right now it's just a matter of, I have to fight all of the monsters I fought in low rank, now in high rank, um, and they're so much harder. I just finished the Celtus Queen and she was so tanky, so many combos. Man, that fight was hard. All these fights are getting really hard. The Gormagala that was like higher rank, also double carded to that and almost triple carded. These fights are getting intense and I'm so scared because G rank is only gonna be harder. So I'm really hoping I can balance it out with some better armor. Uh, I gotta get better with the charge blade. Like people are really telling me you need to learn guard point. Um, so I think I'm feeling that pressure too. Okay, so that's where I am in my journey. Hopefully uh, you'll be able to join me in my next streams or on the next journal. Onward to Fatalis, and until next time, keep it classy. I have faced the hardest quest in Monster Hunter for you. It's so hard, I don't even want to play it again. In fact, I won't. Welcome back, Classy Crew, to another journal entry in my journey to slay every Fatalis, and I have a story to share with you about the hardest quest so far. This is not a quest that you would find on your typical Monster Hunter 4 U cartridge because of course it's a modded quest which was provided to me by my community because they feel I'm not suffering enough in Monster Hunter 4 U despite me carting a lot more in high rank. Like things are killing me. I am struggling in Monster Hunter 4 U. I am not comfortable with the charge blade. But let me tell you about this BS quest that the mods put together for me. So first of all, they no context. They just say, here you go. We're gonna do this quest together. So we go into the volcanic hollow. It's a it's a suit stone carrying quest. So I go all the way down to region nine, pick up my suit stone. Everything looks fine. I'm like, okay, what's gonna happen? Devil Joe's gonna come out of the, uh, the ground. I did not know it was modded by the way at this point. And as soon as I leave region nine, I get into a little area and I see some conchus, some massive conchus. I didn't even know they could be that big. And later I learned they don't, they're modded. So there's these massive conchus everywhere. I was just like, how am I gonna climb this wall? They're so friggin' big. So somehow I climbed and, I, and that's just the beginning. That's just the beginning of the bullshit because it keeps getting worse. As you continue, you are faced with every possible bullshitty thing that could want to hurt you. The next region is Meelinxes, which aren't too bad. You can zigzag around them. The next region is, I'm, I'm getting messed up as, as to what it is. I think it was either the things that charge you or it was the little paralyzing raptors. And so in that region, I remember I'm trying to climb the wall because I'm in, I'm close to region one. I was like, what the hell? Where's, why can't I climb any wall? So the mods put freaking boulders in front of all the walls. So you have to take this massive detour into another region with humongous mosquitoes. And I don't know if you've ever seen these mosquitoes up close with the big stinger when they're gigantified, that stinger is even worse. And then you have to jump down this massive uh, cliff. So if you don't have a feline lander, you fail the quest. Luckily, they told me ahead of time, eat for feline lander. So they did take care of me. And the whole time your health is dropping. Also, they gave me mega dash juice. So 
props to the mods for not being entirely cruel. So I got I got my juice. They're healing me because I there's no way I could have made it all this way uh, with the health I had. And then I get to and uh, Blue, one of my mods, is also carrying the second suit stone behind me. We get to the top. I drop the the stone in the box, and I'm like, drop the stone, Blue. I only need two. Let's complete this quest. And he, he just basically just waves, says sorry, drops the stone on the floor. All the mods drop out of the quest and they're like, you're on your own now. Get that last stone. Like, uh, so of course, I'm not one to walk away from a challenge. So I go out, I get the stone. I'm hustling on my own. I know the path. I'm like, I got to book it. I got no one to heal me. So I got to book it. I make it to the top. I see the chest and my health boop, disappears and I fail the quest. I'm like, I'm never doing that again. Never doing that again. If you're interested in trying this quest for yourself, I'm sure the mods will be in the comments below and they will surely find a way to give it to you. Uh, you can also join the disc the HeyJ Discord community. You'll find the quest there if you want to have a terrible time. Now let's talk about the real game, the fun stuff, the, the not so cruel, uh, the fair challenging stuff. So I am getting close to the end of a high rank and I'm also dealing with the high rank variants of all of these monsters. Like Nanjarala, I am constantly surrounded by this thing. And every time I'm trying to hit him, he's always got like his little tip thing that's like a shield that makes me bounce off of him. So I've been struggling to, cause I don't like being inside Nanjarala. I'm always trying to get out of it because I know he's gonna squeeze me like a snake does. But now I've given up. I can't get out. Cause as soon as I get out, I reposition, he's around me again. Like he's just so good at wrapping himself around me. So I'm like, you know what, a charge, yeah, charge blade is what it's called, right? A charge blade lets me swing this axe all around me and I'm surrounded by Najarella, so let's go. So I've just embraced, I'm like, I'm going to hold my ground here, swinging my axe. I'm like, I can slam in any direction and I will hurt him. So far, it's been okay. The, the ROI has been good on that gamble. Next up, we got some new monsters that I fought. I fought the Azure Rathalos, my first brute Tigrex outside of world and the Stygian Zenogre, which Oh, I actually failed that quest. So the Azure Rathalos, I don't have much to say outside of in this game, Rathalos and Azure Rathalos really don't feel that different. Like in the other games, Azure Rathalos, outside of being more beautiful, is noticeably more in the air. But in 4U, base Rathalos is so much in the air, I don't see a difference between these two. So I just think Azure looks better, but I feel... I'm glad that they changed Rathalos maybe to make him a little bit more grounded in the next games because right now it's like it's just a different color. Brute Tigrex. So I'm not a big fan of Tigrex so I, and I haven't really had the chance to fight many um, variants of Tigrex. Brute Tigrex, I remember fighting him in World. I was kind of terrified, but I went in with some massive earplugs and he was super easy. So my first instinct when I saw Brute Tigrex, I, like, I need some like earplugs. And I started looking at skills and armor. I was like, oh my God, this is gonna take me four hours to get some earplugs. So I was like, ah, let's just try the fight. And it was pretty manageable. Um, I was surprised. He does a lot of like spinnies. He does do a lot of roars that hurt. But as long as you're not in his face, like in front of him, you can dodge the roars pretty easily. You gotta see the tell when he does his spin. And for the most part, it's not like that much harder than the base Tigrex, honestly. Speaking an ogre, however, whole different story. Okay, it doesn't help that my armor is weak to dragon, first of all. That's another problem. My armor right now, it's cool. I've got some cool skills, but I'm weak to fire and dragon. Stuff that I can nullify with some food, but as soon as I cart once, the odds go massively in the monster's favor if they are a fire or a dragon type. So this boy was just knocking my health down like significantly. So I, it's just a matter of learning the pattern. Like he made me cart five times before I got him. So he made me fail the quest. I almost failed again because he would just land on me or like he's, he moves really fast. But I mean, he's got such a killer soundtrack. I know I can't, you can't talk about Zenogre fight without talking about the soundtrack. Cause it's just so good. I know I've repeated this like 20 times on this channel. It's just, it's that good. It's probably my favorite monster fighting song. So glad I finally beat him, but like I'm really at a point where I need a, a an alternate armor set to make up for my weakness. And I was going to uh, farm that in a multiplayer stream, but I ended up doing a bunch of other stuff. In fact, I ended up farming because I needed a Brute Tigrex to get the, uh, the fangs to get my charge blade leveled up. I needed two of those. So I got that. But to get a Brute Tigrex in hub rank, I needed to level up to, I think, Hunter rank six or seven. So anyways, I, I, I did that. I, I leveled up to Hunter rank seven, but I ended up just like fighting all these other monsters and not actually focusing on armor just because I was having a good time. I was checking out quests. I was like progressing. In fact, I had uh, a Celtus Queen quest that I started off my multiplayer challenge with. 
and I'm not very familiar with what the rare drops are yet. So I, I kill the Celtus Queen, I harvest, and I see something I haven't seen in a while, which was called like the, the Celtus Queen Extract. I was like, is that the rare drop? And then we go to the reward screen and I see I got two more of those. I was like, oh, it's not rare. I got two more of them. And the chat's like, oh my God, this guy's luck. So it turns out it is the rare drop. And I got three of them, uh, one off the carve, two out of the rewards, which is wild to me. I've never seen that. Maybe like, uh, like in the older games, I haven't seen it. The newer games, like they, they give you rare drops like crazy. I don't even know why they call them rare drops anymore. Made all of those unlocks and I've seen what is coming up next. And man, I am getting a little concerned. So my next story quest is a Bracadios, a high rank Bracadios. And I'm realizing for Charge Blade, I, maybe I just don't know how to use the Charge Blade properly. I feel the Charge Blade to Bracadios matchup is really hard. With the Switch Axe, I didn't struggle as much. Like in World, I hadn't even mastered the Switch Axe and I killed the what is, whatever the evolved form of Bracadios is. Like, I, you know, I, I did okay. But here in 4U, I'm just really struggling. I, like he, he's just jumping everywhere. I can't get close to him. And when I am getting close to him, he's making the ground on fire. He's putting slime everywhere. He is hard. So I'm not looking forward to that. So the next stuff in Hub is Teostra, Kushala, Devil Joe, Silver Rathalos, Gold Rathian, Rajang. Like it is just a seven layer cake of pain coming up. Is that seven? I've also got an Akantor. I don't even know what an Akantor is, which is so cool that I have never heard of this monster. But also, why haven't I heard of this monster? Is he that bad? Like just in a sucky way that nobody talks about him. So I've come across him. I saw the like the little icon and he looks like a spiky Tetsukabra. I know nothing about an Akantor. In fact, when I saw the quest come up, I'm like, oh, Agnactor is in this game. Wait a minute, there's a few letters missing. And the chat was just like, ugh, Akantor. Like nobody was like, yay, or oh, I can't wait to see him fight. Like, there was just no love for a Cantor, so really curious to see what that's going to be about. So that's where I am in the monsters. On the uh, on a note for for you, um, I've realized that I don't know at what point this happens, but I've realized every village has its own side quest story, and I've seen now I see the pattern, and I love this. So like I've realized in the main village that you start off with. I'm sorry, I forget the name of it. Uh, you've got like the Aiden love story going on. So, you know, you're, you're progressing the quest. Aiden's trying to charm the guild marm, uh, trying to marm charm her, I think, as they say. And you're constantly like trying to stop them from doing that. Then on uh, Sun Snagail or whatever, the beach, Chico Sands, you've got the cowardly Palico who's like, I I've been following his story. So I I'm doing all his fights and I'm learning. He's the one that actually wants me to slay an Akantor, I think. To, to like do something about avenging his father or something. So like there, this is world building. Like I've said this before for For You, but this is how you do some world building. Like keep those quests coming. And to be fair, I'm pretty sure they do this in all the other games. I don't think this is exclusive to For You, but I think because you have so many villages in For You, it, it just stood out to me more. And I think the, the way it's delivered, the way it's packaged, just had more of an impact on me here. So love what that's doing. Now I was saying I need to level up my game uh, because I'm dying a lot more. I'm struggling with monsters. I've started now uh, bringing drugs with me. So buffing my offense and defense. I've also realized I don't have enough like farm supply to maintain this like line of drugs. So now I'm getting all strategic like, okay, what items do I need to farm? Oh man, I don't have enough farm slots. And this is the first time really where I feel my farm is too small. In all the other games, I'm just like, yeah, I've got so many items coming or like, I I'm okay with my farm. I don't need to upgrade it. Here, like, I really wish I could have five slots of farm because I need so many items. I need like, I need to populate my inventory with so many side things. Like I need to go on expeditions. And this is good because this shows that the balance in this game is they don't reward you easily enough where you have to use these systems that the game offers you. So I'm actually loving that the game is pushing me to, to you know, it's challenging me and I got to think of other ways to make up for my like lack of skill or my weakness. So that's where I'm at. I've also realized that hunt, uh, the high rank gimmick is freaking Seregio shows up everywhere, which is getting a little old at this point. All these quests I'm fighting and then Seregio is like, I'm here, have some spikes. I'm like, oh God, just go away, go away. I get you're the flagship, but stop it. Stop. Like, you are getting annoying. And lastly, just a little note on my combo. I haven't done guard point yet. That is going to be the final evolution of my playstyle. But I have learned 
that my combo I've, de I've described on the channel before of how I used to do it. I always, I, I would do the, the double bun, which lets me step in, do the, the sword, the whoosh whoosh, then charge that into the shield and then do it another time so I can uh, charge the shield red. Anyways, what I've learned is that there was a slow, like there was a pause when I did my step in whoosh whoosh and then, oh, that's what I do. I would hold until the flash and then hit. This this is probably only meaningful to the charge blade people. So I've learned that after I do the whoosh whoosh, instead of doing like the charge and smack, if I go straight to the shield punch, it lets me loop over the combo without, without missing a beat. So it makes me a lot more maneuverable. It, uh, it doesn't leave me vulnerable and it lets me charge my shield faster. So I have evolved my charge blade skill a little bit. I, I'm not very fluid in pulling it off, but now like I actually try to do that. So I'm not left with that opening. And then uh, as I get more comfortable with that, I'm eventually gonna have to sit down with a Gaijin Hunter video and learn freaking um, guard point. I think in G rank, that's going to be my goal. Uh, I've heard that it's good training with the Diablos to figure out how to do it. And we're gonna master it and we're gonna make it through this game, kill everything, but especially those fatalities. So thank you again for joining me on this journal. I'll see you on the next one or on the stream. And until next time, keep it classy. I pledge to play Monster Hunter for you to slay every fatalis in the game. And I'm happy to report one has been slain. It took many eggs, but we cracked this one down. Welcome hunters and also members of the classy crew to another journal in Monster Hunter for you where I continue to progress to seek out the fatalities and uh, get hurt a lot along the way. It's been almost three months since my last update. I've been busy playing in Monster Hunter 1, finishing Quest and Rise, doing all sorts of other things in other games. But now we are back. We are focused. The clock is ticking. Nintendo's sur <laughs> shutting off the servers because while my pledge doesn't say I need to... Um, how I slay the fatalities is I want to have the option of first trying to solo, but if I can't solo them, I want the option to bring friends to defeat these fatalities, and that option will no longer be available to me after the sh server shutdown. <clears throat> this journal is covering the last three streams, which have been super productive. There's been a lot of things going on. I've finished high rank. I've killed a fatalist. I've killed a lot of other things. I'm losing my voice, but <clears throat> so there's kind of three paths that are open to me at this point in For You. I can continue the story of Dundorma, which is uh, building the defenses to protect that city. And that is the storyline of High Rank. So that is happening. <clears throat> I've also seen that there's a bunch of side quests that have unlocked like multi-chain side quests for each village, which I've kind of been dabbling in them, not realizing that, wait a minute, these are like four compartmentalized stories that act as side quests after you're done all of the low rank and high rank story. So that is path number two, which I've been dabbling in quite a bit. And then there's path number three, which is the guild, uh, the guild hall, where I am now hunter rank seven. I have a bunch of like little low rank stuff to do in there. And I have unlocked <clears throat> the elder dragons in that hall to do in multiplayer. So those are the three paths. I've tackled a bit of all of them throughout the last three streams, starting with the side quests, because I saw those quests showing up as low rank quests. I'm like, well, I got to clear those. But I realized very quickly that, ooh, these uh, quests pack a punch. <clears throat> specifically the hearth quest line i made it all the way to the end which unlocks a teostra of all things i'm like i've heard some horror stories of teostra and my gore magala armor is really weak to fire so that was unattractive i've made it through the valhabar storyline oh by the way the the hearth storyline is the chief i think broke his hammer that his wife made for him or something and now we got the daughter wants to build a hammer for the father which is a very touching story and it really hammers home the relationship between a father and a daughter so valhabar is all about aiden trying to woo the guild marm and falling in love with her by showing his affection through hunting things that are outside of his league. Let's be honest here. She is outside of his league. Sans Nagail is the uh, cowardly cat which keeps telling you, fight these things for me and I'll watch you. And it all goes back to like the father of the cat got murdered or something by this monster, which is the Akantor, which is a monster I had never seen before. And then Cathar, Cathar is doing something there. I don't, I just started that quest line, so I don't know what it's going to lead to. I'm assuming it's going to lead to um, Kushala, probably, like it's another Elder Dragon. So I'm working my way through that one. <clears throat>
So the first thing I decided to do was, let's see what an Encantor is about. I was very curious, not realizing this thing is boss grade level hard. First of all, uh, I got introduced to a new level, which is like a fire arena, which at first I liked, but now I'm, I'm definitely not liking it because I've been in there a few times, including with my Crimson Fatalis fight. But a Cantor is big, he hits hard, and I noticed he has a lot of movesets like a Tigrex, so he's basically a really buff Tigrex. Design-wise, he's really cool looking. I love the massive tusks he has. I love the spikiness. I love that he's a tank. I love the tail that almost looks like he has a hand at the tip of it. It reminds me a lot of the final boss. Uh, the tail reminds me of the final boss of Sunbreak. But uh, unfortunately, your boy Hey J here was not good enough to take on Nakantor, and I failed this quest, and he remains undefeated to this day. This boy just hit me way too hard, and I was not ready in more ways than one. Mentally, I was not prepared for such a massive fight, so I gotta suit up, get back in there, and have my revenge on Nakantor. He's just really tanky and hits really hard. And I think I just, my defense was maybe too low on my armor. I got to go back in, learn his moves, learn how to dodge, get better with my charge blade. What happened? After that, I realized a lot of my enemies ahead of me, um, on the high rank quest line, there is a frenzied Bracadios waiting for me, which I associate to fire. Everything is associated to fire at this point, even though I know that they're not fire element monsters except Theostra. So I'm like, I need to protect myself from fire. So I decided to just craft some new armor. What can I make that protects me from fire? Because I think with my Gormagala armor set, I have like minus 25 resistance to fire, which is terrible. And so I realized I had enough materials from a Black Gravios to make almost an entire set. And by almost, I mean everything but the helm, but I was able to put on a Gravios helm to kind of make it look okay. But chat was like, no, we all has the match. Go fight a Black Gravios. It'll take you five minutes and then you get the helm and it matches and blah, blah, blah. And I'm like, nah, you know what? This works. Not everything needs to be perfect, chat. Chill, I swear. Chat has a perfectionism complex. Uh, I have a new armor set. It's ugly, it's gross, but it's effective because it gives me fire resist. It also gives me a uh, defense up and I put in some decorations in there. So it's a large defense up. So I'm getting more tanky. And I got a bonus skill of guard up, which I think lets me guard more powerful attacks. So I'm actually starting to use or trying to use my charge blade in more defensive maneuvers sometimes. I'm definitely not efficient with it. I'm not where I want to be with it yet, but I am starting to get away from the mindset of everything can be dodged to maybe I should block this to maintain my position. And I, I think that is very important from what I understand what, uh, I think it's called the guard point is. Guard point is all about blocking and I think going into a counter strike from what I understand. So actually getting into the mindset of hold your ground is very important to guard block. Uh, that's my reasoning behind it. So Teostra for the hearth quest line, Teostra was as hard as I thought he would be. He moves so fast, he's so aggressive. At first I got caught by the blast blight. I didn't realize that like the little cloud of stuff gives you blast blight. So I had to be a little bit more careful after that just to like shake it off whenever I was blast blighted. Otherwise he was doing massive damage to me. Um, he did, a, he was doing a lot of twerk in this, this Teostra. I know it's a move in the other games, but here it was more noticeable that I just didn't want to be behind him because he just started twerking and shaking that tail and hitting me. Otherwise it was just, um, it was just a game of like getting out of the way constantly because he's just comboing and just laughing in your face, in your face. Otherwise he was more manageable then I was led to believe like there was a lot of horror stories in the discord about how hard Teostra was and to be fair he's hard but manageable hard and I think with my new armor set my defense skills gave me a little bit more cushion to be able to make a few more mistakes and maneuver around Teostra overall love the music as always he's a good fight but he is intense that said, I wouldn't mind fighting him again. Like there are some monsters where I fight them and I'm like, like you know, Kezu, any Kezu, I don't want to fight that. But a Teostra, I will fight a Teostra again. Then going to the Valhobar quest line, uh, we've got the Rajang. Rajang just sucks all the time. I don't know what you want me to say about Rajang. What, they made him worse in this game, although I think this is his debut. He charges instantly. So I can recall in the other games, whenever he would charge up, he would like roar and then he'd get like the golden fur. But in this one, he's just like, whoop, I'm now gold. And it's just like, what? You, you can just turn it on like that? So Rajang, again, was a lot of just get out of the way. He's super aggressive. And it helps that I fought him in the other games 
So he, he was manageable. And again, I would rather fight Rajang than a Kezu. Any day, I would fight a Rajang over a Kezu. Uh, and then over on the Cathar quest line, I know this is so dumb. We're talking about Elder Dragons, and now I got to talk about a freaking Celtus. Because the start of the Cathar quest side quest line is capture a Celtus, not the queen, the little bug. And it is so difficult because he's weak, so you can't go too crazy on him or you're going to kill him. And then I struggled so much to capture him, not realizing this thing flies and I don't actually know how to knock it down on the ground. And so I, I beat it really quickly and he went to rest and this was my chance to capture him and it could have been done like that. I could have walked away like a pro. But the problem is I, I'm not a pro and I wasn't thinking about it this way. So he's on the wall and I didn't remember that when you hit him on the wall when he's sleeping, he'll fall down. So what I should have done is put a trap under him, climb the wall, bonk him into the trap, tranquilizer we're going back to camp we're having some steak but instead i bonked him he fell down and then i had a trap like a few feet away and he was flying over the trap and i'm like oh i see the hard part how do we get it down so i was trying to like get him to fall down and i, I don't like i was trying to boop him but i wasn't trying to boop him too hard because he was gonna die and i was just like oh what else can i do maybe i can flash him but then i'm like oh the timing to flash a bug to fall into a trap is so precise and then i tried to put another trap but then because i put the first trap i couldn't put the second trap and then he flew away to the webbing where i couldn't put traps on the webbing and it was just a frustrating situation of five minutes of me trying to figure out how am i going to capture this stupid flying bug that is so weak if i'm going to hit it anymore it's going to die on me and i will fail so screw the pacifist route everything should just get slain uh, but anyways, I did do it after I realized that, oh, I'm doing side quests. No, I want to finish the high rank storyline. And then we do side quests like that feels like a more natural order. Uh, so the next things that were up was a frenzied Bracadios. And I was shocked. I was watching my old journals and I was sharing how I was struggling in high rank. Everything was hitting me so hard. I think all I needed really was to get this new armor set because everything else from this point onward in the story was really comfortable to fight. The Frenzy Bracadios felt so quick, and I'm also now using this new like Wyvern Stone Power, which helps knock the Frenzy out of monsters. But you guys know, I've complained a lot about 4U's Bracadios being just hard and not a good matchup with Charge Blade. But this specific fight, I felt in control, and I'm also maybe maneuvering a little bit better with my Charge Blade. I'm now trying to get the Axe Mode out more intentionally. I really need to learn how to do AEDs instead of SAEDs. That, I have no idea what I'm doing wrong. And I'm blocking more, which is also helping. So my skill in Charge Blade is getting there and I can feel the growth and I'm like, oh, I remember doing this with Switch Axe and I can't wait till uh, it just clicks and I finally like unlock the upper tier of Charge Blade. Like we often talk about leveling up as a hunter and being better uh, hunter against the monsters and how this game levels up the player. But I don't know if we talk enough about just like no matter how good you are with your main weapon and whatever you've been playing for thousands of hours learning a new weapon and unlocking the abilities like you know what they are and i know some of you learn a lot faster than i do in fact most of you do but like i'm so slow in my progress towards a weapon i can feel the transformation take place and it's so cool and it's so rewarding and i just know that by the time i get to the energy rank i will be guard pointing i will be i, I just know it's gonna happen even though it's not happening right now we'll get there we'll get there uh, so the Frenzy Bracadios was a fun fight that died. That unlocked the next fight, which was a frenzied Devil Joe. I was like, oh my god, this is going to be so hard. Why are we starting right out the gate with a frenzied Devil Joe? Can't just have Devil Joe. We got to have frenzied. And once again, this proved to be such a good matchup. I don't know if it's because I know Devil Joe. It was a nice, comfortable fight. It took me 14 minutes, which, you know, that's not a number to brag about. But like, to me, a hard fight is 20, 25 minutes. So... 14 minutes for my first encounter with him, where I'm at with my level of skill, that is a very average number. And you know, average is good. We don't we don't talk here at this channel about sub five minute hunts, especially not when we're soloing. Some differences I've noticed with this Devil Joe is his, especially since I've just fought him in 3U, uh, his Dragon Breath seems a lot shorter in this game, which I'm like, okay, well that's more manageable. And my strategy was just stay between the legs, stay under him, whoosh, whoosh, everywhere I'm hitting, I'm hitting some kind of pickle. Either way, he's dead. Uh, so once that was done, it really unlocked the end game 
of the high rank storyline in Dundorma. We got introduced to his immenseness and I love this. I'm like, okay, what is this? Like the fact that they're all calling him his immenseness. I'm like, is this going to be a big dude or something? Cut scene, big dude. I was like, oh wow, they actually come in this size. I've never seen, uh, I, I think it's like a Wyverian. I've never seen such a big Wyverian. And so this has just like opened my mind to what's possible in the Monster Hunter lore. I was like, I always thought they were like the little short dudes. I know that there's the like hu normal human form Wyverians, uh, and I just love how they introduced them and just having that like cutscene and that story building. It, this game is really, it's just really good. It's very fun. We all know this. But anyways, he explains that, yes, the defenses are almost done. Uh, that the uh, Kushala, which is a rusted Kushala, is attacking the town. However, now we have discovered an apex monster called Apex Regios. This is my first apex in this game. I was like, oh, there are apexes here. Okay. I've seen this before. I know what it, I know what it's about. And we got a bunch of cool cutscenes showing like the town evacuating. Um, like you, it just creates so much more emotion in this game. The cutscenes are so cool. Like if this was all HD, it would have been so much better. And I think we do get some HD if like you do Citra stuff, but I don't. Before I talk about Seregios, I know that I somehow missed talking about my first Seregios in my last journals, and I don't know how I missed out on that. This is going back like potentially six streams when I actually fought my first Seregios. And uh, so I fought him in Sunbreak. That is how I built an identity for him. So going into this game and fighting him here, I was surprised at how much less threatening his kicks were. Like it was a lot easier to dodge his kicks. He didn't kick as much. The scales is really what caught me off guard. And so I don't think there's any other monster that bleeds up to this point in this game. And so, uh, I was bleeding a lot in this fight, and what I hate, and I don't remember this being a thing in Sunbreak, maybe I just didn't get hit as much, the scale hits you, so you go, uh, and then the scale explodes in you, so you go, uh, uh, and it's such an annoying animation when you get that, uh, because you're getting, like, flinched twice, and then the monster's coming at you, you're trying to move, and then you bleed out, and you gotta, like, stay stationary, eat some jerky, and he was so fast, like, this was one of the fastest fights I had had up to this point so Sregios was just crazy fast for 4u mechanics and again my strategy was just you gotta stay under him you gotta like hit his legs oh he's up in the air he's probably gonna kick you roll out of the way and then sometimes he would even claw me and i think it would inflict bleed because i would get the uh, uh, flinch thing going again and man i hated that thing so much luckily though he fatigues easily or at one point he was just constantly fatiguing at that point i'm just like wailing on him smashing him axe mode everything and uh i was able to beat him as he was going off for a snack because he's like i'm getting hungry fighting this hunter i'm like no you're not and uh, as he was about to snack on the on the herbivore i killed him so going to the apex seregios same impression and again three months had gone by since i played for you before i got into apex seregios i completely forgot how to deal with bleed because it's not it wasn't in 3u and i don't remember it being in rise or it wasn't meaningful in rise so when i got blood i was like oh no what do i do do i just like crouch i had no jerky i didn't bring any items so yeah i had to like crouch and wait my first impression of an a of an apex was holy heck these things are huge uh and people were like yeah welcome to like what proper apex are i guess people were saying the apexes in rise or a little lackluster all i gotta say is i was intimidated this thing was massive i could only see legs on camera and yeah big and painful because of the stupid bleed mechanic which i had wiped out of my memory from my past regios fight <clears throat> i swear we're getting close to crimson fatalis this is a very meaty journal to get through because so eventful so much stuff happened uh, so once that was done, we are now geared up for the final fight. I'm like, all right, let's do this. I'm ready for to screw up because I know it's a siege fight. We've been building the defenses of the town for a while. And so we get into the, I get into the level. There's Kushal in the middle of the arena. And then there's like all this fortification. There's a very cool like platform with two cannons and you can load the cannons and then it moves on a track. So you can go like a little bit to the left or you can go to the right. You can shoot the cannon from wherever you want. Very cool mechanic. I was surprised at how effective the siege weapons were in this fight because in my experience in other games you have to fight the monster and lean on the siege weapons a little like the fatalis fight in world but the siege weapons are not what's going to carry the fight for you like you need to be able to show that you can hunt to some degree as well not in this fight in this fight it's just like no use all the siege weapons i think i 
attack Kushala maybe once or twice, but barely because it got up so fast. And I realize I'll just stick to the weapons. Like, I don't really need to do anything, it seems, because the, the story and the narrative was like, go here, load the cannon here, the Dragonator's ready. And I got my Dragonator. I actually hit Kushala with the Dragonator. Everything was connecting. I'm like, oh my goodness, my timing's so good. And then there was the third one, the Demolisher, which is like this massive mega cannon. I was like, I can't wait to shoot that, but I'm so scared I'm going to mess up. Luckily, the the story beats really guide you and they're like you're gonna push this button when someone says something and we're like okay when, when do i do it and then someone like the, the game stops and they're like push the button push that button right there the button where you're looking at push that one not this one that one it really hand holds you in a way that i appreciated because i kept messing up so much in like world rise sunbreak i kept pushing the thing at the wrong time i didn't understand what was going this one really like spelled it out for you they're like please you make this epic don't mess it up for us. So Kushala was slain. Everybody was happy. We rolled credits. We got some cute little caricatures. Uh, town was saved. It felt good, but a little anticlimactic. For a final fight in high rank, it was maybe a little bit too much siege weapons for my taste. And it didn't, you know, I didn't get a proof of a hero. I didn't get a tense moment. I was just basically pushing buttons and loading uh loading cannonballs it doesn't quite give you that feeling of a hunt and maybe that's why apex regios was there but even he didn't feel you know, he felt big he felt intimidating but again it wasn't anything compared to the low rank village where you're fighting um, my goodness i'm drawing a blank on uh, Gor on gormagala or uh, shigeru you know the bigger one those were really epic fights so i don't see how they went from that to an epic fight but it doesn't feel epic to the hunter. So they, they lost the plot a little bit there by putting too much plot in it. Um, after all of that was done, I unlocked the final egg quest. And I knew that this was the final egg quest that unlocks Fatalis, Crimson Fatalis. I'm like, okay, it's my first Crimson. It's my first Fatalis. Let's do this. Let's go in. And I did not bring the right juice. I brought um, the juice that keeps you awake instead of the dash juice, which doesn't you know drain your stamina which is what i wanted and i hauled the egg out and i'm just maybe i can sneak like i saw that there was a tigrex but i'm like maybe i can sneak and i tried sneaking it didn't work tigrex roared i dropped the egg then a brood tigrex showed up it was late in the night and i'm just like oh my god this just sucks so much they're both roaring at me they're both spinning i just want to carry this egg it's not a good time and so i pretty much called it a night uh which is what took us to the next journal, <laughs> look at that, flipping the page. Whenever we flip the page, you know it's a pretty meaty, meaty journal. So I got to start the night fresh on, I think the last stream, which is I went in and I didn't kid myself. I'm like, a Brit Tigress and a Tigrex, they're too easy to make me drop my egg. All they gotta do is roar and I'm screwed. So I went in, I'm like, I'm gonna kill the Tigrex. And I think I can, I'm going to try to manage like the eggs with maybe just the brute Tigrex. So that's what I did. I went in, killed Tigrex. It was hard. It took me like a half hour to kill the Tigrex. And people are like, oh my God, you're going to run out of time. What are you doing? And so I, I did the first egg, no problem. Then they close the path and they make you go through the desert, which is a much longer way to get the egg, of course. And I had one juice, one dash juice. I was saving it for the second run. On my way there, saw the brute Tigrex, paintballed them so I could watch them on my map. And everything lined up perfectly. Like I got the egg, <clears throat> I got my juice, grabbed the egg. As I was making my way through the desert, Brute Tigrex flew to the other zone, like perfect. I was barely obstructed, barely bothered. It is wild how much more tame the egg quests are in this game compared to Monster Hunter 1, where they're going to throw every freaking bug and little monster at you possible. And so I delivered the quest and it was so nice, so easy, much easier when you go in with a plan. And from there, we unlocked Crimson Fatalis. But before I get into that, oh, so many things. I also unlocked, uh, before I was looking at the map, and I saw that there was a rare expedition going on in the high rank area, and people were like, you need to go there. That's your exclusive, like, expedition monster. So Ruby Basarios was available to me, and I didn't realize the only way you can fight him is through the expedition. So I went in there, and I got to say, I loved Ruby Basarios. He was way better than Basarios. Like, maybe it's because I had a better weapon that wasn't bouncing. He, he He's not very mobile. So after, you know, fighting all of these, like, more mobile monsters like Brachydeos, Devil Joe, Teostra, to get a freaking rock that just stays there and can take some punishment was, was a nice palate cleanser. So I just wailed on this rock, stepped aside when he had a little gas, and called it a day like I, I slayed him pretty quick it was 
so nice and his design's better and I, I only have good things to say about Ruby Basarios. One of my favorite fights so far. <laughs> only because it was like a relaxing fight, not because it's necessarily a fantastic fight. All right, so now that Crimson Fatalis is unlocked, I go in and I, I don't know what to expect. My only Fatalis experience is in Iceborne. And so we're back in the Akantor arena, which I'm like, oh, we're back here. And he's he looks a little small at first. I'm like, is this like a baby Fatalis? Because they did mention that one of the eggs hatched. And so I understood that this is maybe a baby version of Crimson Fatalis. I was just shocked at how long he was. Like, all I'm seeing is pretty much his crotch. I'm like, okay, I can't pan the camera up. So all I'm going to be doing is bashing on Crimson Fatalis' crotch the whole thing. I'm like, all right, let's go. Then I realize, wait, this is, this is the death trap because then he breathes fire on you. But if you go behind, then he whips you with the tail. Um, overall, compared to Iceborne Fatalis, he's a lot more static. Thank goodness. And I went in not fully prepared either. I went in just to test and see what the fight was. I was not expecting to win on my first try. I only had one max potion because I'm out of items to craft them. So like I'm farming them. I'm trying to get some max potions. So I had limited amount of healing. Like I wasn't fully topped up. And it got to the point where I was two carts in and uh, luckily one of my carts brought me back to the box when I had, uh, I was able to refill on supplies. Otherwise I was really counting on Classy and Calico to heal me. And uh, they, were, they were dropping herbs and I was like grabbing everything. I'm like, herb, yeah, I'll give me that, I'll eat it. And I'm just trying to stay alive and trying to get better at dodging Fatalis and trying to unleash as much damage as I can on him. I mounted him early in the fight, ran out of stamina, so I fell off of him. And now we're getting where I can't heal. I used all my items. I'm down to five minutes left in the fight and I'm just not seeing an end to this. Like I'm not breaking anything on him. And in that last five minutes, I got another mount. I managed to win it. I Like I managed to win the mount. I think I broke one of his horns, uh, someone was saying. And with three minutes left, oh, he was slain. So this is my first Monster Hunter 4 you Fatalis Lane. I also know he is the easiest out of, I think there are four of them, which I did not know, by the way, when I pledged. I didn't think that there was that many. I knew that there were multiple, but not four. So we have three left. I think they're all in G rank at this point, which is kind of my next destination. So now with the high rank village story done, the side quests almost done, I'm moving over into hub so that I can grind that out. I've... Um, cleared a bunch of elder dragons with the multiplayer and we've actually unlocked the urgency for high rank eight which, which is a dalander i've only heard this one in passing so like i don't have much expectations for dalander other than i think he's just big and if i'm remembering right i think people mention this in monster hunter world i think the rotten veil vale or something is based on a dalander's corpse if i'm remembering correctly but like at this point i am attaching really old memories to really new information so i don't know um so that's where we are i'm thanks so much for like listening to all of that that was just so much information so much like usually i'm streaming once a week and i use and i usually do a journal this was three streams back to back and i just didn't have the time to do a journal in between so we got this big chunky meaty journal and i'm actually losing my voice from talking so much so thank you all for joining what we got next is a big snake i guess and the g rank grind begins it's going to be a whole new chapter of pain and i'm going to be here to share it with all of you so thank you for listening thank you for watching i'll see you on the next video the next journal or the next stream and until next time keep it classy i've just encountered the largest monster in monster hunter at least i think it's the largest and i think it's pronounced the lamader i hope i said that right Welcome back, Classy Crew, to another journal in my Monster Hunter 4 You journey to slay every Fatalis, and now I'm at the edge of G rank, and the gates won't open because there's this massive snake blocking my way, and I have hit a literal wall. I've fought this thing twice now, and then the roars, and then the bombs, and then the bombs and the roars, and time's up. I am at a point where I cannot do enough damage to the snake to proceed with the game. And so the gates of G rank and what goes beyond that are, are taken away from me at this time. And that's a good thing because if you are watching any of my journeys through Monster Hunter, you'll know that when I hit a wall, that's when it's time to level up. It's time to unlock the hidden potential that is within all of us, to find a new move. And that move 
is a charged shield AED. And I am so freaking proud of this move. I, I didn't invent it. It's always been there. I know it's always been there. I know I haven't been able to do it. But I can now finally tell you that your boy here, Hey J, has finally figured out how to spam AEDs with a charged shield and not accidentally go into an SAED or a Saeed as we use, as I used to call them. The, the feeling of like, oh my God, it's not often that I'm in a game where I quite literally feel my entire gamer side level up. So after, okay, so backtrack. I went into the fight with Lam Lam Lamander. Someone told me it's like Sal Salamander with a er, with a U-R. So, so Dalamandur. I'm just going to say Dalamander. I knew that this was a unique fight. I knew that it was a big snake. I had no idea like how big of a snake, but this thing's this uh, big snake. And so I went in without really expecting much. My first fight, I was like, all right, I'm going in here to learn. And as soon as I get launched into the fight, there's a big red arrow on the snake. And I'm like, all right, I'm going to climb the snake. So I jump on the snake. I start climbing and then he moves. I fall off the snake. I was like, oh no, I have just messed up the tutorial part. I don't know what to do. And my first impression was I was so confused. There was snake everywhere. And I'm just like, what do I hit? And I tried hitting him here and I would bounce. I tried hitting him there. I would bounce and I was just surrounded by snake and I had no idea where I'm supposed to position myself. And so I was like, honestly, I felt that was really exciting because I'm like, okay, this is like a puzzle. I got to figure out what to do. So I eventually found its face. I was like, well, the face is usually a good place to go. So let's try to fight the face. And I couldn't do anything because the face is always up in the air and moving. And then I noticed on my uh, targeting screen that there were two things, that there's the head and that there's the tail that you can target separately. So I was like, oh, I can now go after the tail. I found where the tail is. It just kind of hovers by the side of the canyon. So I was like, oh, this is where I'm going to do some damage. I was actually able to hit it. I was seeing blood. I was like, oh, this is the spot. And then I was starting to learn that the tail kind of slaps you. It always makes like this little sound before it attacks you, almost like a rattlesnake. And then it hits, it, it drops down, and then you can just keep, you just move out of the way, you keep hitting it. And so that was my first aha moment in the Delameter fight where attacking the tail was step one. And I broke the tail, so oh, the tail fell off. Oh, I felt like I was break. making progress. But then the rest of the fight, I couldn't really quite figure out um, how to continuously do damage to him. I eventually did learn that you can climb him when he like wraps around the stone and Big Arrow says like climb me here. So I climbed all the way up and then I'm at the top of like his back. I was like, what do I do here? So I started like just swinging around and then I learned that I was like hitting one of his back scales, which that broke. And then that sent me falling all the way down into a whole other area where I learned, oh, there's a base camp to this level. So from there, I was able to raid the box. There were a bunch of bombs. So I was like, oh, that's a pretty good idea. And so now I had two ways to inflict damage. I could hit the tail or I could run up the back and fight it. And I also learned that when I came back from the camp, uh, after you break the back, his head's on the ground just waiting for you to like smack it. So I was like, oh, that creates an opening, but I don't know how to deal with that because I get launched base camp and by the time I get back, he's already back on his, not on his feet, although he has feet, but he's a snake. Back on his things. Um, and that's when chat told me there's a second red arrow go up that way and so when you're climbing his back you can actually jump on the cliff go up which takes you above his head then you can jump down on the head and then you can at first i just put some bombs there because why not and that knocks him down you fall next to his head and then that gives you some space to go all rambo on him and it was unfortunate that i didn't know how to do the aed with a charged shield at this point so I pretty much just launched an SAED and then I was doing more minimal damage on him. But still, I was learning. I eventually broke his head doing that. And then there were other things that I was trying to figure out. So at one point, like his big chest is just shining and like saying hit me pretty much. So I went and tried to hit that, but it's like a nuclear reactor where if you're close to it, you pretty much take damage. So that was problematic. And I was also bouncing a bit. So I'm like, maybe the chest is not as weak as I thought, I, as I think it is. I eventually did make it to phase two where he breaks off some of the canyons and then you're like more limited in where you can go, which is fine with me. And I got into the pattern and learned what he does. So he basically like blasts once where you can like Superman dive to dodge it. Then he kind of like chomps you, tries to bite you, which you dodge. And then he eventually wraps around the mountain and then that's the loop in either phase two, phase three. And there's so much time lost dodging his blasts, waiting for him to move. I understand the fight now. I just need to now output more damage. So I went in to my second fight with now 
understanding, okay, I know what I need to do. Let's go in. And I was really trying to like hammer more damage on him. And I went the full, oh, that first fight, by the way, did not fail. I ended the quest via sub quest because I broke his head. And so I got the victory music, but people were like, no, 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 that's foul. You didn't get the check marks. So, I mean, that's fair. I didn't get the check marks. So it's not a quest complete. And then the second time I went back in, I just went in like, let's just do as much damage. I ran the whole like 45, 50 minutes, however long the fight is. And I just timed out. I couldn't do enough damage. So this is where I'm like, okay, how can I do more damage with what I have without like going into G rank and getting all with multiplayer and getting OP? What can I get right now that can increase my DPS? And there's a few things I could eat because I'm not really having troubles with my defense <clears throat> right now with the ingredients I can I have, I can do an attack up medium. Uh, so I realized, okay, I should really do the quest to finish off my canteen so I can get attack up large as my food bonus. So that's one. Uh, the second thing is I'm looking at my other charge blades that are available. So I know that Dalam Delameter is weak to dragon ice and someone said something else and I forget what it is. I can get some decoration slots to actually get the skill attack up large so I can do even more damage. And then the third thing or fourth thing, I can also learn to freaking play better, optimize my gameplay. And so this was kind of the lowest lying fruit where I'm like, I gotta learn how to do this eventually. I gotta learn how to do guard point. That's like the ultimate pinnacle of learning charge blade in this game. But I'm like, first of all, I need to be able to reliably land an AD when I want to, because I'm getting frustrated now that all I can do is, is an SAD. And I know that people were telling me like, oh, you gotta hold back and like smash. One person said smash X, I think. And then someone else said smash Y. I just couldn't do it. And I've, I've tried like over the course of all these journals and I kept, so I'm like, okay, we're gonna do a quest. I'm gonna get this down. We're gonna figure it out. And it took a little bit of figuring out, but I finally learned that, and it's thanks to Chad's help, when the shield, so you, you basically like shove your sword in your shield and then you send it back. And when the shield is behind you, that's when you wanna hold back on your analog stick top and top button, which is whatever controller you have. And when you do that, you get like a little glitch in the animation and that's when you know you're gonna do it right. And then you just slam it and you keep your files which lets you slam a charge shield on the monster. You keep your files so that you can spam that pretty much five times, dealing way more damage than if you just unload everything on an SAED. So after practicing on a great, um, what did I practice on? Great Jagger? Not Jaggerus. Great, shoot. What is it? I've been playing too much Monster Hunter now. What's the, what's the one that's not the great? Oh man, he's not in any other game. Or he's Monster Hunter 3, he's not in the newer games. The great, why is, oh my goodness, I'm getting a blank. The great purple raptor. Is it Jagras? No. Jagras is the iguana. I, this is embarrassing. Anyways, you guys know who I'm talking about. An editor is probably having a ball making fun of me right now because my memory just decided to kaput on me mid-journal. And uh, now I was like, all right, now let's test it in the field, make sure I really know what I'm doing. So I decided to go pay a visit to my old friend, a cantor, which you might remember from the last journal who made me cart three times, failed quests. I was completely uh, outclassed and outmatched in that fight. So I went in, I'm like, all right, this time we're bringing some might seeds, we're bringing some uh, armor skin so that I can get this defense down times two off of me. And we're gonna go in and we're gonna smash this AD all over him. And so I went in and oh my goodness, this fight felt good. Like it was night and day difference. I was like, swoosh, swoosh, punch him in the face, charge my shield, charge my, no, that's all you do. You just charge your shield in this game. Charge my shield. All right, all the files are up. Let's go, AD, 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 AD. And it was just like, dodge oh he's gonna roar shields up and oh it just connected so well and i have to say like i know i'm doing well when the chat is actually going out of their way to saying like oh my god he's actually playing well i've even had some people reach out to me personally saying like you really stepped up your game in that fight so i feel accomplished that was my big win uh, of the week and now i can properly do ad on command whenever i want so next the only thing i got to do is the freaking um guard point which you guys have been begging me to do for a while that one i'm going to wait for g rank it'll be my final form when i really need that skill i don't need it right now so after a cantor is done so now i've got my new uh you know spam ability to do more dps that way so next thing that's easy is let's knock out all of the canteen items upgrade it so i can get my attack up large when i eat uh so i started just knocking out all the quests left in low rank i actually completed village 
uh, and I got the, the little ribbon and everything. So I finished, there was a Frenzied Brute Tigrex quest, uh, which I finished that. It was like a little Akantor. Uh, Kushala was the end of my quest for Cathar. Finished him off, which was pretty easy considering I have a poison weapon. But man, frustrating. Like Kushala in this game is what I feel. I remember you guys were complaining back when I was playing Monster Hunter World, how much you hated Kushala in World because of the air shield it has and how you can't like really get close to it. I, I don't remember too much about World. It's a whole different chapter. But in this game, man, Kushala was just such a pain. Like I couldn't, I, I kept getting like tossed aside or blown away. So it was just really hard to stay on it to continuously do damage. So. I didn't really enjoy the Kushala fight in this in this one, but it didn't give me too much of a struggle. Otherwise, um, I stayed alive. I dealt my damage and I killed it within 15, between 10, 15 minutes, which is my average. So with all of that done, everybody's celebrating and the Carav <clears throat> Car Caravaneer has given me his challenge, which has just unlocked. So when you complete all of the village low rank quests, you unlock this quest, which is the Caravan <clears throat> Caravaneer's challenge, where you have to fight a Zenogre or Rajang and Shagaru Magala, and I'm assuming it's all the same in the arena of Shagaru Magala, I think. I didn't go in the quest yet. It was at the end of the stream. So I was like, I'll save this for <laughs> never. I don't actually have to do it <laughs> for my pledge, but I mean, you guys are not going to let me avoid it. And my curiosity is going to drive me to go there. So I'm going to have to see what that is. It's going to be rough. Zenogre is really good at, oh, and it's all going to be, it's all lightning. I'm going to have to prepare properly for this. I've heard it's a really tough quest um, so I have that I have a bunch of high rank quests now to clean up specifically to unlock all of the sub quests the sub items in the canteen so I'm gonna focus on that and then I'm gonna go pay Delameter another visit so that I can clear the way so I can get into G rank and find my missing fatalities so I can complete this pledge before these servers get turned off so that's where I'm at hopefully um, we've got I just remembered there was a part in this journal that I wanted to have a montage about me learning AED. And I don't know if now is the time to ask the editor to do it or if you're just going to take this clip and do a montage after. But it'd be really cool if we had a montage. So I'm just going to say this and you use it where you want. Cue AED montage. And I didn't do it. How finicky is this? Oh my goodness. No. Whoa. Boom. probably putting something bad like a meme anyways that's all for me on this journal i will see you next time when i have breached the gates of g rank and until next time keep it classy i've been on the edge of g rank for weeks now stuck with the lamader whatever he's called and now that he's out of the way i've also encountered another wall not really a wall but a you can tour Welcome back, Classic Crew, to another journal as I try to slay every Fatalis in Monster Hunter for you. One has been slain, three remain, and they are somewhere beyond these gates of G rank, which I'm trying to get into, but I can't. So today, we're going to be talking about all of the things I have left to do in high rank because there was quite a few things left. I've also dealt with my snake problem, although not quite the way I wanted to. And I've encountered a new friend with a very big shovel for a face. Not very nice to say, but I mean, come on. Look at this face. So the first order of business uh, is taking care of the snake because I was stuck on this thing. I tried twice before. I just couldn't do enough damage. I was timing out on him. And so I decided to grind out a new charge blade. I heard that Delameter is weak to dragon. So what better charge blade to craft than the Shagaru Magala charge blade. And so we went grinding this boy in multiplayer and I don't like grinding like four hours on the same monster. I did it pretty much for Bracadillos and 3U, but like you got to change it up after a while. So I always like to give myself a limit of I will kill this many monsters. If I don't get the drop I want, we are moving on to something else. And so I decided we're going to hunt Shagaru five times. And if I don't get, so I needed a Foss gem from him to craft the charge blade. And it's weird because the, the, uh, sh Shag, oh man. So there's the Shagaru Magala and oh, the Gore Magala. All of the weapons are German, but then as soon as you evolve them into the Shagaru Magala weapons, they turn French. So anyways, going for the Foss Gem, I said, I'm going to hunt Shagaru five times. Off we go in multiplayer. Bam, bam, boom. No Foss Gem. I'm getting cursed. Chat's laughing at me. Some are even cursing me not to get it. So not only do I have to fight with RNG Jesus, but I also have to fight with a rowdy chat. 
And then after five, I don't know, I got a good feeling. I was like, you know what? Let's do one more. Just one more. And there was one hunter in the chat that I will call out. Gujira, shout out to you. He was a believer. He was like, we got this, Jay. We can do it. I believe in us. And I was like, you know what? I need some of that positivity on the team. Let's do one more hunt, you and I, and a few other hunters that I forget their name. And so we went on the hunt. And not only did I get my Foss gem, but I got a mantle as well. So there you go. The power of friendship winning the day for us once again. So shout out to Gadir and his power of friendship. It's because you believed in me that we got the gem. So off I went, upgraded my charge blade. Uh, I went back against the Lamader only to die at the 40 minute mark. And how I died is quite BS. I felt like I was making good progress. I broke pretty much everything that there was to break on this. And then around the 40 minute mark, I carded twice in like two minutes. In a very strange way, I was looking at the footage again. And for some reason, I was getting hit a lot harder than I feel I should have been. There's one, it's one of those energy balls, which usually doesn't do that much damage. Half my life, just gone. And then the final card, I was trying to heal because my health was under the halfway point. And then I don't even know what happens. The game just like, nope, you're card, you card, get out of here, you're dead. So I was pretty much tired fighting this thing. It's not that it's like a necessarily challenging fight. It's not a fight like Fatalis or Alatreon or, you know, or Tempered Vulcan or any of the hard fight. It's not a dance. It's just, it's a chore. Like you just, it's, it's a very heavy chore to just put out a lot of DPS on it. It's a pattern of, okay, he's going up around the mountain. Now I'm going to climb him. I'm going to break this. Okay. Now I got to wait for him to blast once, blast twice. Like it's just so meticulous to do it over and over again. And to have to commit 40 minutes of my time to do it and just not die was like, and not even knowing if I'm like good enough to do the DPS check. I was like, uh, I can always come back to this. Like if I really want to solo him. So off we went, we did it in under 10 minutes in multiplayer. And uh, I broke through that, that I believe unlocked my hunter rank. I went up to hunter rank 43, very important metric because from what I understand, there's a Fatalis locked behind hunter rank 70. I think is the number. So I have to get my hunter rank up. I don't know where the other two are. I assume they're in G rank somewhere. So I'm just gonna keep clearing quest and hopefully we will unlock that Fatalis. Uh, so with that done, I figured, I knew that uh, Ucantor was next and I was like, well, I don't wanna open up the gates of G rank just yet. Let's see what else there is. So there was a Silver Rathalos waiting for me, went and fought him and I never liked Silver Rathalos. I didn't like him in a world. I didn't like him in 3U. So I definitely didn't think I would like him in here. And guess what? I didn't. He is bad. He has two attacks, which just drive me absolutely nuts. There's one that he just charges at you with his, with his claws and it can go across the field. There is no minimum or maximum range for this thing. It just snipes, you know, no matter where you are, it's just claw in your face, claw in your face. It's so freaking annoying. And then the other thing is out of nowhere, he could be on the ground and then he'll just jump and shoot, just jump and shoot you no matter where you are, just jump and shoot another snipe attack. So those things are annoying. And okay, this is kind of funny because you know, I'm not an optimal hunter. I don't, you know, I'm not really good. And people always say, you don't hit the head enough, hit the head, that's the weak spot. So here I was trying to hit the Silver Athlo's head. I like to learn on this monster, you don't want to hit the head because that's the hardest part. So you want to focus on the wings and the legs but I just couldn't stop wanting to hit the head. I don't know why. And there's one point I'm just bonking. I'm like, I will break this head no matter what. And after like three bonks, the head actually split open. That sounds pretty gross. And it was, it was, uh, it was satisfying, but man, the, the whole fight was just, just hard. Like just getting sniped all the time was, was annoying. I'm so glad that I finally did land my AED on him. Uh, and that's what killed him at the end. And I have to say, since learning AD and SAD, I am getting better at it. Some people in the discord have been telling me that now that I've learned it, I'm playing worse, which I don't understand that criticism yet. Um, to be fair, I'm still learning the move. I'm still learning how to integrate it into my play style. And I do feel like I'm getting better. Like I feel I have more options available to me. The monster falls. I was like, oh, here's a good time to either SAD or AED on it. So I do feel like my repertoire of moves has significantly improved. So that's how we uh, took care of the Silver Rathalos. Still garbage monster. I still don't like fighting him. And then uh, there's a bunch of other uh, interesting things that unlock. So I pursued the whole quest line of the feline flunky, I think it's called, uh, which is the one that hangs out where you can unlock songs and you can watch like the, the songstress sing these songs. None of them are really that notable, but it all ends with the final monster, which is a Oroshi Kirin. And this is the first time I encounter this boy. Basically, it's a Kirin with ice attacks instead of thunder. There was a lot of buildup before the fight. The chat was pretty excited. And I have to say, uh, 
I don't know if it's the charge blade or this game, but I don't like Kieran. Like, he's just annoying. He's always hopping everywhere, and I don't remember him being this annoying in World, but maybe it's just the weapon matchup. He's always, like, you're always hearing, like, the little pony laugh, and then, or the, it's a neigh, whatever. And then he's just hopping everywhere. I'm just like, get back here. And then it, it's, instead of going, like, with lightning, it's just with ice. It's like an inverted attack. So I don't really have anything to say other than his name is cool. He looks beautiful from a fight perspective. He's very lackluster, especially for an elder dragon. Like he's tiny. He's not really menacing. Yeah, he just he just died. So I, I really didn't care much about Ogoshi Kirin. Um, the next monster, however, that I, I uh, got to fight was a fantastic palate cleanser. And of course, I'm talking about the Molten Tigrex. Okay, so I don't like Tigrex. I never liked Tigrex, and I don't like Brute Tigrex. Tigrex has never left a positive impression on me. He's just kind of there. Actually, the first time I fought him in the world, he was terrifying. This time, the Molten Tigrex. Like, first of all, he gets his own arena. Then, he is big, and I really like the big tanky monster. And I just find him so cool. Like, he's not spam... He's not super speedy. He's tanky, and he's got Blast Blight, and just the whole way it, it works is so cool. Like... He will try to charge at you, and every time his paws like hit the ground, there's like a dust of blast stuff that you can get uh, blast blight from that. When he roars, you can get blast blight. You don't want to be around when this guy roars. Like there goes all your health. And I just find all of that really cool. If you're blast blighted and he roars, you are done. So you just don't want to mess with the blast blight. Um, but because he's big, I like his color, I like his size, and his moves are just really nice to read, to dodge, to land a hit on him. So I had a really good time fighting uh, Molten Tigrex. Uh, so also the Molten Tigrex was my first time using um, the uh, Seregio's Charge Blade, so I did build it. So now I can roll when my Charge Blade is drawn and I can sharpen. I thought it would be a huge game changer. It really isn't. I feel I'm always at green sharpness. I am rolling more now than like the first fight with the Molten Tigrex, but it just takes so many rolls to sharpen and the sharpness is so tiny, like that white and blue sharpness is so tiny. You, you hit one or two monsters and you lose your sharpness, especially these Metal Wraths, these Molten Tigrexes, like these boys are tough, tough skin. So your sharpness just goes poop, goes away. Um, otherwise, yeah, really good fight. Uh, another fun little element I discovered in the game. I went into my house and there was a, uh, a palico or a feline going through my box and it's like some kind of disco stew palico. And it was just so weird. Like even the music that was playing when I entered, I was like, what is this music? Wait, what is this? Why does he have a bubble? What's he doing? Why does he have an afro? I feel good vibes coming from you. I think you can help me. You down? Oh yeah. Uh, it reminds me a little bit of a like Animal Crossing character. So some, I think it's an Animal Crossing. Uh, some certain characters have like, their, there's a music playing if they're around or whatever. I don't know. It reminded me of Animal Crossing. So he gave me a quest and I suspect if I beat it, it will um, allow me to probably get an Afro hairdo or something. That's what I'm assuming. So I'm not like in a hurry to do his quest, but just interesting like little side quests that they've added in here. One thing I really, and I think I've said this before, but I'm going to say it again. Monster Hunter for you, the world building and the quests are so fun that, you know, they're not, they're nothing crazy, but I feel it's the bare minimum of what Monster Hunter quests should be. Every time I see a quest bubble in my quest list, I want to do it. Like, I, I, it's progressing like a quest line. I get more attached to the character, to the village, to whatever their little story is. And I absolutely love that. And I want to do it as a player. I want to do more of that. So I really, you know, if there's one thing... Um, I'm going to have to go back to World to see if they do that because all the games after 4U, I don't know if they continued that. Rise, I think, had it to some extent, but I don't remember. It. I don't think they had necessarily the quest line. I remember they had quests from villagers, but I don't remember it tying into one or another and like building up a, a line. Like, Anyways, all of this leading to the final fight that you can tour, and I'd love to say that I can tour. This thing was terrifying. Very cool. I think it was the first time I saw this arena, which is basically um, an ice arena instead of a fire arena. He is huge, and he rem reminds me a lot of a Cantor, but a little bit less intense. I didn't like at first the whole diving thing, but I think I just naturally found out how to dodge it. You basically, so if he's coming at you this way, you don't want to run away. You actually want to run at 45 like towards the dive so that you can get behind him because that thing is pretty much like heat seeking. It'll find you wherever you go. And so dodging the dive was key. And then 
after that with the charge blade, it was just fun. Like I could be under him and I would just like unleash ADs, ADs, ADs. There's one point, and I really hope the editor puts it in here, where like I was unleashing two, three, he fell over, I, he got back up, I'm unleashing more, he falls over again, I unleash another, his tail comes off. Like I was just massacring this boy. And he was just been like really fun to fight. It, it let me, I feel, use the charge blade to its full potential of what I can do, minus the whole guard point. That is the final legendary evolution of my gameplay. Like when, when I get the legendary skill that is guard point, and by, leg by getting it, I mean learning how to do it. And I know what's involved in it now, because I did try to practice it a little bit on a monster. I forget what, I think, oh, it was on Oh because he kept charging me. So I'm like, I should probably learn like guard point. What is it? Okay, so you, you like put your shield up and then all you got to do is like, I think hit a, like go into morph as he's attacking or something like that. So I'm not fully committed. I wasn't doing it on a Hoshi Kirin, so it's a lot harder than it sounds. I'm going to really need to practice. I heard Diablos is a good one to practice on, but man, when I unlock that, I will feel like I have reached the top game of um, of Monster Hunter for you, Charge Blade. So uh, yeah, he went down because he was really fun. People were like, oh, he's a big HP sponge. You're not going to be able to beat him. But I beat him pretty comfortably. So uh, really, really good one. And with that, the hall of his immenseness has now opened. I can take on new quests. And there is a lot of pain waiting for me in G rank, as I have learned. But I will share with that next time. Because next time I have... The Desert Saltus, which is now available to me. A Savage Devil Joe, which that's not a G rank one. We are tiptoeing into G rank and it's always painful getting into a new rank because you gotta deal with the whole armor problem. The fact that I have no G rank armor. So that's gonna be what we're gonna have to face as I enter G rank. And I'll see you on the next journal to talk about that. Until next time, keep it classy. It's been months since I've started my journey riding into this village in my underwear, but here we are. Hello, Classy Crew. Welcome to the first Monster Hunter for You journal in G rank. In every game of Monster Hunter, there's usually a little bit of sense of progression. You know, you always start off with a raptor in low rank, and then in high rank, they give you something still pretty easy to start off. And even in G rank here, they're pretty nice with a little Desert Celtus. However, through some cruel twist of fate, there's an Apex Rajang that decided to show his face in my first G rank quest. And boy, no! Man, I hate this monkey. I was somewhat expecting an invader because I was there, there was a lot of excitement, a lot of hee 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 from all of the chat. And I was like, okay, we're gonna get another, another Devil Joe. And I'm cool with Devil Joe. Devil Joe was fine. He doesn't scare me anymore. But Apex Rajang, like I have not gone over my Rajang fear. This boy has been haunting me since my very first day in G in master rank of world iceborne and here he's just worse he's angrier he's not even golden he's like black he's like ultra instinct ridging and i don't even see him i'm trying to squish a bug and then it's like ah oh, what the heck so we're gonna get to that in a moment but let's talk about the early the early steps into G rank and the first impressions. And I have to say, if it wasn't for that Apex Rajang, it wouldn't be so bad. So there's still a few lingering quests waiting. Like I'm done with low rank village. That's all done. High rank village, there's still a few bubbles in there that are annoying me that I want to get through. So I've been doing a little bit of uh, quest cleanup. We're still progressing on this hammer quest for a lady. And, uh, you know, she wanted first some, like, two Rathians. So I went and killed two Rathians. One of which slipped on a, on a mosquito, which was funny. So I was fighting the Rathian in her nest. And she's charging me and then she falls. And I was like, oh, but the cats weren't there. What happened? And people were like, oh, she slipped on a, on a Banaha bra or whatever. Which is, there's a joke to be made there, but I'm not smart enough to make it. Um, I don't know if the editor is, like, interested in turning a Banaha bra into, like, a banana and you know, put some slapstick Rathian slipping on a banana like the old cartoons. That happened, and then that unlocked a meteorite quest. And honestly, the bane of my existence right now is my own lack of preparedness. You'd think after a couple years, I would be like so freaking trained that this wouldn't be an issue anymore. But I went into a meteorite quest with no pickaxes because I had no idea that a meteorite had to be uh. dug up. In my mind, the way the quest explained it to me, I thought the meteorite would be in the middle of the desert. I would just walk out, pick it up, and leave. Which is stupid in hindsight. Like, when is 
a quest ever that simple. So anyways, I got in. I don't even know where I got. Oh, I quit. That's what happens. Um, I just finished the sub quest, which was kill the fish. Got myself some pickaxes, went back in. Everything was fine because I knew that. So I know at this point, because it's my second time in, that there is a monoblos that spawns and that's annoying because he charges you he roars at you does everything so that you drop you it stupid. so i grabbed him like i'm just gonna book it out of the cave and go up to the right and get back to camp only to find out there's like five massive boulders that have appeared in the matter of five Are like i get it monster you want this to be hard for me but like make it make sense you can't just i go and mine a meteorite and then five massive boulders show it's up in the dry. middle of a desert blocking my path if you're gonna block my path do it from the moment I enter the quest. Don't just randomly like... That was an unfortunate surprise. So I had to fight the Monoblos a bit. He ran away through like the water shortcut because it's the dunes at night. So I went and got another meteorite. I'm like, you know what? We're not We're not even going to go peek inside. Actually, that's not true. I did go peek inside and the Monoblos promptly charged himself at me. So I'm like, nope, we're going to take the long way around. And it was pretty uneventful. Went all the way around, finished the quest, called it a day. I am a pro gatherer at this point. I've done all the egg quests, so I know what I'm doing. And also none of this compares to Monster Hunter 1. If you have someone that you don't like or that you are friends with, but you no longer want to be a friend with, please offer them Monster Hunter 1 egg quests. Say, you know, the only way that our friendship can continue is if you finish this quest for me. And two things will happen. They will either not finish the quest and then the friendship will end or they will finish the quest and they will no longer want to be your friend. So you achieve the same goal no matter what happens. So it's, it's a foolproof idea if you want to end friendships. From that, I had a Devil Joe uh, or a Savage Joe. I don't know, is it? There was a Savage Devil Joe in high rank, uh, which that's another monster I want to fight. So I fought him. Wasn't really scared of this one. After my experience with 3U, where I killed a Savage Devil Joe with minus 30 or minus 35, like dragon element i'm like i feel invincible next to this boy so i went in there i was fighting him things were going good and i actually had proper like i didn't have a weakness to dragon in this case uh and i think i even had the charge blade that does dragon damage so i felt super good fighting him until he turned the tables with the pins so the most annoying thing about for you savage devil joe is this boy pins you like crazy and it's not even like you see the pin coming. At one point, he turned around, the tip of his tail touched me, and I got pinned. How does that make sense? Who knows? Hitboxes. That's how it works. Uh, so the pins are annoying. You can pretty much die if he decides to just pin you and take your whole health, which happened once. If you're lucky, he pins you and tosses you. Um, so that doesn't do too much damage. Uh, the one thing I, I wasn't ready for is the pins. So I didn't have any dung bombs. If you go into a dung bomb, though, the fight is pretty comfortable otherwise. At this point, Devil Joe is like, he, he's, I don't know, he's comfortable for me. I like, I like him. You just stay close to his toes and then you let him do when he does like, you know, when he does the wobbly pickle, you get out of the way and then you go back to the, to the toes and off you go. Also in Village, there was a Desert Saltus, which I'm like, oh, my first like G rank. And this was the one that's in Village, so there's no invaders. And it was super fun. Like this is the perfect entry point for a new rank. Desert Saltus. It's it's not too menacing, although it was doing decent damage, but it's easy to dodge once you learn it's like two moves. You hit it, it like it falls on its back, it goes like Argh. it's really satisfying to just smack around, and there's so many openings to do so. It's just the perfect entry level. Like I love Saltus more than any raptor out there. And so Desert Saltus, even better than the original Saltus. Because I think it's got like the, the beetle horn instead of having this, the mono horn. And I don't know, I like two, two horns is better than one. Uh, after that, finish. Um, so as I said in my last journal, I had a, an Astalos Charge Blade. It could still be upgraded one more before going into G rank uh, just by killing more Astalos and Molten Tigrex. So I killed those in multiplayer. Molten Tigrex was super hard for some reason in multiplayer. I think it's because we were playing, well, we definitely did an event version of it. And this thing was like killing everybody in two hits. So really tough. Again, in my high rank uh, remnants, there was another, there was a golden Rathian, which uh, was waiting for me. And this one was weird because I did Silver Rathalos first last journal because I don't like Silver Rathalos. So I'm like, I'll get rid of the one uh, I don't like. Golden Rathian, I didn't like it in World, but I liked her in uh, Rise Sunbreak. 
and I liked her in 3U. Like I was able to fight Golden Rathian very comfortably in 3U. So that's like my benchmark. So I was like, all right, we'll go into this. It won't be too bad. I go into it. I forget my max potions within like 10 minutes. I, I like carded three times. It was just terrible. It was a terrible experience. I'm like, oh, okay, let's, let's prepare again. I went in prepared. And again, it was just a terrible experience. And I don't know if it's because it was the, you know, I'm just not as familiar, as good at with positioning with the charge blade versus a, versus a switch axe. But man, I kept getting hit by the stupid tail oh maneuver. She goodness. has this like instant transmission tail maneuver thing where she like just, you know, pops in front of you and like, whoop, I'm going to swing my tail into you. It's so annoying. And I just kept getting hit, getting poisoned, uh, disco tail where like she spins it always, get hit again. And both my charge blades. So right now I'm using the Sergio. charge blade and or and or the Shagru Magala charge blade. Both of them have sharpness problems where they're like white and blue sharpness are so tiny, they barely let you attack the monster before you have to sharpen again. And sure, the acid is used when you can like roll to sharpen it, but you have to roll like 10 times to get decent sharpness. So it doesn't really solve the problem. So I'm constantly struggling with uh, a, a non-sharp weapon. I'm trying to find an opening in these intense fights to freaking sharpen my blades, only for it to unsharpen after like five, six hits. So that is the biggest struggle for me. It's the fact that I don't have enough sharpness. And I keep bouncing on these things or I keep just losing my sharpness. What one thing I like about G rank is the ceiling is removed. Like I, I, I get access to everything. I, I'm eventually going to build my end game gear and I'm eventually going to be able to get everything I want stacked to the most that I want. And then after that, the real challenge is just the skill gap <laughs> between fighting the monster. Like I'm not struggling so much with the mechanics of my armor, the limitations of my armor, my weapon. And that's one thing I really do enjoy about G rank. And the thing I don't enjoy is freaking Apex Retain. So before going into proper hub G rank solo, um, I decided it was time to level up my canteen. And honestly, part of the reason I was doing all these quests in village rank, uh, high rank, was because I was trying to max out my canteen. So I was doing all the bubbles only to learn, no, all the canteen upgrade items, you have to do it in hub high rank. I was like, what the heck? So I learned that there's a little symbol and you have to basically do the quest with the fish. So I did two or three of those. I upgraded my fish, I upgraded my meat. Um, these were like super easy quests because now I'm, I'm, I've got like end game high rank gear and I'm fighting like four or five star high rank monsters. So they were just easy. It felt like cleanup. So I didn't enjoy doing too many in a row, but it's nice to just basically fill my canteen. That's something I'm just going to slowly wrap up because this game, the maintenance and everything, like I said, I finished all my village requests. Like I, I'm just enjoying that completionist aspect to this game. It's really rewarding for you in a way that it wasn't before. If you look at my uh, 3U game, actually any other Monster Hunter game I played, um, I want to complete them or complete collecting and stuff, but I tend to like fall off at one point. 4U is doing it in a way that I'm continuously want, like it's manageable to get all the stuff I want, uh, unlike the other games, which I feel sometimes they're either really grindy or I was just too new and I didn't appreciate it, like the farm in the world. That's where we are. Uh, and then finally, yes, the Desert Saltus. I, I decided I need to start grinding hub to unlock more quests because the goal here is Fatalis. Like we got to find this Fatalis. It's not even available to me. One is at high rank or hunter rank 70. And that is still a little ways off because I'm at hunter rank 46, 47 right now. So I went in with the Desert Saltus because I'm like, oh, this is good. And I'm also starting to think, well, I need to get <clears throat> some armor so I can actually stand a chance against some tougher opponents. So I go in there and before the Desert Saltus, people are all like, oh, eat for Game Changer. The whole chat's like, eat for Game Changer. And I read the description and it's like, oh, we'll ensure an invader appears. I was like, why, why would I want that? They're like, it's good for like armor grinding or like armor parts. So I was like, okay, like the, they really seem to be coming from a good place. I couldn't tell if it was trolling or not. In hindsight, it was. So I eat for Game Changer. It does not proc. So they're all like, oh man, it doesn't proc, boo. And I go into the quest because I'm like, okay, whatever that was about. And I start like slamming on the Desert Saltus. And then all I hear is like the, the Rajang music and I see the monkey coming at me. I was like, oh, what's that noise? And then I'm like, just trying to ignore him and fight Saltus. Like I, I'm foolish enough to think I can exist in the same plane as Rajang, not knowing this was an Apex Rajang. I didn't like, you know, remember Apexes I've seen one or two at this point. And so at one point he just like, I'm fighting the Desert Celtus and then out of nowhere, I just hear like slam and I, boom, you fainted. Like all my health just gone in one hit. And so that's when chat was like, oh my goodness, it's an Apex Rajang too. 
And so I'm like, well, I can't, I can't like do this. And uh, so I'm trying to, and I don't have any dung bombs. So I'm waiting for Desert Celtus to like separate from Apex or Jang in a different map. Then I go attack it. Apex or Jang shows up again. And I'm just trying to book, I'm like, no, 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 book it out of there. I was in a part where you have to like climb up a wall. I'm trying to climb up the wall and then bang, you have carded again. Like he just somehow sniped me from nowhere. So I was freaking out now because I'm down to one cart. I can't like, Apex or Jang is one shotting me anywhere I go. So I'm just trying to be patient, waiting for the uh, Celtus to get out of there and for me to basically fight it alone because I was okay one-on-one. -on -one. It's Rajang that was messing everything up. And uh, there'd be like parts where I entered one place and Apex Rajang's right at the entrance way for me. Nope, pop out. And then I went like the long way around to like enter the zone from a different area. Apex Rajang's just like, doo -doo 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 -doo. terrifying experience. But I did do it. I killed the Desert Saltus. And then Apex Rajang showed up during the victory screen to make sure to uh, assert dominance over him. Uh, and then finally, I decided, you know, when I started the game, Monster Hunter for you, I started with the Tetsukabra armor piece, and it was really good because it has like a lot of defense stats and stuff. So I'm like, well, maybe I should, and I really enjoy uh, hunting Tetsukabras. So I was like, maybe I should just do a G-Rank Tetsukabra. And there was a quest for two uh, G-Rank Tetsukabras. So I did those quests and brought some dung bombs and everything. It was a long quest, 30 minutes, but it was, it was fun, but it was intense. Like when the two of them were in the same room together, um, and then I also learned he has like this like triple combo charge where he'll like charge, turn, charge, turn, jump at you. That caught me off guard, caused me a cart. And he's just fun. I was breaking his tusk. I was like pushing him over. AED, SAED. There's one part I was like trying to like get away. I enter a zone and like one Tetsu Cobra is coming in at me. I go into the other zone. The other Tetsu Cobra is coming at me. I'm like, oh my God, where am I going? So I killed that, got like pretty much the same material drops from both, which is not helpful. This is what I want to do next. I want to grind up the Tetsukabra armor set in multiplayer. Uh, I, I'm also not even fully upgraded in my high rank armor. Like I haven't used all my armor spheres. And at this point, I don't want to use my armor spheres on the high rank armor. I want to save it for my G rank armor. So um, the goal is level up Tetsukabra and then Gypsy Rose is next. And I'm just going to start like chipping away at <laughs> the quest that I can to unlock more G rank quests. And I guess it's like divided in G1, G2, G3. So I just got to make my way through G1 so I can get to G2. And I think, you know, G3 is, is probably where Fatalis is at. So we'll find out as I go down deeper, deeper into this hall of pain. So I'll see you on the next journal. Um, hopefully we're going to be almost out of G1 rank by the time uh, we see each other again. I don't know. We'll see. And until next time, keep it classy. If you don't know about these two monsters, they're the ones that are going to wall you when you enter Monster Hunter 4 use G rank. They took nine carts of me, but through preparation, I destroyed them. Well, maybe not destroyed. Welcome back, Classy Crew, to another step forward in my journey to slay all the Fatalises in Monster Hunter 4 U. I am happy to say I have just broken through the first stage and I am now in G2. So to my understanding, there's G1, G2, G3. And then apparently you unlock some other element of G rank, which is bronze, silver, gold. And only once do you get to gold, do I unlock the ability to take on a Fatalis. There are three, as far as I know, left for me to slay. So the biggest priority right now for me in G rank is getting prepared. And this is something I am very well known for in my style of playing Monster Hunter is I just don't prepare unless the game forces me to. So when it gets too hard, that's where I go, okay. I need, I need more stuff. I need more skill. I need more defense. And you see this through my journals. I'm always constantly progressing as fast as I can. I hit a wall and then I come back and I go, okay, wait a minute. What do I got to do to overcome this wall? And I've come across this wall now through the Tiger Stripes Amtrios and the title Najrala. They said, you cannot pass until you get some better equipment. And I was like, okay, but are you sure? Oh, I was like, maybe if I stay next to the wall, you won't see me. Uh, the last time on the journal, I was saying I needed to grind my first G-Rank armor, and I had decided to do the Tetsu Cobra armor, much to the dismay of my chat, which was like, don't do it, it's a waste of time, and I'm so stubborn, and in hindsight stupid, I didn't listen, and I went for it, and you know what, the Tetsu Cobra armor gives you the skills of defense, uh, health, and speed sharpening, and when I was starting the game, I think it was in Village Rank, that's the armor set I went for, and it was very cozy, it gave me a lot of defense, what I didn't realize is in G rank, these skills don't matter. 
Your defense up that you're gonna get on a Tetsukabra armor is a flat rate. And so when you already have 500 defense, which is roughly where I'm at, getting a little bit more defense from this skill uh, accounts for somewhere between zero to 5% increase in defense, which is, it does not make a big difference when these monsters are hitting you as hard as they do. Uh, another thing, the health bonus, I think is pretty much, uh, it doesn't count because when you eat, you get full health from what I understand. So these skills were useless. So halfway through making my Tetsukabra armor, I decided the Berserk Tetsukabra armor would be better as per chat's suggestion. It comes with earplugs, which is great because now I don't get interrupted with their stupid roars. It has guard up, which is great because I'm using my shield more so I can actually block more attacks. It has bombardier, which I don't think that's relevant. And then I ended up uh, using all the slots to slot in a bunch of artillery so that my impact file when I drop my charge blade on them does more damage. So that was a much better build. Um, the reason I didn't do it at first too was uh, I was just trying to get an increased defense. So I was like, any G rank armor will do. Let's go Tetsukabra. And I was actually very hesitant to try on a new monster like a Berserker Tetsukabra until I had new armor. And I was like, ah, let's, let's just see how I do. And it turns out Tetsu, uh, whoops, Berserker Tetsukabra is not that bad. He's basically the same thing. He's a little faster and he now has blast abilities. So all instead of just having rocks, he has rocks that explode. So you gotta be a little bit more on your toes, but for the most part, he's still a similar fight to Tetsukabra, which I like. So I got to farm him in multiplayer, did my armor set. Another thing I realized I needed to adjust was my Palco armor, which had been grossly ignored for, for pretty much the whole game. And so I, I went back and I looked at all of the available armor. I did a little bit more fishing on Sun Snug Isle and I got the Sonic DLC armor, which seems to have the biggest armor of all of them. And Calico, I put a weird head on him and he's at like, the trade-off is the Sonic armor is so annoying because Classy is constantly hopping. They put the little Sonic jump sound every time a Palico hops and that's how they walk. Like they don't just, you know, they hop around when they're running after you. So all I hear through most of my hunts is burr, burr. Well, that's not the sound. Hopefully the editor puts in the right Sonic jump sound. With my Berserker Tetsukabra armor, the rest of G rank up until Tiger Stripe Zamtros and Tidal Nadrala were fairly uh, challenging, but like no walls. So there was Ketchawacha, which he was a little bit faster, got to kill him. Then there was the Ash Ketchum, AKA Ash Ketchawacha, which is the same thing, a little bit more aggressive, but now it does fireballs instead of water balls. <laughs> the purple gypsaros, I actually accidentally did the quest in multiplayer and I was so busy mining or catching bugs, I didn't actually see that fight. So I don't have much to say about purple gypsaros, but it died uh, because of other people. Took out the emerald Kongalala pretty effortlessly. And then the crabs, my goodness, these crabs gave me a lot of grief. So there was the uh, um, Daimyo Hermitor, I think, called i think so carded me twice before i finally killed it so it was a pretty even fight and then right after there was the plum damio hermitor i think that's how you say it that also carded me twice uh but uh, i did end up killing it and the only difference i could see with the plum hermitor beside it being purple is that it jumps more and it also pins you so it kept trying to give me a haircut grabbing me and going like Ch -ch -ch -ch, and then just tossing me aside so again the game is telling me hey buddy bring some poo with you but i'm so stubborn aka stupid that i still have yet to put uh dung dung bombs in my item rotation so i keep getting pinned i keep getting caught in between fights with two things I'm getting there. I'm getting it. I will be adding it to my inventory soon. So after all this, I came into the Tiger Stripe Zamtrios and everyone was like, oh, this is where you're going to get challenged. I was like, it's Zamtrios with a bit of variations. How bad can it be? Ah! Oh, that's frustrating. The biggest problem with him was he hits hard. So I could only survive about two hits and he is bouncing ever he's always in his balloon form so he's able to close the gap with you very fast he jumps and then he rolls and that roll just crushes my health and then when he like he deflates fast and then he can charge you in his like bolt up state like when i describe it it doesn't sound that hard but it's clearly was quite hard so i took a break from him and i was like okay well what else can i do uh, another key quest was the title Najarala, which is a new variant or subspecies of a Najarala. this one has a very cool gimmick so it spits out its spike 
but it doesn't try to hit you with the spikes like its base form. This one uh, puts the spikes in the, in the ground and then it shoots a water ball and the water ball bounces around the spikes like a pinball and it pretty much seeks you like, so you, you dodge the water ball you're like, what's, what's the point of that? And it goes like, bing, 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 and then it hits you and you're like, oh! And another thing is it's much better I find at coiling itself around you. So I got stuck inside the Najarala twice, which instantly carded me because it was doing more damage. Not as much damage as the Tiger Strike Zamtrios, but enough damage to cause me problems. So with all this said, uh, this was this all happened on one stream. Tiger Stripe and Tidal happened on one stream. I had now failed three quests in a row. I don't think I've ever really done that outside of like the really hard fights in Iceborne. So I was like, okay, I get it. I need to prepare. I need to level up again as a hunter. So let's go, spear grind, bring on the multiplayer, only to find out my 3DS for whatever reason has decided you're on your own, buddy. It would not connect to the internet. I don't know if this is a sign of like the servers are, are starting to shut down around where I am or what, because uh, if you haven't seen the video uh, in April, Nintendo or Capcom or both are have announced that they're shutting down all of the 3DS servers. So I'm just like, oh man, what's happening? And I, I tried resetting my router. I reset my 3DS. I did a firmware update. Uh, so everything's updated on the 3DS and it just won't connect to the internet. It keeps failing. So I was like, shoot guys what do we do and they're like well you're gonna have to grind spheres on your own the hard way so the only way i can level up my armor at this point is getting heavy armor spheres and there's only one quest available to me that gives that to me so i have to go into the purple gypsy rose quest i have to eat so that i spawn i have to eat for a certain skill that lets me spawn feline explorer so i spawn in the rare um mineral deposit there i can usually get one ore and then I go down anywhere that there's like a blue mining spot. I try to get an, uh, a heavy out of that, but uh, they, they give me these other ones, the hard armor spheres, which are not the ones I want. So pretty much on every run, I would get one to two spheres, which each sphere at this point increases my defense by four. I have about 500 defense. So I grinded this for about an hour. Uh, so I was able to increase my defense by roughly 10%, which is, hey, that's a pretty respectable number. I could have kept going, but I was running out of stream time. I was like, you know what? So I went into this fight refreshed and prepped. I had 10% more defense. I put some armor skin on me. No cart. Killed him. Took me 30 minutes. It was a hard fight. Uh, but I beat him, which really shows the point and the importance of preparing which you all know, but now, you know, I'm just repeating it. I'm validating it. So with that done, I had to go to Tidal Najarala. Honestly, with all of these like optimizations, Tidal Najarala fell. I also got to practice the fight more so I knew more what was happening. Uh, and then I had a few other key quests left to open G2. So Nursilla, by the way, newfound appreciation for the Nursilla fight. I really love that fight. I love when she like strings her like webbing and just slings across the map. And I just found my positioning great. I was like dropping ADs and SADs on her. Um, I really had fun with the Nursilla fight. So love Nursilla. Then I had to do a Red Kezu and Rathian fight, which funny enough, Rathian carded me and I failed that quest. It carded me like three times. I was really expecting Red Kezu. So that was just an annoying quest because I'm like, this quest should not be that hard. And it's annoying because there's a Red Kezu and Red Kezu and Kezu in general is annoying. What had happened is I had gone rusty in the last month of not playing for you while I was doing the 12 days of AJ. And so I wasn't dropping ADs and SADs as fluid as I was before. So I had to remember, oh yeah, you got to drop these things. That's where all the good damage is at. So I did that, unlocked the urgent, was, which was the Sregios, and this thing was coming at me hard. Like, of course it's hard, it's G-Rank, but my G-Rank Sregios, I just remember like, even in high rank and low rank, like this thing was just always very fast, aggressive, and hard. My strategy is always you stay near the legs, you steer near him. And so just doing that was like, and my 3DS camera seemed to like, the nub seems to not being as responsive as it used to. So I don't know if that's an indication of hardware decay, but man, it was a hard fight. Uh, got two carts. I was down to the point where I got it to limp all the way to its nest, it slept. I woke it up with an, S, uh, an AED. And I, at one point, I'm a gambling guy. So I just, at one point went, I'm putting it all in this SED. He was flying, we were in the corner. I was getting damaged. My cats were scrambling everywhere. I'm like, here it goes, let's just do it. And I go, boom. Boom. And oh luckily, <laughs> that's all that needed. And, you know, victory music played. I was just like, woof, adrenaline hit right there. So uh, the gates of G2 are open. These last fights have really highlighted how much I need to upgrade my charge blade. Because my charge blade is still using high rank um, 
the high rank one, I haven't really been able to craft a new weapon or upgrade my weapons. So now that I have the Seregios and G rank available to me, I can upgrade my current charge blade. And the jump in numbers, like the attack number, is a value of 200, which is almost like, I think, 30% boost in attack value. So I'm like, that should, like, that should help me finish my fights one third of the time faster, like almost 10 minutes faster, because right now they're taking 30 minutes. So the next priority, before I do anything else, I need to grind out an, an upgrade to my weapon. I need to output more damage. Uh, and then I also need to continue to build up my defense because G2 is probably going to hit just as hard. But really, the biggest crutch right now is I need to do more damage. So I got to increase the weapons. And that's the next grind. I got to get through G2. I'm targeting the, the key quest so I can get to G3. I heard G2 has a notorious quest called, I think, Fire Drill or something that a lot of people are whispering is like ridiculously hard. So I'm not looking forward to seeing that, but looking forward to putting this pledge behind me. Like, it's all like gas at this point. Let's just go. Let's find these fatalities and let's get it done. So I hope I see you on the next journal. And until next time, keep it classy. Since the early days of Monster Hunter, I've always heard, oh my god, I'm glad to say I finally met the monster Gogmazios, and he does not disappoint. Oh! Yeah, should've known. Welcome back, Classy Crew, to another journal in my journey to slay all four fatalities in Monster Hunter for you. We are getting closer. I am now at Hunter Rank 63, seven away from unlocking Hunter Rank 70, where I hear one fatalis. Uh, is hiding. I have been making quite a bit of progress since my last journal. After G3, after Gog, I hear there's more fatalities. So we're getting very close. This past couple weeks has been about grinding through G2, G3, getting some new armor, some new weapon, and really wrapping up the end game of this game and just unlocking harder and harder challenges. Before I get into Gog, the last time I mentioned I needed to upgrade my weapon, I was really struggling through G1 not making enough damage. Uh, actually, I think I was in G2. With G2 unlocked, I was able to finally access the parts I needed to upgrade my Seregios Axe uh, up to another level. It's the second last level and I can't upgrade it any further because I need some kind of seal weapon and that only becomes available much, I think, after GOG. So for now, I've got the highest damaging weapon I have for the charge blade and what a difference it's made. It's really made the rest of this end game a lot more manageable. Things are dying in a much more comfortable and I decided it was time to upgrade my armor for more skills. So based on some uh, feedback from the community, I decided to go and grind out a, uh, what's his name? The, the purple bird. Why am I forgetting the purple bird's name? Anyways, the purple bird uh, that I absolutely dislike hunting. So I did this multiplayer. It took about a dozen hunts to finally get all the parts I needed. So I got uh, five skills out of it. And then with my charm, I actually was able to get a six skill, which uh, you guys are probably going to laugh. Uh, the By the way, while I was doing this, I developed an addiction to charm farming. So because I've been just doing so much kind of just hunting, I figured, well, I might as well develop my farm and my charms. And so I've been grinding out charms, been learning more about what's a good charm, what's a bad charm, looking at the skills, appreciating the skills more. And this is an element of Monster Hunter I heal. Uh, I never properly got hooked on it. So I'm happy to say I'm hooked on it. So anyways, I got the new Garuga armor, comes with these skills. I got the critical eye plus two, which is fantastic for more damage. HG earplugs, which is fantastic for letting me actually do more damage while they're roaring. Razor sharp, which lets me, I think, maintain my sharpness or gives me more sharpness, one of those two. Either way, more DPS, lovely stuff. Quick sheath, fantastic for getting out of the way faster. Just makes that animation of sheathing go faster. And then I got the artillery novice from, I think my decorations, which lets me do more boom with my files. So all of these are very offensive skills, which is fantastic. And then the final, the final skill that I got to add thanks to a charm. It's the one defensive skill I have, and it is my friend, Divine Blessing. I can't believe I found a fine blessing in here. So the only reason I got it is because I actually melded a charm which has plus eight to divine blessing. So it was almost a no brainer. I'm like, the game is giving me divine blessing. I have to use it. And so for those who are wondering why I'm making a big deal out of this, go check out my Monster Hunter World original journey and you will see at the end game how divine blessing 
became an icon of that journey. So here it is again, blessed by the divinity to take on my fatalities. It's just, it was meant to be. With all of this new gear, it's time to grind out G2. And off I went finding a few new monsters, including a shrouded Narcilla. This thing, I was like, what? How could, they, how could they make it work? More poison? No, they actually made it more interesting by having it uh, go underground more often. So you fight it in the desert. And it just kind of like goes underground. It, it adds the Diablos element to an Ursula fight. It also slings in the air more, which I think is a little bit dumb because it slings when there's nothing above to sling to and just slings like <laughs> uh, overall fun fight. I like the original Nursilla fight more than the shrouded Nursilla. This one was not as bad as I thought it would be. Then the legendary Fade. I mentioned this in my last journal, Fire Drill. Everybody warned me this would be my G2 wall. It's a quest in the volcanic hollow with a Brachidios and a Stygian Zenogar. Very well known for being exceptionally difficult and walling people. Even in the comments of the last journal, people were mentioning how they quit this game for months because of this quest. And long story short, I beat it, which was just a surprise. But anyways, I must have been on like just the perfect wave of connecting with my, my controller. The one thing I did very differently here is I brought dung bombs because I'm like, well, if I'm taking on two hard monsters, I have learned, bring some poo with you so you can separate them. And so I went in, got rid of the Stygians and Ogre whenever he showed up. I'm just like, poo on you, poo on you and your family. And so I just focused on the Brachidio. Somehow he didn't give me too much trouble. Like I was complaining at the beginning of this game that the Brachidios was not a good matchup with the Charge Blade. Uh, but here I was, just like comfortably just wailing on him, dropping Saeeds and Aids, and uh, I think I got him cartless and just destroyed him. So that was done by about like probably the 20 minute mark. This was also a sign that my weapon was finally and my skills were aligned to do some proper damage. And then I went after the Stygian Zenogre and this boy... No! Oh, he out stomped me! Oh, that's how Oh my goodness, I forgot about the balls. And so it was, uh, I struggled and I carted twice. It got pretty tight where I had used up all my healing items and I was just like, oh my God. And so I was holding on to one last potion towards the end. He started limping. I was like, oh, here's the chance. Uh, followed him. He like knocked me down by jumping up a wall, like all, almost oh. all my life gone. I was like, oh man, I can taste it. I can die so easily, but he's limping. So he's close to dying. Finally, he walked away from that region and everyone's like, let him sleep, let him sleep. So I just wasted a bit of time. Went in, of course he was sleeping and I'm like, it's all on the side, let's go. And then I just went in and luckily that's all it took to kill him. So I killed him in his sleep with an side drop. And I love that. Um, after that point, it was just cleaning up to go and unlock G3. So there was some Black Gravios. I did that in multiplayer, a Brute Tigrex. I think I did that myself. Diablos, I can't believe I hadn't encountered a Diablos in this game, but people reminded me that, no, this is the first Diablos I fought. So I fought him, fun, fun boy. I love my Diablos. Went through the Black Diablos, also not so bad. I think after doing the Apex in uh, Sunbreak, like Diablos, I, I know how to fight a Diablos at this point. And then all of that unlocked the gatekeeper to G3, which is Chaotic Gore Magala. Uh, was a little bit worried that I couldn't, I wouldn't be prepared for this, but I went at it anyways. And it came so close to timing out. So it was a pretty tough fight. He hits pretty hard, but I was playing cautious. Luckily my weapon does some good damage. Uh, I lost track of him. He was limping around the 15 minute left at the end. So I was comfortable. I'm like, oh, I'm going to end this. I'm going to end this. He was so good at hiding from me because I didn't paintball him because we kept fighting in the same three zones. I'm like, I know where he's going to go. I don't need to paintball him. Silly me. He caused me to waste over 10 minutes of my time hunting him. I got Monster Hunter 1 flashbacks here. And luckily, like there were five minutes left. I paintballed him, found him in the nest and just went like, Ugh! and just destroyed him before I ran out of time. But I had four minutes left. I was sweating. Uh, I did not want to fail that quest to a timeout. That would have been so embarrassing. So with that, G3 opened up and uh, the elders were lined up. Luckily, I only had to fight four. Uh, the first one was up was Camellios, which was my first one here. And it was just absolutely stupid. Like I tried to solo it and it was so dumb how much damage he does. I'm just like, this is not pleasant or fun. And so I just like brought in multiplayer and even in multiplayer, he was hard. Like we carded, I think we failed maybe once. We were struggling against Camellios. 
And uh, after a while, it took like an hour between my solo attempts and multiplayer attempts, we finally killed him. And I'm like, I, like these elders are just dialed up too crazy. And it is G rank, it's intended for multiplayer. So I'm like, I don't even want to solo these. These are just not fun to solo at this level of pain. And so I took out Shala, Teostra, Yukanlos with uh, multiplayer, which is what led us to unlock Gogmazio so early. And so I went in with no expectation of being able to do good. And I have to say that, first of all, as a monster design, this thing is absolutely beautiful to look at. I love the design concept. He's big, but he like moves like a small monster. And uh, just the way he's like leaking, like all of this like weird tar stuff and really, really cool monster. Love him. So he's in the arena. So the first thing I do is I start loading cannonballs into the thing, well, move into good. position, Holy blow him, and then I jump on his back and I like start stabbing him. So I like get him out right at the beginning, which is like oh dopamine hit. And then I go back to the top and I'm saying like okay, what else? What, what other flip can I or whatever? What other switch can I flip? And I find the dragonator. I was like oh let's get this. So he gets close, boom, dragonator right into the chest. He falls. I go down and I boom 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 boom. So I keep like uh, doing that. And then I'm looking for like other things that are like, oh, these binders are open. I'm like, oh, what do these do? So the first one I shoot, I miss because I didn't know what it was. Second one, I shoot, pin him down. And all I'm doing is just getting my charge blade charged up, get a, a an Aid or a Saeed and just boom, Saeed, Saeed, Saeed or Aid, Aid. Like I'm just unleashing as much damage as I can on him. And I'm lasting pretty long here. I'm like 30 minutes in and I've gotten his move set down where I can pretty much dodge it. So it just comes down to just unleashing as much damage as I can not expecting much pulling off the dragon air as i can where like this entire uh fight really spiked in terms of dopamine and craziness is at one point uh so i break his tail and then i'm like oh like dopamine hit again i'm like i'm doing so good i'm you know hitting all of the dragonators hitting everything i should and now the tail break maybe i have a chance of actually doing this and i'm not dying so i know what i'm doing uh, and then soon after, I drop an SAD that somehow hit his back and dislodged the Dragonator that was on his back. And the chat was like, oh my god, how did he do that? He broke it. And they're like, Dragonator, Dragonator. I didn't realize I knocked the Dragonator off his back. I thought I just broke something. And the second thing is, I didn't know that you can use the Dragonator from his back when it falls off. So I run to the Dragonator on the other side of the arena up top and people are like, what's he doing? Where's he going? And then they see me go to the dragon and they're like, you idiot. And the dragonair was X'd out. I couldn't use it. And they're like, you idiot, the other dragonator. And everyone's like yelling. And I'm like, what's going on? What am I doing? And while I'm there, while I saw that the dragon was not done and I was like coming to terms that, oh, it was the other dragonator over there. The dragonator up top became available. I'm like, oh, look, the timing was perfect. And so everyone's like, oh, BS, hey, J luck. And so anyways, he comes close. I activate that dragonator. I go down and I try to hover like near the old first gen Dragonator that fell off. And then all of a sudden the music kicks in. He flies. I was like, what is going on? And apparently there's a phase two to this thing. And I'm just like, what am I going to do? And then he's like charging. He's flying. And he just starts shooting a laser everywhere. And I think I was far enough that I was safe, but I did not know what to expect. All I see is laser ever. So I'm literally running like a cartoon in a circle. I eventually did trigger the Dragonator. Did not hit him because you have to do it as soon as it falls off his back. I was doing some good damage, but I was asking people, I think there were five minutes left in the fight after uh, after wailing on him for a while. I was like, is there any chance of me winning this? And they're just like, no, you, you missed too many like chances. You weren't doing enough damage. Uh, apparently, it's a really hard fight to solo. So I was like, OK. So I ended by subquest. So at least I got the victory music. I got to keep all my parts. And it was a fantastic first experience, even though I didn't even though I didn't win, like slay it. To me, I won as a hunter because I learned the fight. I got to do so many cool things. I got a cool story out of it. And it was just such a great time. And another thing that I learned is I couldn't use the demolisher, which is like this mega cannon and the thing, because I haven't unlocked the fuel to, to use that thing. So you have to go and do all of these lab quests for the professor, all these quests that are assigned by the professor, which apparently then lets you do something at the farm, which lets you eventually buy the fuel to use in that quest. So that's what I started doing in multiplayer, grinding up those quests. I'm not quite there yet. I need another part or two, and then I will be able to buy the fuel. I want to go back in multiplayer just to go after Gog, because I feel I know the fight now. I don't want to do another extended 40 minute like solo like I did with the Lamador just for the sake of it. I know the fight. I want to just end it so that I can finish G3. And then I think 
uh, we get into the bronze, silver, gold crowns of G rank. And it's just a matter of finding Fatalis, which is somewhere in there. I don't know what that grind looks like. I don't know what to do there. But we're getting there. We're getting very close. I can smell <laughs> this dragon. And I think we're just a journal or two away before I can finally say pledge complete. So hopefully I'll see you in those journals or on the stream. And until next time, keep it classy. Hello, darkness, my old friend. I've come to fight with you again. Because a vision softly creeping Left to see while I was sleeping And the vision that was planted in my brain Still remains Within the pledge of for you Welcome, Classic Crew, to a journal report on my For You pledge to slay every Fatalis in this game. We are in the end game. We have found Black Fatalis. Only two Fatalises remain. The proper Crimson one, which is hidden behind ten scrolls, and the elusive White Fatalis, which I've actually unlocked, but I've been told to save him for last. Here we are. We're in the end game. We're maybe one to two journals away from finishing this pledge. Join me as I share my tale of what, how Black Fatalis compares to Monster Hunter World's Fatalis. But before that, we gotta cover all of the side activities, starting with last time on Hey J. I was fighting Gog, I died to Gog, I needed some fuel for my demolisher to blow up Gog. And so that's what we did. I went straight to the Wyceum dude or the shopkeeper, finished some village requests for him, and that unlocked uh, the Wyceum's fully upgraded catalog of things. We can now carry two stones with us, uh, the Y stones, which, why stones? <laughs> They're so dumb. I really don't like the white stones. I don't like the mechanic of white stones. I think that they are as silly as some people claim the world mechanic of clutch clawing is. At least with clutch claw, you can clutch claw to your heart's desire and you can soften those monsters as often as you want. With these Y stones, they become essential in the fight for Apex against Apex monsters, in which at one point you need to actually use one if you want to actually not bounce off the Apex. But there's a cooldown on the stone, which means the fight while your stone is cooling down is essentially bonkers. It's a dumb mechanic, I don't like it. So I got that, and more importantly though, I can now buy the fuel for my demolisher in Dendorma's defense arena, which is a really cool arena that I'm starting to see a lot of here in Endgame as I am fighting all sorts of gogs, all sorts of emergency quests where there's just like an intruder monster that's random. Sometimes it's Kushala, sometimes it's Camellio, sometimes it's Theostra. Either way, you gotta kill everything that shows up there. So I got that, went back into the gog fight with multiplayer this time and this time it happened so fast it was really fun to actually do it as a team some people just going at it while other people are like loading the cannonballs on the thing and you're trying to like trigger the dragonator dragonator's triggered okay now get a mount mounts triggered all right now throw the cannonballs it just synchronizes so much better so the gog fight remains one of my favorite siege fights if actually hands down this is not even a debate it is the best siege fight we need more GOG fights. So the next Monster Hunter Wild, you need to have a GOG type of fight because it is mwah, beautiful. So with GOG out of the way, we have now finished G3 and we have unlocked the proper end game, end game of Monster Hunter for you, where now the immenseness, his immenseness gives you a scroll that you can't read. You have to kill monsters so that you can unlock what the scroll means. And when you unlock the scroll, you get to fight a new difficult monster. Now, I have learned that there are 11 scrolls to unlock, each progressively harder to unlock. Uh, and when I say harder, I mean it's more of a time sink because the amount of text on the scroll increases. The first one is a line. By the time you get to the 10th one, I heard it's like five lines of code. Uh, and every time you slay an Elder Dragon or an Endgame monster, you get anywhere from about two to four characters on the scroll. So each scroll is easy, like five, six fights to unlock, which can take quite a while when you're fighting Endgame monsters. So I got the first scroll, I unlocked it, and that gave us Molten Tigrex, G-Rank Molten Tigrex. 
Tigrex. Kill these things. I'm, I'm at this point, I'm playing in multiplayer. I think soloing endgame Monster Hunter for you. While doable, I just don't think it's a fun experience. Three you, I kept to the pledge of slaying all monsters once, at least solo. And for, for the most part, I think I've done the same here in for you, with the exception if the monster is a siege fight. That's the only time where I'm like, I, I tried them solo, but I'm like, if it's meant for multiplayer, I will bring friends and I'll do it the way it was intended and actually have fun with it. My whole goal with experimenting with these Monster Hunter games and playing them is not to hurt myself, but it's actually to enjoy them and appreciate them for the way that they were intended to be designed. Uh, these pledges just make sure I experience that and don't give up. So that's why we're doing all this. So Molten Tigrex, I've unlocked four scrolls so far. The next one is a Cantor, he died. Then Apex Seregios, that was a pain, he died, also multiplayer. And finally, I've unlocked Chaotic Gore, but I haven't defeated him yet. I've just unlocked him. I have heard that my final Fatalis, the only one I don't have access to right now, which is a Crimson Fatalis, is hidden behind the 10th scroll. And that, my friends, is the biggest limiter in me completing my pledge right now. I can go and fight White Fatalis right now. I can go and fight the um, event Crimson Fatalis, which we'll also talk about soon. But this whole uh, hidden, that's the one I want to attempt to solo is the one behind the 10th scroll. So I just got to do that. And the bigger challenge now is I've checked marked all of my G3 quests, like all the end game quests I've done at least once. So I'm inviting the community at this point in multiplayer to like, oh, let's do quests for, for other people. Let's help each other out. And I think that there's something, a mentality that's happened where everybody's trying to one up each other and like, this is the hardest quest. No, this is the hardest quest. And what this resulted in is an evening of failed quests after failed quests because everybody's bringing their hardest quest to the table and we're failing, whether I'm dying, other people are dying, we're collectively dying, there's one fight, Teostra did his supernova, everybody died, except for your boy Hey Jay, because I know how to dodge. All of that to say, a night of failure really sets me back in my progress, because I barely unlocked a scroll that night, because all of that dying, all of that time sink, was for nothing besides the power of friendship that we made along the way. I had to start like enforcing rules of banning certain quests. Like there's one quest we did, uh, someone brought it, It was it's called Naked and Afraid, and it sounds about as bad as it sounds. You're in the arena with an Apex Rajang, and you're not allowed to wear any armor. So you're in there with your weapon, and you better hope this monkey doesn't clap any part of your body. Because there's a part where his laser that comes out of his mouth, he doesn't give any signal. I'm going to shoot here. I'm going to shoot here. He's just like, angry monkey, bam, you're dead. And that's just what happens. You can't do anything unless you Superman dive. That's pretty much the only way you can guarantee dodging that. So I'm like, th that's not fun. I just don't want to do those things anymore. Can we just like have fun, slay monsters, unlock scrolls, progress, and get me to my pledge so I can go pledge complete at the end of this? Other things I've done, I'm also dabbling in a few village rank uh, monster qu uh, quests that are available. One is a white monoblos which I think is only accessible through the village quest. So I did that one. And he's a lot faster than your regular Monoblos. Doesn't hit as hard as I thought, but I, it could also be that I'm decked out in endgame armor at this point. He was very comfy. I broke his horn and he's he's he telegraphs a lot. He's basically like a Diablos, but more boring. Uh, so he has nothing on like Black Diablos either. Just big um, disappointment. All of this led to me getting to Hunter Rank 70, which has been one of my goals this whole time. So once you hit Hunter Rank 70, you will finally unlock Black Fatalis in the hub. And so I got to take him on and I went solo, uh, of course, and I told everyone was saying, oh, you got this. Oh, this is going to be so easy. You're in full G rank armor. And I'm like, oh, well, there's a high rank Fatalis. I guess this will be easier. All right, let's go. This ain't going to be as bad as I thought. What was that? I get in there and anytime Fatalis pretty much tickles me or looks at me, half my health magically disappears. I was like, how the heck are you guys telling me this is intended for high rank? I'm in full endgame G rank armor here, but still he is one to, he can two shot me very easily. So this is not an easy fight. Sorry, bros. And it took me 20, no, it took me 18 minutes to finish this fight. And that is with a 
fully, it was either fully or almost fully upgraded uh, charge blade. So whatever people say about what the intended difficulty of this fight is, I felt I was at the right equipment and everything to take this on because anything less would have been absolutely garbage. So that was my first impression. Wow, he hits hard. He gets a really cool intro scene, uh, which isn't quite as you know epic as World, but this is a 3DS game. I'm not gonna expect world level cutscenes or anything. Uh, I do like how the you know you it's the same arena. It's Castle Shrade or Shrod or whatever. And as I was going around, I was like, oh, these this kind of looks familiar. And then people are like, yeah, I remember where the Dragonator was in Monster Hunter World? It's there here too. I'm like, I know exactly where that is. I went up to, like the stairs. I'm like, here's the Dragonator, punk, and hit Fatalis. Unfortunately, no proof of a hero triggered. You just get the the same fighting song that you get in any other monster. So it's not even special. Uh, later, I'll talk about Crimson Fatalis. He actually gets a really dramatic like score and music, which is terrifying. Black Fatalis, they don't give him anything. I couldn't use most of the artillery because it doesn't move. There's a cannon that's stationary. So Fatalis has to be in a very specific spot to shoot him. So the only thing I really used was the Dragonator once. And the rest of the time, I'm just sticking to his chest. And I'm just like unloading Aids and Saids. No, I didn't unload Saids. But for the most part, that's all I had to do. And he had three to four attacks. He had a swipe, which got me almost all the time. And the one that hurt me the most is when he actually goes on all four legs, because I'm usually fighting in front of his chest. If I don't see the tail, the tail that he's coming down, I don't move and I get squished by him and it hurts a lot. With that said, Black Fate Dallas is slayed. I beat him after 18 minutes. Uh, and then there was one other Black Fatalis in the game. He's available as an event quest in G rank. You know, I had just done the Hunter rank 70 and I felt that was a good challenge. I felt I understood the fight and everything. The G rank one did not offer anything different other than buffed up attack, buffed up defense. So I'm like, let's let's bring in multiplayer. Let's just do this. And we did it. It took didn't take long. And there was really nothing noteworthy about it other than when you mount Fatalis, when someone else mounts Fatalis, and he turns, his tail is so long, it's pretty much a whole different, like it's a whole new attack. I got hit so much because someone else mounted Fatalis and I got hit by the tail because I wasn't far enough away from him. Uh, so that's my experience with Fatalis. Honestly, compared to the other like boss level monsters in For You, which there are a lot of here, he's not that memorable and he's not that special. And it's a little bit disappointing. Crimson, however, on the other hand, there's more to say there. And White Fatalis, I know nothing about him yet. I don't know, though, right now what uh, what to expect in terms of the fight. I'm holding that off. Everyone has told me, not everyone, a few people in chat have told me, save it for your last fight to finish the pledge on because it's a very epic fight. So I'm like, okay, we'll do that. Through all these grinds, I finally got all of my uh, materials I needed to finally upgrade my Steve Charge Blade to the max. So I had one more upgrade that I needed. Now my attack power has been increased by 10%. I also um, unlocked the ability to hone, which is a new mechanic in Super Endgame, where you can actually upgrade your weapon. If they're maxed out, you can upgrade them one more time with either a, a boost to attack, which I estimate is about a 10% boost to attack, uh, a defense buff, which gives you 60 raw defense plus divine blessing or a life buff which you get to heal your life when you attack right now i'm really torn my chat is saying go the defense route and i was like i don't need that i have divine blessing already on my armor i can eat for divine blessing they stack and people are like yeah but this defense buff gives you a third divine blessing which stacks even more I'm like that seems excessive it just seems excessive so I don't know if the attack is worth it because it's 10% buff. And then there's the life upgrade, which I don't know if I attack enough. Like, I don't know how much health you heal through the attacks. So I don't know if I would actually make use of it. Like, do I attack enough to actually heal a respectable amount of health? I wish I could measure that and test that. And I'll probably look at some videos to make a decision. One of my problems in my fights is I consume way too many potions. So if I can avoid, minimize my potion consumption through this, that would be the way to go. And I had to finish a Daren G rank in Village to unlock the honing stuff. And that thing was hard. A I never realized the G rank whale was hard because you're on your own. You can't bring friends to that one. And he, uh, when he would like shoot things onto the boat, which locked me from my own artillery, I didn't know that I could place a bomb there. So like at one point when the Dragonator, it was time for the Dragonator, he blew a chunk on it. And so I couldn't use it. And I'm like banging my like massive ax on this like stump trying to break it. It finally breaks, but then the whale hits the boat and I miss my Dragonator moment. 
Uh, that said, I made it to phase two. I did get my Dragonator out. It triggered proof of a hero. I'm like, I oh, this feels so good. And I, fi I finished him with the best hit. I didn't even know you could do this in phase two. But if you hit him a certain way, you can actually climb on his back. And I'm like hitting his blowhole. And I got a Saeed right down the blowhole. And that explode, like that made him blow. Like explode? Uh, that killed him. It was very satisfying to hit him in his like weakest point, and that's how I killed him. So going back to um, you know all the hard stuff I was doing, and that we were all failing to. Like everyone was bringing, like I said, naked and afraid was one of them with an apex for Jang. People were bringing guild quests at level 140, which is the highest quest you can get of Shaguru Magala. We've got, we had a raging Brachidios, which that thing was disgusting. Um, I took on a Shah Delamager, which is. Uh, like a variant of the Lamager, which is the same thing. It's the same fight. He just has harder skin, which means more annoying. I also learned that that's a scroll I have to do later, and so is Raging Bracky. So we're going to see those boys again in, as I unlock my scrolls. Uh, and then finally, in the events, there are two Crimson Fatalis quests. I figured let's try one. Every For whatever reason, I ended up with just one teammate. For, for some reason, everyone else like either backed out, couldn't connect, uh, or, can, or just joined multiplayer. So I went out with uh, one of our community leaders in 4U. His name is Boom Wolf in the game, in Discord and Twitch. He goes as Yanga. Shout out to Yanga. He has been so amazing to support the community. Like, if you need help grinding anything in 4U before the servers, I'm going to volunteer him right now because he's been in the Discord for the last few months offering help, uh, helping people get equipment, helping people learn fights, helping me. And so he's like, I want to do a Fatalis fight with you. So we went one on one with Crimson Fatalis and he's got this amazing set. I think it's a Star Knight set. He's constantly mounting monsters. So he has an insect lay, first of all, and like literally every two to three minutes, he's mounting a monster. I don't know how it's done, but it creates a lot of openings and makes fights go by so fast. So we go on Crimson Fatalis, get the epic cutscene, you get the epic music. And I'm just like, oh, he's everything is so red and on fire this is nothing like the crimson fatalis i fought earlier in the game and at high rank the baby one i don't know if i would have been able to do this one alone honestly because he hits really hard everything is always on fire i absolutely hate the arena because the arena is like uh sinks down sometimes it's on on lava uh, there's like lava things to just come out of the ground his feet are on fire if you get too close to fatalis's feet which is where you need to be if you're a melee user you're going to be on fire just everything is on fire the arena sucks the music is so intense it raises your stress level and uh overall although we did it in 12 minutes so it went pretty good with yanga if i did that myself it would have been 40 minutes of pain lots of sweat probably would have carded three times uh I think in this case, I carded once uh, when pretty much he was flying or he ran towards me. I always get trampled by these big monsters and it always does a ton of damage, which to be fair, these monsters are heavy, so it would hurt to be trampled by them. So that's where I am right now. Black Fatalis is off the menu. I've done every Black Fatalis quest. There are uh, two Crimson Fatalis quests off the menu. I've done those, the egg quest and the one in the event here. And then there's another like Super Crimson or something. And then there's Endgame Crimson. So we got those two Fatalis and then the White Fatalis. So I got three to do. And then I can finally say pledge complete. And we can go on a little Final Fantasy XIV vacation for a few months before I come back and pledge something in GU, whatever that will be. So stay tuned for all of that. We're almost there. Maybe one more journal. We will see. I'll see you on the next journal or on the stream. And until next time, keep it classy. White Fatalis and the Crimson Demon are no more. I'm happy to say pledge complete. Welcome back, Classy Crew, to the final journal, potentially final journal, in my Monster Hunter 4 you journey to slay every Fatalis in the game. And I'm happy to say they are done. And I'm also happy I did not pledge to do these solo. Now, I have attempted all of them solo. Some I have beaten solo. Some I have done multiplayer. But I have done all of them. There are six Fatalises in Monster Hunter for you, for those who may be curious, including four... Wait, actually, there may be more than six. There are four Crimson Fatalises. There are two Blacks and one White. So that is seven. But before I get into the Fatalis encounter and specifically what it was like to fight my very first white Fatalis, you, we gotta go over the side quests. I left off on the scroll grind and that is, been, that has been the biggest limiter to completing this pledge, grinding for scrolls. And I am so glad I changed my schedule. So remember when I first pledged this game over a year ago, I used to stream 
once a week, four hours a week, every Thursday. That's how I progress. And that's how I've been doing these streams for all my pledges for the last three years. But over the last, I would say two, three months, I have been playing this game three times a week. That's 12 hours a week, Tuesday, Thursday. I'm not playing anything else just to get through this. And it still took this much time to get through the pledge because that final scroll grind is just so long. Now, I actually calculated, it took me about 40 hours from the moment I unlocked the end game scroll grind to actually unlock uh, Crimson Fatalis, which to me, that's a lot, but I'm sure to a lot of Monster Hunter veterans, they're all like, wait a minute, I only, I spend 400 hours in my game. I spend a thousand hours into my game. What's 40 hours? In that context, yeah, I guess it's not that much. Now, one thing you'll notice is uh, my little, on my icon, I have a silver crown next to my name. I actually didn't get a gold crown because I haven't unlocked the very final scroll, which is scroll number 11 called Monster Hunter, where you fight a marathon of five monsters. I've already done the quest in multiplayer. I've completed it. So if I can just unlock the scroll, I'll get my little gold crown. And in hindsight, had I known this entire mechanic, I think that may have been the nicer pledge to just pledge to get the gold crown next to my name. I feel, I don't know, that's that's more of a, com like it, it takes you through the entire game, all the content, which is oftentimes what I wanna do. So anyways, last time I was on scroll number four with Chaotic Gormagala. I've unlocked all of them and beaten all of them in multiplayer. I did not solo any of these because man, they're just so hard. The Shah de Lamader, I'm, I talked about him a little bit last journal, but I've actually gone back and fought him with different people in multiplayer who had maybe less optimal sets, which made me, actually understand the fight a little bit more and appreciate more what he's doing. And I have to say with the Shah Delameter, I really like these like big hooks he has on his body. So when he slithers around, you can actually get caught by the hooks, but you can also destroy them, which is very satisfying. Also, I've learned that anytime he, he's glowing red anywhere, that's when that's where you want to hit it. And it's a lot more like hit here, hit here, which I like that part. I still don't like the fact that he's super bouncy and it's still not a fight I would ever want to solo because it is just super super grindy. He has a lot of HP and there's no oh fun to be had there. Goodness. Scroll number six is the Apex Rajang. You guys know how I feel about the Angry Monkey. I hate the Angry Monkey. Speaking of Angry Monkey though, there are a bunch of side quests. So I did make a little side bet with Gajira about if one of us dies in a, in, a, in a quest, we have to do something like dumb. Anyways, I ended up carding, dang it. And so he challenged me to do the naked and afraid. It, that's not what it's called. But anyway, fighting Apex Rajang in the arena naked. And luckily it wasn't do the quest and win. It was just attempt your best. And so I went in, I lasted five minutes. He still killed me. It was very one-sided, but hey, lasting five minutes against that thing is an achievement in and of its own. There was also another custom quest that our good friend Immortal brought to the fight, and that was a Rajang on a boat. And I have to say it was pretty clever. And I think this was actually designed by one of the mods, Miniguy. And Miniguy tends to be fair, I like it. So this was a fun quest. There was, it was just really crowded because there were conchus everywhere. It was just kind of funny to fight a monkey on a boat. Honestly, I think Capcom should lean more into those silly <laughs> types of quests. That's about all the funnies with the monkey. After that, we unlocked an Enrage Ucanlos quest. It's basically the same quest as regular Ucanlos, but he's constantly enraged, which means he hurts a lot more. That was probably the hardest quest, even in multiplayer to finish. We did it once and we've never attempted it again because we just kept dying so much. It was just too hard. After that, there's another Gogmazios quest that unlocks at scroll number nine. And I don't really understand the difference between this one and the other one. Uh, it feels the same, so I can't tell you what the difference is. Finally, the Crimson Demon. Crimson Fatalis is what unlocks at scroll number 10. And before I get into this fight, I have to share with you another little side quest related to this, which is around honing, weapon honing, and trying to unlock the best, strongest charge blade for the game. I've been using the, uh, what's it called? The purple, the, what is it called? The Garuda Sedition, which is from, dropped from whatever, the Purple Bird. And that thing was pretty good, but people were saying actual strongest charge blade in the game is the Cetus Blade, which is called, and I love it, the Decetus. Freaking awesome name. And to get that, you have to farm Devil Joe, and then you trade your Devil Joe parts for Cetus parts because Cetus isn't in the game. So I did that. I upgraded it all the way to the Cetus Regalia, which is a freaking awesome name. And I was looking at these two charge blades. I was like, wait a minute. I don't actually think 
the Cetus regalia is better. Like when you look at everything it has to offer. So let's put them side by side. Hopefully the editor can do something to make this visually pleasing. The Cetus regalia, it's full attack, it's 1080 versus Garuda's Editions 1044. And then the Cetus Regalia is a water-based weapon versus the Garuda's Edition, which has no elemental. The elemental stuff, you know, I, I don't quite get it. I think you do extra damage against monsters that are weak to it. How many things are weak to water? Not that many that I actually fight that often. Now the Cetus Regalia has white sharpness, whereas the freaking Edition has purple sharpness plus one, which doesn't really do much. So finally, on the affinity front, the Cetus Regalia is 20% whereas the other one that I'm currently using is 35%. Overall, the Garuda just, I think, tends to have more damage output in the long run just because it's doing more damage on crit, it's a sharper, and it gives me a little bit more room to slot in other things, whereas the Cetus Regalia, I have to sacrifice more of my decoration slots to try and get it to the same level as the Garuda's edition. Uh, so with that said, I ended up abandoning the Cetus Regalia only for the final guild quest before I unlocked Crimson Fatalis. I got a rusted weapon, which was a, a Decetus, which was super powerful, which I was like, oh my goodness, did the game just give me like the weapon to, to slay Crimson Fatalis? Now let's pause here and talk about this whole rusted weapon mechanic which is a part of the game i actually want to cover in this journal because i didn't touch this system at all over my whole journey and in fact uh, a couple weeks ago on my own personal time i started really looking to understand what guild quests are how to farm rusted weapons how to restore them how to get like absolute like raw weapon power and armor out of it and it's a really cool system but it's so grindy you know i'm never going to touch this but let me explain it so we have these expeditions that exist out of those expeditions if you do them like you just go out and you hunt monsters in expedition you'll eventually get guild quests those guild quests come at a certain level whatever it's random then assuming you get a quest you like you then need to level it up up to a maximum of 140 so that you get better drops from that quest and then once you grind it you have to mine and complete the quest multiple times to win collected uh, to win rusted armor parts and rusted weapons once you have that and you find something you like, you then need some abrasives to restore them. And then you have this whole like side aspect of the game where you can upgrade them. You don't upgrade these weapons like you normally do at the man. You got to go to hearth and you get a dwarf to upgrade them for you. And you basically do that and repeat it until you get a super awesome weapon. Everything is randomized, but this is the way that you can get the most ultimate weapon and armor sets, which I have zero appetite to do. It's just such a big time sink. But at the time, if you had no other Monster Hunter games to play, it was actually a pretty cool end game mechanic, I think, just really painful on the time. So anyways, uh, I ended up with, like I said, a, a, a Decetus. It could go up to a max of 1080. It had a 480 elemental damage instead of 310, so significantly more. However, it was a hidden elemental thing, which I'm not sure what that means. I think you need a skill to allow for the water damage to take part, which uh, needs more decoration slots. And it had a higher sharpness of purple and it had pre-slotted things that I couldn't unslot. So overall, when I, even though it was still better than my base uh, Cetus Regalia, I did the calculations. I'm like, I think I'm still better off with my Garuda Sedition blade. And so I stuck with that. So with that said, I finally got into Crimson Fatalis. And I have to say, this boy is garbage i really do not i tried soloing him twice happy to say it lasted 15 minutes it was actually an intense fight there was some good stuff that happened and i dunked him in a surprise way i didn't even know you could do this on a fatalis but i hit him as he was about to like fly and so he was like i don't know he was like doing this weird animation on the ground i was like what is he doing i've never seen this in all of our multiplayer hunts and so people are like you knocked him out of the sky and it's like oh awesome it was really cool the whole, what I really don't like about this fight is mostly the arena. That is the worst thing. So I am constantly on fire. He's standing, first of all, Fatalis is oftentimes standing on lava, which prevents you from getting close to him. Or if you do get close to him, you have to, you're just taking damage. And then there's like these like lava things that just come out of the ground and knock you over and hurt you. So the Fatalis fight itself is actually quite manageable, but the amount of damage you are constantly taking from the elements and just 
for existing and breathing is so ridiculous like i was going through potions after potions for everything i did find the good opening which is when he's actually about to do like his hot air attack if you're behind him there's a big opening there where you can actually like drop a, an aid or a saeed on him I, like i said i tried soloing this and i was like this is just really depressing it is so hard and like my pledge is not to solo these fatalities it was to defeat them and so I had already done it in multiplayer, you know, I tried it with solo, I, did, I gave it my best run just to see what it was. Could I actually do it? Maybe with a lot of practice, but I just don't have the patience for that kind of arena. And then there was a funny cold drink incident, which is funny, that's actually what I wrote it. Cold drink incident. So there's a, uh, while doing it in multiplayer, and we went into a Crimson Fatales fight as a whole team, and I forgot my cold drinks because I was distracted talking about probably chicken burgers or something. And I'm running around and my health is just going down. I'm like, I forgot cold drinks and everybody's laughing, ha ha ha. And so Boom Wolf is like trying to save me and he offers me a cold drink right in the middle of the fight. And I run to him, grab the cold drink, drink it, dodge, because Fatalis was coming after us, and we lost Boom Wolf. He died to, I think, a, a meteor that hit him. And everyone's like, that's Jay's fault. Like, why are you doing I'm like, hey, I survived. He, like, we were right next to each other. Why couldn't he get out of the way? I had the time to drink a, my, my, my smoothie and get out. Then I got into White Fatalis, which I have to say, way, way better fight. This one just is probably the best of the Fatalis fights. So it was my first time encountering him. Never had no idea what to expect. Quickly learned he's kind of like a lightning based Fatalis, which I didn't like because my armor is actually very weak to lightning. So I was like, oh no. Uh, the music is epic and people pointed out that it sounds like the lyrics are saying like, get me hot fish, which I was, once you hear it, you're like, ah, oh, that song's ruined. Now all you can hear is get me hot fish. There's actually siege weaponry that you can use because you're back in um, Castle Shrade. So I was able to use the Dragonair like three, four times, which makes me feel even stronger on this thing. Uh, there's a part where he gets like supercharged and he, it looks like he has a reactor going. That makes his skin even harder, which I hate that mechanic because then how do I hit him? I basically have to like just wait until he stops doing that so I can start wailing on him again. I got to dunk on him as well. So I got another hit where he's about to like launch and I hit him right on the head with an Aid or a Saeed and he came down flopping like Crimson Fatalis. This was like back to back fight. So I got two dunks. So I felt like a freaking pro doing that. And overall, the, the fight lasted, I actually made it to the 35 minute fight. It's only a 35 minute window. So I repelled him. I didn't actually slay him, but the hunt is slay or repel. And ev like nobody disagreed, that's a win. Uh, I got the full quest rewards. I got the victory music. I got the chat approving of my, <laughs> of my victory. Yeah, this is probably my favorite Fatalis in this game. White Fatalis, Black Fatalis, and then the Crimson one. If he wasn't in that stupid arena, he would be probably more manageable. But otherwise, he's just like, you know, BS. I say BS a lot on this channel. That is that is BS. Crimson Fatalis in that arena, full BS. And the other thing is I did finish the Guild Marm's quest line. So I got her approved into the Academy and uh, she was sad. Like I thought I was going to lose her for a moment after killing the Chaotic Gore. But turns out she spent all her money hiring me to kill these monsters to get her into the academy she can't afford to go to the academy anymore so guild marm you're stuck with me and that's how it's going to stay so i've got one more journal where i really want to try to learn guard point because i still don't know how to do it and i finished my pledge and then after that vacation to final fantasy 14 and finally we're going to be starting gu with a whole new pledge in a couple months i'll keep you updated on that but otherwise thanks for watching and until next time keep it class with my pledge complete for Monster Hunter 4U, there was just a few other things I needed to do, like finally learn Guard Point. Welcome back, Classic Crew, to the epilogue of my Monster Hunter 4U journey. We are just weeks away from the servers being turned down for Monster Hunter 4U. And something I've been talking about since the very beginning, which is learning Guard Point, as well as a reflection. Uh, so I've gone back and actually looked at my Journal Zero, my first impressions before turning on this game, which actually happened on January 26th is when I started this pledge. And I will share with you what I think about Monster Hunter 4U, as well as how it compares to every other Monster Hunter game I've played so far. So before we get into that retrospect, let's just talk about guard point. The skill that I thought for sure was going to be needed to slay Fatalis, the final unlock to become a charge blade master. Guard point. What is it? 
well, it's disappointing is what it is. So what I finally learned is that guard point is, everybody has explained it. The video that really made me understand what it was, was Eric's video because he freezes the frame and he puts a little green circle. He's like, that, that's what it is. Basically when you're morphing from sword mode to ax mode, there are two animations where the shield is in front of your face. And that's not just for show. That shield is functional in that animation. So if you can time your animation to have the shield in front of you, that is called a guard point. So now we know what it is. How is it valuable in battle? So here's my understanding of it now that I've tried using it. And I honestly can't use it because I've just spent a hundred plus hours playing without it. To integrate guard point into my playstyle means relearning how to play charge blade. I have to reconfigure my whole brain for how to fight monsters that I've learned how to fight them by either like sidestepping or doing whatever I do with my charge blade. What I think guard point allows me to do is, so if you look at my footage without guard point, you'll notice that I'm often sheathing, rolling, jumping. With the guard point, I understand that it lets you basically keep your weapon unsheathed all the time. So instead of sheathing and dodging, if you time your animation, you just guard, get out of the way, and then you're already in a position to like move into your combo and offense, which is great in concept and in theory, but in application, it, it is so hard to get the timing right. And I, I tried it against the Tigrex, which is supposed to be one of the easiest monsters to do it again. And I was getting hit so much because my timing and my rhythm isn't there because I have to relearn all the fights for, okay, he's coming in with that attack. I need to guard point now. And I haven't gone into that habit. I have muscle memory. I have so many like problems I'm like, okay, I now understand what guard point is, but it is too late for me. So maybe the next Monster Hunter game I play, maybe I can learn guard point there. Maybe GU is where guard point becomes useful to me. And so that's the sad story of guard point. Now, the other thing that's left to explore in Monster Hunter 4 u now that I've finished my pledge, was there was a few side quests I hadn't finished in Village, which I'm happy to say I've now finished all of the side quests. There was a whole gunner side quest that I had ignored, uh, which if you go through all of that, you unlock Camellios in Village, which I hate Camellios, and it's basically a G rank Camellios, and I had to fight it solo. So that was hard, but I overcame it. And then there's the funky feline. I was gonna say the frickin' funky feline. That's a lot of Fs. His quest line, while it starts out cute with a whole afro and everything, ends up with a Rajang. You have to fight a Furious Rajang, a G-rank Furious Rajang solo because it's in Village. So that was probably the hardest quest, which I was not expecting to be there. Carded twice, almost carded a third time, but I overcame that one as well. And then finally I figured, hey, let's see what happens when we finish the Caravaneers challenge. It is an absolute disgusting ridiculous hard quests even in full g rank end game armor i still carded once and it was still not like crazy hard but i i can't imagine doing this in high rank armor with a high rank weapon when you do all that every npc in the game wants to talk to you so it's a huge celebratory moment you will uh, you get uh, an achievement and also you get the rainbow pigment which you can see in some of the footage that i've unlocked so i'm at least happy i know that i did that there's one for g rank if i can complete all of the quests yes. in g rank there's a similar Similar challenge that unlocks. I forget what it's called, but people have said it's it's also disgusting. And I don't have a cheat in that one to use like a super ultimate armor to make it actually easy. So that one's just not even that I, I just don't want to go through that kind of pain. Before we did that, there was a custom quest the community Immortal put together, Immortal Cripple. And this one was actually very well done. It wasn't a troll quest. I love the story about it. So the background of this quest is that Guildmarm's sweetheart, which if you remember is Bracadillos, has been caught cheating on her and we have to go in and punish Bracadillos for being a bad boy. And so it's an arena fight against double Bracky because Bracadillos basically cheated on Guildmarm by with another Bracadillos. So you kill the Bracadillos, you kill his side chick, and then you have protected Guildmarm's honor. And then the episodic quest, I did two. One was the Chacha and Kayamba one, which reminded me how much I really don't like these two. <laughs> I'm sorry. I know some of you love them. I cannot stand them. So you do this whole quest line of trying to uh, save them from their stupid ventures of trying to get a mask. And then at the end, you actually save the Moga Sweetheart, which was one of my favorite characters from 3U. And if you finish the whole episodic quest line, she actually shows that you can replace your house cat with the guild, uh, not the guild marm, with the Moga Sweetheart, which is like, that's a really nice touch for an episodic. That's a such a cool, like little reward. I love it. So I, I tossed my cat out the door. I'm like, and then the other one was called 
called the Sweetheart Square Off, which was a really weird quest that included Gen 2 characters that I don't know, like the Jumbo Sweetheart. And the whole quest line was about highly suggesting that they were talking about comparing their breasts to each other, like their boobs, and that all the quests are related to go and, and get the... Um, something that is similar size to their you know what's that's exactly what they call them in games the you know what's and i know i know the game's gonna twist it and being like at the end we weren't talking about our breasts you big pervert but like it is so there's so much innuendos i'm just gonna go with it because you know what i didn't actually complete the quest line i died to the final one which was where we were supposed to get the biggest you know what whatever that may be um and i lost to a gold rathian because i was using dual blades of all things and during all these episodic challenges the community, specifically Gajira, have brought out these wheels for like an added level of fun where we challenge ourselves. So you spin a wheel that's predetermined with like all these things like, oh, you can only use this weapon. So I kind of tagged into these challenges, one of which was I had to use a dual blade. And for the Gold Rathian specifically, if anybody carded, they couldn't come back to the fight. And so we were down to, I was with dual blades against Gold Rathian. I'd never like use this in this game. So it wasn't pretty, but uh, yeah, that's how I carded. So overall, it was fun. It was a great way to finish uh, my, my journey of Monster Hunter for you. I'll probably do one last like stream just before the server shut down on the days the server shut down, just like as a good send off. Because honestly, Monster Hunter for you, and this is where we're getting into the retrospect, has been such a special game to me. And I, I think it's a special game for a lot of you and I understand why. So when I went back and looked at my first impressions, my journal zero, there's kind of five things that stood out uh, when I was like getting prepared. So I knew that the world building was was praised in this game. And I have to say in retrospect, yeah, these characters I grew so attached to. The Caravaneer, the Man, the Guildmarm, they had such rich personalities and such like so much characterization. Even though you don't interact with them much, I missed them and that world and the fact that there were all these villages. You don't get that. Like there's a lot more world building in Rise and World, but I don't miss the handler i don't miss the admiral uh th they were there they had some charm it was a good game before you really created this bond with the player that i don't think any other monster hunter game has and that will be missed and i really hope that we can get back to a monster hunter game someday whether it's wild or another one down the line where we can get back to that rich level of attachment to the characters because we're having so much fun with them and having so many memorable moments which is often like a blend of comedy and drama like we just, it's a very fine balance but they did so well here so totally agree with that the other thing that i was really concerned about in my journal zero was that it was on a handheld this was the first time i was going to play a monster hunter game handheld everything else was always on a pc or switch in the end you know i was struggling with that nub but the fact that i went through all those challenges killed all those monsters all while playing on a 3ds like it still shocks me that I didn't grow too fatigued about it. I think it would have definitely have been better on a controller in the long run, but yeah, I made it. Like at the end, I was slipping a little bit and the nub felt like it was getting less responsive. So I think we were maybe getting at the end life of the con of the handheld. I absolutely agree that if they could ever do one thing as a remake, I think For You is a very strong contender because of the world building, because it's a game that's never been experienced on a controller. I think all the other Monster Hunter games had a console remake or version. I could be wrong. Another thing was the charge blade. It was the very first time I was actually properly pledging to not use the switch axe and charge blade is my home it's just i'm so comfortable using it in for you even though i think that i could have learned it a different way with uh, guard point so you know charge blade is now easily one of my weapons that i want to use i did dabble in it in rise a few times and i felt it was too fast and too much to worry about in rise because you have to charge the sword the shield the axe there's just so many more things to do with it so it'll be another learning uh, path to play Charge Blade in the later games. In my next game with GU, I don't know what I'm going to play, um, but I really did enjoy the experience of learning all over again a whole new weapon. And Charge Blade had so much to offer that it was quite fun. And it had the, the whole morphing, which made me feel a little bit familiar with the Switch X. And I'm really glad I picked it. I don't think I would have had as much fun with the Switch X. Uh, just thinking like through you, what my experience was there. The gameplay was fairly dry because my optimal way to attack was just go slash slash with the sword mode. Then there was also when I was like debating my pledge for For You, I was like, oh, people told me don't pledge all the monsters because that includes Apex. And I had no context for what that meant. In hindsight, the, the roster of Monster Hunter For You was really good and I, I really feel like there were so many 
iconic bosses, you know, from Delameter to um, Gogmazios, like all of these monsters, there was just so much diversity. You could fight so many things and there was so many to explore, like way huge step forward from 3U and still very different from what I got in World. And then finally, there was the whole pledge of Fatalis. Was that good? Was that bad? Uh, in hindsight, Fatalis in this game is it's a very different experience than world it's not the same build up it's not the same kind of fight and while i'm happy i did i have no regrets of that being my pledge there was more to this game than fighting fatalis and i'm glad i did that pledge because it helped me see everything else but fatalis was almost like a side quest compared to the rest like unlocking the scrolls was an adventure that made me play so much multiplayer and we got so many like shenanigans in multiplayer this is probably the game honestly i had the most fun in multiplayer just because there was so many kind of like different things to do there's so many different mechanics and it just yeah i just had a lot of fun when i compare it to 3u blows it out of the water honestly 3u i will i won't shy away from this I was so done with that game, I was ready to move on, and I have no interest in going back. 3U is probably, while I appreciate the old world, I appreciate what I had to do, it's one of my least favorites uh, of all the games. And then you've got World and Rise, which it's very hard to compare those to these older games, uh, but 4U still oozes a lot more of that charm, and that creates more of that personal connection. You no, know, Rise and Sunbreak will always have Kind of that fun element that more arcadey aspect that, that, that fluidity but i'm not connected to that world in any way and world will always be special to me because it's where i started so that one has massive bias so yeah for you you know if you never had the chance to try it i do recommend playing it even though the servers are going to be out soon i really hope capcom takes the time to remaster because this is a very special game and just looking and hearing um, what the community has to say about the other Monster Hunter games, I don't think I'm going to get this experience at any other time. So this has really been one of my you know, richer Monster Hunter experience. I'm very thankful I got it, and I'm very thankful all of you helped me get to it uh, and helped me discover this game. And I'm glad we got to do it with the multiplayer, with the server still on. So that's my thoughts on For You. It is up there, definitely with World, easily above 3U for me. It's above Rise Sunbreak for me. So that's my thoughts on Monster Hunter 4 you. I'll see you on the next journey, and uh, which is going to be GU. And until next time, keep it classy.